Hello everyone and welcome back to Rock Hill, South Carolina. In 1999, Ken Climo, the legend, won the first ever United States Disc Golf Championship here at the Winthrop Arena and now in its 25th rendition. We're at the quarter century mark of this great tournament and we're still here in Rock Hill. Tournament Central Time, round one is happening now. Brian Earhart, Nate Perkins, every single year, the course stays the same. It's a couple tweaks here and there, mm -hmm. but players all feel the exact same way whenever they return. Why do you think that is? You know, we talked about it this morning, that the consistency of the setting, I mean, the course, it changes, but just ever so slightly, there's so many moments during a round here in between the ropes that we call them stock shots, Brian, but they're, they're stock shots with the nerves turned all the way up. And it's really hard to repeat those routine shots over and over again. And this place just really gets in the mind of even the best competitors over the last quarter century. Well, we're watching some highlights of Ken Climo and Barry Schultz. There's just so much wonderful history here at Winthrop. The course has gone through so many iterations, having to scale uh, with the evolution of the MPO division, and really the bar for the longest time was set by this man, Ken Climo, an absolute genius with the flying disc. Players had to learn how to shape the disc the way that he shaped it in order to keep up with him, winning the world titles from 1990 all the way up until 1998, and then grabbing a few more even after that. He is here this week doing color commentary. We'll talk a little bit more about him later, but the battles have never ended out here last year. It was like we saw a glimpse into the future. Gannon Burr, Nicholas Antila, two young superstars showcasing skill sets well beyond their years. Can you talk about what you remember from that? Well, it was an all-time battle. I mean, Nicholas separated himself early in that final round, and he just was not making any mistakes. And then Gannon goes to double bogey on the 13th, and it looks like we we're going to have the first European champion here at Winthrop. And then, of course... Gannon turns it around, makes that 50-footer on 14, and then the 65-footer on 17. It was an iconic weekend for the game. Several of these distance putts from Nicholas were just effortless. A little pitch. Look at this putt, though. I mean, th that's, the, that's how he started that final round, Brian. I mean, goes on to, I believe, goes on to shoot a 12 or 13 under par to win his first major. Well, what's wild to me is you look at the long putting from Gannon Burr in particular. Uh, Nicholas, for the longest time, was keeping up with him, but you look at Gannon as the future of disc golf. Circle two putting is now a necessity, and I think the bar was set even higher when Ricky and Paul were just sinking putts from all over the course back in the day, and Gannon had to watch them growing up. He saw that that was the mark he had to set, so from an early age, he knew that long putting was a necessity, and here he is at the top level. I mean, and he's showcasing all skills. He has incredible touch with the backhand now. He's really worked on it throughout the year. I think he can easily repeat. And with that said, we did talk to Gannon earlier in the week. Let's take a listen. Gannon, I just want you to reflect on last year and I want you to reflect on the emotions when you were walking up this final 18 fairway. Yeah, uh, definitely like super stressful. Um, obviously, I had to throw second. Uh, Nicholas had just parked it for birdie, which means I had to get my birdie. And so I had emotions of like, you know, I actually, I just, you know, lost Vegas earlier that year on an upshot, uh, but somewhat similar distance. So I, I really was just like trying to be focused. And I was like, I'm, hopefully I'm not going to lose on an upshot again, because that 18 is definitely a, a win or lose situation, because I feel like there's a par is pretty rare if you're going to go for the green. It's usually a birdie or bogey. So, uh, yeah, but once I once I heard the roars from that upshot, I, I pretty much knew it was parked, and, and I was like, oh, I guess I just won. Oh, my God. It was like maybe the most nerve-wracking day of my life. And, yeah, Hall 18 played a big role that day. It was a crazy fight, and, of course, Hall 18, that's a great finishing hole, so I like it. You stepped up to your lie, and you threw a perfect approach shot going up against Gannon. Did you expect him to throw a perfect shot right after you? Yeah, I had the feeling that he's going to throw like good shots, at least had a par in that hole and I need to birdie, so, but yeah. I actually played skins um, on Sunday with Gannon and we were talking about if he went through a branch on the last hole or no, and I think he did, he thinks he didn't, but I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, you know what's fascinating about Nicolas Antila? Not only is he just one of the best players we've ever seen out of Europe, and he's only 21 years of age, he mentioned that he actually took discs out of his bag the moment this tournament last year finished, and he hasn't put them back in the bag until this week. He cares so deeply about winning this tournament that he saved discs from beating in. Discs that he had thrown all season and seasoned to that moment just so we could have them in that same stage of wear. That is next level preparation, Nate. I've actually never heard that before, Brian. That's the first time I'm hearing that. That blows my mind and it makes a lot of sense because his bag was dialed for last year. I remember the roller on eight, mm -hmm. he just had that thing to perfection. I mean, he's throwing a D-line PD there and just on the money, the shots on 17 here, th that really relaxed putt, that time it just did not work out for him. You can see exactly what that miss right there means but nicholas is the type of player where he's he'll show up for the majors i mean he has was having a mediocre season last year but then it goes to get second place at usdgc then second place in this following spring at the champions cup i mean the man believes he's going to be a champion someday and i mean he's had success this year in europe as well I, I mean he's had a solid season maybe not the uh season that we expected him to have after the such great heights last year but he looks great out there and the thing is when you watch him play the game let's not look at any previous statistics he looks like he can win something the way he throws is so replicatable so simple his angle integrity with his body positioning is so good and it's, it's a recipe for success even when you don't have your best up if you're throwing with really solid fundamentals it's way easier to play consistently and i think we're going to see that from him out here he also said that his forehand is better than it's ever been and again on a course like this where the lefties have done well that only serves him. We have to talk about another player who has won on this course, who we're going to see out there today. Chris Dickerson won in 2020 uh, in dramatic fashion. I mean, they played in some terrible weather out there, and Dickerson came out on top. Uh, what do you think uh, his chances are of grabbing another one? I mean, the chances are good for Chris. We've seen him pull it off here before, and... You know, I was kind of uh, buying low on Chris at the beginning of the season when he wasn't really uh, showing up, but his performance at Worlds uh, kind of changed the story of his season, I feel. Look at this pouring rain on the shot across the water on hole five. And if you recall, Brian, at this, at this U.S. championship, he actually wasn't checking the scores. You know, he, he didn't realize that Calvin Heimberg was several strokes ahead of him. He didn't look at the scores until hole 17. And w what a moment that was for Chris Dickerson. I mean, he, he already had racked up 100 wins, but that one, you know, much more weight than the rest of the 100 wins combined. Well, and, and, and we have to talk about that because, yes, we have quite a few players that have notched 100 wins, mm -hmm. and a lot of players have done it in different ways. The one thing that always stands is being able to close out a victory a hundred times i don't care what tier of tournament you're playing mm -hmm. if you are able to do that that means you know the recipe and the formula to come down the stretch when the pressure is on and play chess against your opponent and usually it's just one or two people that you have to worry about dickerson's extremely good at that he loves playoff situations he loves getting into little back and forth battles and i think that's what happened in 2020 but now he has an opportunity to take down another one another player that we should probably talk about that could win another title maybe a little less likely this year is nate sexton fan favorite obviously mm -hmm. beloved for many reasons uh, outside of playing but mm -hmm. nate has the play set or the skill set to score well on this course no matter what what do you what do you think yeah he certainly has the skill set to score out here i mean at one point this was called you know the the the, the forehand olympics you know because he he won it Without a backhand, Brian. I mean, the man was scoring with that power forehand, with the touch forehand. If you recall, hole one was that little flick out with the basket up on the log right there. I mean, he he's just dreaming of that hole, and here he is. This is actually the fi this is the final round. A little bit of rain here, and that distance was just perfect for the X cow going across the water there. Here is this is one of the lone backhands that he was throwing all week on the beach hole six. And he just had this nine speed dialed up perfect, gets the skip down in there. I mean, Nate isn't 
hasn't had the season that we're used to. We're used to scratching our heads wondering how the man just goes from being a full-time commentator to showing up and getting a podium finish at, at Worlds back in 2021, if you recall that. He hadn't played in months, but this year it's been a little bit different story. It was his first year missing the cash. He's missed it twice now, and you know he nearly missed the cut at Worlds this year, so I don't know what we can attest that to, if it's just, it, you know, harder if the field's harder mm -hmm. or if taking more time off the game is starting to affect him there's no question that he could be in contention at at Winthrop I mean he's he's one he's mm -hmm. one here at Winthrop which is a very limited list of players he easily could do it again it's just going to take a lot of resilience this week four rounds at Winthrop gold is never a walk in the park with that said a man who has walked this park more times than almost anybody is Ken Climo himself, the legend, who is here doing color commentary for the Disc Golf Network for the USDGC. We did get to sit down with him earlier in the week for a long interview to let him tell his story yet again. We'll take a preview of that interview on the other side of this commercial break. The end of a Rolo, the disc made for rolling. Four. The Rolo, making rollers fun. Rating is one of the most valuable things you get with a membership. This gives you accurate numbers to track how well you've been doing and your overall improvement in the game. You also get a member number when you register with the PDJ. Your PDJ number is a stamp for when you got involved in the sport. It's a badge of pride for players and a part of your disc golf identity. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com slash join. Welcome back. You can watch the United States Disc Golf Championship and more upcoming live pro disc golf events live on the Disc Golf Network. Use the code USDGC Live 23, all one word at checkout for 20% off your first month's subscription. Scan the QR code or hit the link in the description below to subscribe today. We got the Tour Championship coming up next week, and we also have some wonderful off season content, including. Just a brilliant interview that I got to do with the man himself, Ken Climo. Let's take a sneak peek at what I got to hear. Well, you take down the victory in doubles and you go into your very first singles world title. How did you feel going into round one? I felt, you know, like I could compete. I knew I, I had played, you know, enough with some of the people around and played a couple rounds of doubles with a few of the players and played a playoff with those guys. And I knew there was, it was definitely a chance. And I played really good the whole week. I was one stroke out of the lead going into the final day and had a lackluster second to last round, which put me five or six, seven strokes back of the lead going into the final round, which didn't really have a chance at that point because Steve Weiskup, he just played really good the last day, but it was a great learning curve. You know, I knew I could, I knew it could be there. I knew I was in close enough to, to do it, you know, and being within one stroke after eight rounds, you kind of know you're there. So you go home, you get fifth place at your first world championships. You just won the doubles. Is, is a career in disc golf even a thing? Were people talking about that at the time? How many road warriors were really trying to do it back then? You know, I, I can't give you an exact number of road warriors, but there was, you know, very few. It was less than 
20, I'd say, that were, you know, making their way around the country and doing stuff. But Glenn Whitlock comes to mind. He was definitely one of the earlier ones, Hossfeld and a few others that would take long trips and go play. But you know, there wasn't a career. Yeah, there was no thought of career. I was, you know, I was building houses and I got some time off. My boss was awesome. He said, if you're not here, you're not getting paid. Let me know when you're leaving. So this is still borderline hobby, but a hobby you take very seriously when you got off the, the 89 World Championship. Passionate hobby. It was, yeah. I, was, I was passionate about just doing it and being as best as I could at it, but it definitely no, no thoughts of any kind of, there, money, there wasn't really much money in it yeah. back in the day and stuff, but had no, no plans of making it a, <laughs> a career. Are you happy with where disc golf is right now? Are you, are you proud to see where, where it is right now? I mean, I'm overjoyed to see that players are getting big contracts and the game is exploding. I mean, Finland went from, what, 20 courses? I don't know how many years, 10 years ago to now it has 800 courses. Like, things like that are just make my heart melt. I love that. The game is finally, finally getting more mainstream and taking off. But that's really cool just to see the explosion of the sport, especially since COVID. I don't know what COVID did, but it made people, you know, get out and want to play and get outdoors. And it had a profound impact on this sport. It's been a real boom for disc golf. Nate. Uh, I, I just have to say, it was a, a goosebumps moment for about an hour and a half straight. Just uh, sitting with someone who so many people have looked up, up to for such a long time, and yet his story has kind of drifted away uh, because of the rise of, of the modern age of disc golf media and the players that we focused on mm -hmm. so much more. But he wrote the book on how to be a professional in this game, Nate, mm -hmm. and you and I both are standing here because of what he did, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, what are your feelings towards him and how do you feel for him coming back out here to do some commentary this year? Oh, I think it's, it's great for everyone who's a fan of disc golf. I mean, whether or not you, you know King Climo's career, he is really well spoken about the game and you can sense the passion just flowing out of him hour and a half conversation i'm gonna have to listen to every second of that because that man still lives and breathes disc golf i i didn't really understand how much he still loves the game and keeps up with it but uh, i'll tell you a little story brian i I didn't know King Climo was a real person. I thought I thought <laughs> it was a brand of disc because I was five years old when I got my first KC Rock, you know, and I just thought it was a brand. When 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 we met King Climo in person, it was just this like groundbreaking moment. Like he's a real person. He's a legend of the game, and this game has been kind of built on 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 what he did. I mean, he said it when when he was there there were not a lot of road words he says less than 20 that's probably generous i mean he's one of the few guys in the 90s that were actually traveling and playing this game so intentionally so to see him be so joyed by what's happening with the game now we love it we're all a fan of you kenny and we can't wait to hear you lay down some insight this week at Winthrop. Well, it, it's just all passion. Uh, and, and just seeing his eyes just light up when certain stories come to mind, uh, hearing him talk about just the molds and the discs that he was throwing and how exciting disc releases were back then because of the fact that not many people were releasing new molds of disc. Uh, it was just truly a joy. He's such a student of this game even today, and he praises the players uh, how they're playing now, and he's excited to see how it's going to evolve. One of those players, actually, he spoke extremely highly of was Calvin Heimberg. Uh, who's also a Florida native, mm -hmm. who uh, Ken is extremely proud of and very impressed by. Uh, Calvin's coming into this tournament never having won a USDGC. Mm -hmm. He's been number one on the tour all season long, pretty much. Uh, what does he have to do, Nate? What, what does he have to do to take down this first major title? I mean, at this point, we, there has to be something with that major that is preventing him from just playing free. I think what he has to do, Brian, is he has to just treat it like a normal tournament. He just has to treat it like it's Texas States back in the spring. He just has to treat it like he's playing one of those B tiers back in Southern Florida. You know, he, he's get, gotten himself to that lead card final round. I mean, 
at more than half the majors over the over the last three years, and he hasn't been able to close mm -hmm. one time. So we have to think at this point, we have enough data to make that assumption that it's in his head a, mm -hmm. a bit. So he's just got to treat it like a normal tournament and do what he does. And we hope he can absolutely do that because when Calvin is on fire, it is something to behold, to say the least. We got to talk to Calvin earlier in the week at the press conference. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Yeah, this week um, I've definitely put in some extra time on certain holes. Uh, I was struggling a little on the second shot on hole eight, so I've been putting in a little more extra time on that one. Kind of the shot changes quite a bit, whether you're on the right or left side of the fairway off the tee. So I spent some extra time down there, and I'm going to be heading down there after this interview. Um, I'm also planning on spending a little time on hole two this afternoon. I think that's a uh, really tough par three, and I just haven't been quite consistently hitting hitting the line that I want to. So those two in particular, I would say, have been the trickiest for me so far this week. But um, other than that, everything feels pretty good. Uh, I think really you just have to take it one shot at a time. You know, I, this is another tournament on the schedule. And I think spending too much time thinking about what it is is not really that important because in the end, I just have to focus on one shot at a time, the one right in front of me. Well, it's funny, Calvin came up to the booth for the press conference and he said, you know, I've only missed one of these this year. Do you, do you guys realize that? And of course we do. <laughs> Calvin has been on top the entire season. If you look at his statistics, even the tournaments that he hasn't won, it's one of the best seasons of all time, especially with how good the competition is right now. He's never finishing outside of the top 10. That is such a rarity for Calvin Heimberg. But winning on tour, like you said, can't be done unintentionally no it can't brian and you know he said it right there in the interview he said oh, this tournament it's on the schedule i just got to show up i can't be thinking about what it means what the what the major means what it means if you win and that's exactly the mindset that we're looking for for him to not let that pressure be what controls him mm -hmm. throughout the the rounds well funny enough the other player that Ken Climo, when I spoke to him, said he was really impressed by was Anthony Barella. And Anthony's another player that has come so close recently to taking down his first major title. Mm -hmm. And for a, the first time, we are all believing that it's his for the taking. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all known that he's had the physical skill set for forever. I mean, since he was a little kid, people have made you know comments about how good he was. Mm -hmm. But playing golf is such a different concept than just being good at throwing a frisbee around. Being able to take those skills and put them to the test on a course like Winthrop is a very difficult task. Mm -hmm. I think he finally got a taste at the European Open. He realized that, okay, when the adrenaline hits this hard, what do I have to do to mm -hmm. score in this moment? He's learned his lesson. Yeah. Paul McBeth was telling me that he he's, was kind of talking to Anthony, obviously during the round when he was caddying for him, but then also after the round, you know, how to handle something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think coming into this week, AB can easily shock the world and show them that he can score in a course like this with OB everywhere where you have to play disciplined. You can't necessarily throw aggressive shots, uh, you know, time and time again. So, Nate, what are your what are your thoughts at AB? What do you think? Well, I love that Ken Climo calls out Calvin Heimberg and Anthony Barella. To me, that says Kenny's a speed guy. He loves seeing the disc fly fast, and both of these guys throw it as hard as anybody out there. And, yeah, that that moment on 16, that's still, for me, the, the biggest heartbreak of the year or even in the last few seasons. I mean, for, for him to... To, to lose the tournament in that dramatic fashion. I mean, from that out of position spot, Paul McBeth's on the bag. I mean, isn't it interesting, Brian? 2021 Worlds, Paul McBeth on the playoff, hole 16. What does he do? He juices the nine speed. That Raptor jumps out over OB. James Conrad parks the hole. Two years later, Paul McBeth's on the bag for his guy, Anthony Barella. Same, Same hole. He's juiced up. He's ready to go. All he has to do is get it in bounds, and he's in the game, and he goes with the, the faster disc, doesn't he? he mm -hmm. Doesn't he go with the driver there on 16? He threw driver numerous driver. times. Then he goes nine speed, and then he gets the zone on. So, you know, Anthony's going to have to learn how to handle those nerves, and you can't just forget about them. You have to learn how to throw mm -hmm. those shots with the nerves present. Exactly. You're not you're not going to breathe them away. They're going to be there when you throw down the stretch mm -hmm. on 17, on 18. 
I can almost guarantee you when Gannon makes that putt on, on 17 last year, he's feeling the nerves, but he's able to understand how the putt's going to come out, mm -hmm. how the shots are going to come out when those nerves are present. So Anthony Barella has more experience under his belt mm -hmm. now, and obviously he can birdie every hole that anyone's ever made. Well, you can't get that experience unless you put yourself there to begin with. So super excited to see how he does this week. Uh, we got to talk about Simon Lazat, another player that uh, has blown everybody away the past two seasons. I mean, mm -hmm. Nate, it's been so impressive to watch him come out, change his style of golf, mm -hmm. and still, after all these years, be one of the top players in the game. Coming to Winthrop, you have to display exceptional discipline. How do you think Simon's going to fare out there? Well, Simon has struggled historically with the USDGC, and it it it's an enigma because it doesn't quite make sense. He on paper, should be able to play great out here. I mean, he has such control over his drivers. He can land the mid flat when he needs to. Like, he's got the serviceable sidearm in, in positions where you need that, the touch forehand on 17. On paper, he should have he should be playing well here. I think, obviously, we've seen a different Simon Lozat the last two years since the, since the recovery from mm -hmm. the elbow. Much more controlled, much more slower speeds and a little bit more Annie out of the hand. Just, just a pure disc golfer rather mm -hmm. than an entertainer. I feel like the entertainer doesn't really set up well for Winthrop, but the pure disc golf that Simon's been playing over the last two seasons, I think going into this major, he's looking better than he has ever before here at Winthrop. Well, uh, just a real quick anecdote from uh, the press conference before we talk about Eagle McMahon, which I feel like we need to talk about. Ricky Wysocki said, when you're watching as a spectator out here and you're watching this course get played, pay attention, pay close attention to the details, the intricacies, the nuances at this course. You don't get to get away with much out here. Every little mistake gets punished. So players can get drained mentally and physically because of that. Uh, a player that I feel like we have to talk about, like I said, is Eagle McMahon, mm -hmm. who seems to be in probably the best headspace that we've ever seen him in. Yeah, I think so. I think e Eagle's at the top of his game physically and mentally. I mean, we look at his finishes uh, over the past, what is it, four months where he hasn't finished outside of the top 10 and with a couple of wins. And we're going to flash back to the Beaver State fling. Look at this late flipping roller here. This is just an incredible, this is a par four. He's going to take this one all the way around the corner. This is what blows me away about Eagle. Yes, this is actually a very like feasible line on this hole. Yeah. But Eagle seems to be the showman even when it's not a good idea. I mean, when, when theory says don't do that, he finds a way to make those shots high percentage. And mm -hmm. that's what blows me away about Eagle is he's an innovator. You know, he's inventing things. He's inspiring players to play the game in a different way. And, mm -hmm. and I think we're easily seeing that. And I think that this course means a lot to him, Brian, because he's had some of his lowest moments here. I mean, we, we saw him break his hand here mm -hmm. at Winthrop on hole 16 a few few years back and I just remember that being one of one of his low points um, in his career not only because you know he injured himself from that frustration but because he he was barely able to finish the tournament and that moment kind of changed his the trajectory of his career mm -hmm. he kind of altered the way that he wanted to behave from then on and he's a completely different player than he was back then he's matured by several years and i think you're right i think this is the the best eagle bank man we've also seen heading into this event and that's why i think this year is going to be phenomenal it seems like minus paul Macbeth's absence the stars are aligning it should be extremely exciting with that said, we are going to wrap things up. We have three fantastic commentators in the booth, including the man himself we've been talking about, Ken Climo, about to call some shots here at the 25th anniversary of the United States Disc Golf Championship. We're wrapping things up. Brian Earhart and Nate Perkins, we're going to throw it out there to the ground. We'll see you out there.
never looked so good. There it is. Bam, it is in there. And Tiger Woods of this golf showing his stripes once again. Welcome into beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina and Winthrop University for the 25th annual United States Disc Golf Championship presented by Innova. A tournament with history unmatched in the disc golf world. Who adds U.S. champion to their resume? You'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. Philo, champ, let's watch some disc golf. Yeah, man. Now we are jumping right into the action. Hole 17, Pride of Hillsboro, Cole Rodolin. The hole that <laughs> creates dreams and nightmares. Cole Dolan on the dream side, acing early on here at the championship. Wow, wasn't many chains there. It was a lot of metal. That was. <laughs> hey, that's the way you want it to go in, man. Right. Bottom of the bucket, nowhere Coink. else to go. <laughs> what a start for Cole Dolan. At least nice highlight there, first round. Yeah. Tough to start better there on 17. Welcome into the booth at Winthrop. I am Ian Anderson, major champion Philo Brathwaite right there. 12-time world champion, five-time U.S. champion. Ken Climo over there. How we doing, gents? We're doing great today. Like yeah, yourself. Oh, Looking fantastic. forward to some awesome action out here on the Winthrop Lakefront course. It has no been doubt. incredible early. No doubt, man. I'm super excited. So awesome to share the booth with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Ken Climo. You know he's going to have all the insights, all the history, all the stories. It's going to be such a fantastic week. We thank you for joining us. Absolutely. The party has started. All the gents are almost on the course. Two cards left yep. to go. All kinds of storylines. Let's take a little trip down memory lane with a flashback. Check the champ. Out. Hole 17, different location for a tee pad. Hay Bring bales. it up. Hay bales were there, but it was totally different. Yeah, you could, there was no ceiling. There was no lake in the background. It was a little bit easier back then, for sure. Still a one, though. Still a one. Ones are always nice. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. Where are we in a 2006 game? This is in Augusta, Georgia at Lake Olmstead Park at the finals. That was the last putt, securing my 12th world championship. And yes, you could tell I was a little bit happy at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> you better be. <laughs> oh, show. Sure. Let's check out the resume. Hall of Fame in 95 and 12 world titles. How many of those came after the Hall of Fame, Ken? Uh, seven of those came after I was inducted in the Hall of Fame. I was inducted when I was 27 years old. And, uh, you know, I think it was a little bit early. And I think that's why they changed the rule. You have to be 45 years old. and You have to have played for 15 years okay. at least to, yeah. to be considered now. Well, that's not a, to mention what's incredible. not on the list, European Open winner, three-time Masters World Champion. So, I mean, that's a lot of majors, champ. Thanks. Man. 200, 230 wins out of 467 events, almost a 50% win rate. I go, think that's man. worthy of noting. The legit GOAT in the house Absolutely. on the premises here at Winthrop. The man that set the bar. No doubt, man. That's the, the man booth. everybody's been trying to chase down for the longest time. Yep. How's it feel to be disc golf, you know, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, champ? watching disc golf over the last couple of years. I mean, it feels great, you know. I, I wouldn't change anything for, for anything else in the world. But I would trade all my championships for, for the people I've met and the places I've been. I, that means more oh, to man. me than anything. I, I mean, like, just meeting you guys and no getting doubt, to know man. Philo and other people. It's just, the that, journey, that means right? the world to me. That's it's very the cool. journey. It's the journey, yeah. Absolutely. That's for sure. Absolutely. That's for sure. Trip. Wow. We're in for a treat at USDGC. The players love it. <laughs> people watching love it. It's, <sighs> ah, it's just the best. We're going to jump right into the action here. Going over to hole 17 on 17. He has lit up the back so far. <laughs> oh, man. In a major way. We'll show you that in a second. Oh, boy, does that oh. stick? It does. Wow. Green flag for Joel Freeman at the 17th. Cling Half the job done. Clinging onto that back edge. Oh. Ah, 
cash money for Joel Freeman. Look at that scorecard on the back nine. Ladies and gentlemen, firing off the eagle at hole 10, 475 feet. All blue, all the way in. Wow, can, can he get it home? clean? A 10 down back nine. We'll show you that on the other side of the break. Back in just a few. My name is Chuck Ray. I'm the athletic director here at Winthrop University. The worldwide recognition that we get here at Winthrop because of what U.S. Disc Golf and Innova has done has been incredible, especially with this 25th anniversary. We, we want to really celebrate this opportunity and, and what it can do for disc golf and what it can do for us at Winthrop. And I think this is only just the beginning. The Innova Rolo, the disc made for rolling. Four. The Rolo, making rollers fun. When you first sign up for a PDJ membership, you're given a PDJ number. Your PDJ number is a stamp for when you got involved in the sport. It's a badge of pride for players and a part of your disc golf identity. Get your number today. Visit pdj.com join. With a legacy dating back to 2001, Sun King Discs has been instrumental in advancing disc golf across Florida, the U.S., and beyond. Partnering with and hosting over 500 events, including the famous Throw Down the Mountain, we are dedicated to bringing joy to players from all walks of life. Explore our extensive disc selection at sunkingdiscs.com and enjoy free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Sun King Discs. Believe in a better way. The United States Disc Golf Championship is a PDGA major and is presented by Innova, the choice of champions. Jumping over to Freeman on 18, trying to bring it home. 11 down, four stroke lead currently. Very difficult finishing hole here at the Winthrop Arena. Got to get a green flag off the tee. No backspin here. Sit down. Oh, oh no. no. Man, champ, he threw that about 10 feet too far, eh? I don't know. I mean, it looked like a pretty good spot. It's just sometimes the, the ground on that fairway can do you wrong. You know? yep. It's very sloping right there. The camera doesn't do it justice. If you stand out there, you can really feel how slopey it is. And now throwing three. Trying to get up and down. Scramble for par. Freeman shot away. Looked a little tight. It did. But it's going to curl. Get a green flag. Wonder how close that was to Hobie up there. Very close, I imagine. Yeah. Ian. Yeah, well, there oh, it is, right? there it is. Outside circle one lays up from shallow circle two. Wants nothing to do with it. Going to scrape up a bogey and gets to finish the day ten under par. Double digit opening round for Joel Freeman with a finishing bogey. 
unfortunate, but man, what a performance to start the tournament, man. That's exactly what you're looking for out here. He plays well out here, Philo. He certainly does. There's yeah. a few guys that have had some success out here in recent years. Remember Joel couple, Freeman is one of them. Yeah, a couple years back, a couple putts on the stretcher. He could That's have been right. your champ. That's Remember right. That he yeah. was right there in the mix coming around hole 12, 13, Boy, and yep, things started to unfortunately come apart for Joel Freeman, and he couldn't get it done. He had that rare opportunity to go 10 down on a nine-hole stretch, and yeah. unfortunately for him, he had an unlucky roll away. It wasn't like he didn't produce the shot. The shot, needed, correct. Mm -hmm. you know, he threw a good shot, just un unlucky there. That could have been history in the making just for a nine-hole stretch at the USDGC. I don't think it's ever been done where someone shot more than <laughs> nine under for Better than perfect. nine holes. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. McMahon on the box. It's like Eagles going overstable approach. What a second half of the season it's been for Eagle McMahon after absolutely going four flat tires at the OTB Open, finishing in the middle of the field. The man has been on a tear lately. Nothing outside the top five. Wow, impressive. Absolutely. That world's showing. How about that after a, you know, a rough opening round and then fire. came back firing. Calvin Heimberg the first started off the year great, but... It hasn't been a bad year for Calvin. It hasn't been a bad year. You know, obviously yeah. Pro Tour, you know, Pro Tour winner got the series done, mm -hmm. won by over a hundred points. That's yeah. a pretty healthy serving of defeat right there to the field. World number one. Absolutely. Eighty eight thousand dollars in earnings this season, Ken. Wow. That's a whole lot of ducats. He found the log. Philo, what's the distance on that play? Sixty feet. Sixty feet. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think hole one's a bit of a gut check as well, you know, for your nerves and things. You know, you gotta you know come through there with a nice smooth flat dip throw but it, you can't have too much speed you have a little good speed control on there because as you saw with eagle it can run long easily if you if you peer the middle with a nice flat disc it can just sail on there so they're looking to have the perfect speed touch control over that log and get it to check up short right by the basket the u.s champion dickerson on the tee clean through the double mando dropping an elevation and he's going to clobber the log 60 feet left for dickerson for an opening hole birdie mm -hmm. Not what you want on the opening hole, but not going to kill you. What about the performance from the Yis Young superstar, Nicolas Antela from Finland? A little bit of a rocky year for Nicolas. He's had some bright moments, but he's also had some, you know, some rough ones too. 115th at the Music City Open, 75th at the Portland Open, but played very well at the end of the summer in Europe. He goes with the standstill, which t tends to have a little bit more control over. Looks like it was a little low as well. Yeah. Did right. play very well at Worlds. He made that, that lead card. Nicholas is a gamer. Absolutely. Once he gets those those pistons firing, man, he's just as liable to go off as anybody. And let's check out our Udix powered course close up on Winthrop Arena. 25 years. Yeah, 25 years of history here, champ. It's pretty awesome, pretty special. It's always been a treat to come back year after year since I've been coming around. You've been here since this thing kicked off. Rated 4.4 on UDISC. Remember that epic performance from Nicolas Antela last year? Obviously a par 64 coming in just under 10,000 feet. We've got a couple of A and B pins on holes 13 and 17, so you'll see that basket position alternating two of the rounds. Hole three is absolutely the number one handicap out here. You have to pay close attention. Obviously, the water crossing at hole five, always a daunting shot on the track. And there's a bunch of other ones out here. you got to give your full attention. Throw the disc like you mean it. Have the right attitude. Have the right intentions. And if you don't, make sure you grab that U-Disc app. Over 14,000 uh, <laughs> courses listed. Entela for two on one. And he'd do this last year from about this same distance. Sailed one in he off the did. band for Nicolas to start the tournament. Nice strong run. The difficulty with putting from this far on this hole is if you, you could catch the edge of the basket on a decent putt and it could roll away. So it's uh, not in your best interest to get super aggressive get here super at the first. Super aggressive here. Got to have good pace control on the putting greens around here at the Winthrop Arena. Lots of danger, lots of OB, very tight to the baskets inside circle one. Heimberg lined up. And Heimberg sails, the <laughs> buzzes the tower, as you could say, and a little bit of work left for the tap-in for an opening hole par. That log is very strategically placed. It's right kind of where you want your disc to, <laughs> to be. To hit the ground, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's where the ground play takes effect, and you can get the nice little nose-up bounce, skip, and knurl, as they like to use. That's one of my favorite little course elements out here. There's a, there's a lot. Dickerson, also from range, looking at birdie.
bunny hop from Dickerson. Ooh, Houdini's the target there. Looked like it had a chance to connect, and he drives up empty. Going to have about a seven-meter putt left for his par back there with Calvin Heimberg and Nicolas Santala. He had it on the strong side, and you, you can't go in if it's on the weak side. So That's true. And we got Eagle with the, the most legitimate birdie look of the group. That's the angle you'd prefer to putt at back up the hill than down the hill. Correct. A little less likely you'll catch an edge and roll away. Still can happen if you missed on the left side. And you can be a little more firm and aggressive with the stroke. From Eagle's this, from so this solid angle. from circle one. Can't imagine he's going to be off the mark by much if he would miss this opening hole putt. Top five putter in the world, easy. It does set the tone, you know. Birding hole one on this course gets you off to a good, good feeling and solid. Oh, just a little strong. Little tiny bit of headwind there for Eagle McMahon. You see the flag start picking up, blowing in the direction of his face. Got the disc on the band. It didn't drop. Caught that band, and he's going to tap in for par while Heimberg lines up for his par putt just around six or seven steps away. Heimberg takes care of business on the green. Dickerson will be up next. You can tell Calvin gave that one a little extra thought and made sure he got in there, didn't want to bogey the first hole and get off on a, a bad foot. Nobody wants to bogey the first hole, champ. <laughs> Gotta get it, par or birdie. It's a mental error if you should walk out of here with bogey. Chris Dickerson trying to mitigate just that. You would think with well, not a whole lot of wind, this, these would be routine for these guys, but you know, the pressure of the situation is first hole of a big championship so sometimes the nerves can get to you a little bit in that situation all of these guys have been a part of a potential victory here Nicolas Antela coming up short Calvin Heimberg obviously coming up short <laughs> Eagle McMahon hasn't been able to get it done yeah. so all of these guys cannot afford to have a roller coaster start here you gotta start off clean Antela drops home the par nicely a little right side but basket did its job McMahon the same and they are off to two pars around for your second feature card, Kyle Klein. Look to go seven on down hole through 12. six holes. On a heater. This is also for a share of second. Kyle Klein doesn't miss putts. Look at that stretch there, champ. Birdie, 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 eagle, birdie, birdie. Let's see if he can best. <laughs> Freeman. We're going to set it on down to Nate Perkins. He's with Sarah Nicholson. All yours, Berg. All right, Sarah. I, I wanted to reflect on what was a historic day for the, the field and throw pink. I mean, how about those scores? Wow. I mean, 18 women under par, and Henna broke the course record. I can't wait to see how it's going to unfold this weekend. And can you share a little bit about what's going on over at the Championship Village? Oh, absolutely. If the golf isn't enough, we have a championship village. We have fun and games for the kids. We have tons of vendors and food and uh, adult beverages and lemonade for the kids. Um, and tonight we have a concert. So if you're not getting enough from the amazing golf, uh, we have a lot of other activities too. And lastly, can you share w what uh, you have going on this coming weekend? Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. On Saturday, I'm doing a clinic. Um, the women that are playing in the event are going to be coming out, and from 1.30 to 3.30, they're going to be teaching new women uh, how to play disc golf. So come on, join us. We, we still have available spots. All right, Sarah. Well, if you're not too busy, let's get out there and go watch some of this MPO action. Absolutely. Thanks, Nate. Thank you, Nate and Sarah. Look at a Heimberg, T of two. Got it in the right airspace. Let's see if it's got the appropriate finish. Ooh, pushed it a little wide. That could be out of bounds. Let's see if we've got an update for you. It's not very friendly over OB there. OB is the word Ooh. for you to score for Heimberg. We saw the shot from Eagle McMahon. Came out a little low and tight. I imagine he's just shy of the mandatory. I don't think he got enough air under the disc for it to pick up and stand up. Chris Dickerson potentially lining up a roller. Or is he going flex shot? This, this hole definitely has a choice. You can go His low right side, or you can have a little more ceiling and go left side, but it's a little tighter gap. <laughs> it's a lot tighter gap. <laughs> His roller disc is blue. Not but going not, not roller? No. Ooh, this is in it's danger here. Coming out a little early. Just past the mandatory tree, but, but that's going to slide out of bounds. 
About 38 feet there left for Chris Dickerson for a par at hole two. And ta-da. While practicing this hole, Philo, it plays a lot longer than its 409-foot <laughs> sign. I thought it played like 460 or 470. It's very low ceiling, uphill. It's hard to get the disc in the, in the right airspace, doing the right thing to get all the way to the pin. It's, if you're going to birdie this hole, you're most likely going to have to make a putt. We've seen plenty of guys get up there in circle one. That's not the line, though. you got to keep it below that limb. Nicholas is going to hit that ninja branch, veer off to the left, still has to get around the mandatory tree, get up and down for his par. Let's check out Phyla's Philosophy, brought to you by our friends at BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Well, we've got a four-day tournament here, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen at home. These things are, I think, very generic, but I think they're going to play a huge part in the success of the overall winner this tournament. Got to keep your bogey percentage under 10%. Looking at the Pro Tour standings, the best players in the league are keeping their bogeys under 10% of their shots, and you're going to need to birdie about half the holes on this course if you're going to win. Lay up, keep your stress levels, you know, stress levels down if you get out of position. This is going to pay off massive dividends if you make the right choice this is a thinkers disc golf course oh do not come out here and try to force the issue set the tone early and maintain the pace that is going to be massive as well this week you have to stay on the pace of the players that are doing the best if you start falling behind as we've talked about major after major it is so hard to come back from any deficit greater than two or three strokes you got to be in the battle those last nine holes mcmahon throwing two on two Giving it a run here. Ooh, beautiful shot there from McMahon. That's right on the bullseye marker. A little tap in left. We have uh, Chris Dickerson putting from the other side when he when it's his turn. It's gonna be, he's going to have a very close OB behind the basket. Okay. Five steps, four steps behind the basket. And Keith, a rough start, but that's one way to turn things around, getting close to that number I like, 7-8 under. Opening round, that's a good place. Nice recovery there from Emerson Keith. To your point about that 8 under, Philo, your winner last year at 33, so averaging 8 points. Just about 8 under, yep. Yeah. That's the number in my mind. I imagine it could go lower this year if the weather stays good. These guys are just on attack mode every hole. Antelope an puts the overstable approach under the bucket for par. You guys have practiced this course a couple times and played it. Any questions for me? No relief from Hazard Rocks. Uh, immediate release. So it's in the caddy book. You can go the hazard, behind. Directly behind. First okay. available. First available. Great question. Any Good other good. questions, gentlemen? Is that our order on that board? Andy, what order do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back to two. Heimberg throwing three after the OB drive. That's a bad miss there, Camp. That's a little bit off the grid. That was even farther right than I thought it was. Me too. I thought he was going to fade a little quicker. Maybe the disc had a bit more glide than we anticipated. Did not fade back in time. Well short and early off the tee box here at hole two. All he could do is pitch that up and down, take his bogey. And as your defending champion, Gannon Burr. The ripe old age of 18 now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the body of work for that young man is certainly impressive. Gannon How old Burr's were you when you started uh, touring, champ? I was 19 when I first found the game, and pretty much a year or so after that, I started, you know, going out and playing some tournaments. So I was I was over 20 years old before yeah. I started actually traveling around wow. and, and going out of state and playing tournaments. Here's here's that putt we were alluding to earlier with OB directly behind the basket not many steps at all so he's gonna have to he's gonna have to be careful with this one if he fades left at the end it it should keep it a little bit more safe if he misses dickerson one of the best putting strokes in the game great touch that's going to dry up shy didn't want to put it up in the air and risk that potential ob gonna scrape up a par here at number two that was definitely in the back of his mind he doesn't miss low often not often that is correct ian i believe he was ob on this shot so that's gonna be a bogey, bogey for him. it is yeah oh my yep. bad good yep, call yep. there chisel should be mostly drop-ins yep there they are par for mcmahon bogey for heimberg bogey for dickerson followed by an antela par that's and right. He did drip out of bounds off the tee, so that was his par putt tapping in for bogey is Dickerson. Nicolas Antela drop in and head on over to tee number three, number one handicap on the track. And it looks like our feature card is ready. Let's head back to one. Loving these drone shots. Aren't they amazing? They just give you the whole area a different perspective of 
And a huge thanks to our friends at Flight Factory for sponsoring the drone coverage all year long. It has been absolutely a wonderful addition to the coverage. As you said, these aerial views, such an awesome addition, man. Different perspective, really get to take in the sides of the galleries. You know, it's, it's so cool. I love it. And if you guys love it at home, head over to FlightFactoryDiscs.com and pick up a couple discs. Support your favorite pro, Calvin Heinberg, Madison Walker Gears. Simon Lazat. Simon told me last night that he was uh, going to be a proud papa for the second time. Oh, no way. Yeah. Congratulations wow. to the Lazat family. That's awesome. Little high in the window, sneaks, sneaks past the first. Will it press all the way through across the log and into circle one for Simon Lazat? That's uh, some good fortune there. And well, I'll he knows it. it. <laughs> Look at that smile. He knows it. <laughs> Got away with one out the first. 2017 champion Nate Sexton. Pleasure to walk that final round with him before he was crowned United States Disc Golf Champion. The forehand play on one. We've seen a couple go mid-range off the tee, get it over there to the left side and hold it straight. Let's see what flavor Sexton puts on this one. There it is. Does it hang? It's starting to unravel. Nicely done from Sexton, six paces. Straight uphill, looking at birdie, hole one. Lovely touch. That's the good thing about a mid-range or a putter when you throw it there is the ground play doesn't move too much. Not many people, I imagine, throwing driver off the tee here at one, right? No. It's really unnecessary. Barella. Barella so close to getting his first major win this season in Europe. Will this be his week? He was close at Worlds, too. Yeah, he also got he was. second at Worlds, which yeah. is he was right there. That's a great shot. But he was in control of the European Open at one point. Th this is very That's true. That's what I was alluding this to. Is Not that true. he wasn't in the battle at Worlds, but he, he was, was in control. control. Yep. And then, all 16. <laughs> Kevin Costner got him, champ. <laughs> that was a half tin cup for Barella. It wasn't full yeah. on tin cup. Yeah. That was bad enough. Defending champion, can he go back to back? Grabs the overstable approach out of the bag. Will he feel the pressure or will he just be who he is and play his game? Let's find out. Little overstable, fading out early. He's gonna crash the trees along the left side. Should be in that 55, 60 foot range, but may not have a look there for Gannon Burr. Let's check in with our MVP Open champion, Matt Orum. Got the monkey off the back, can he? Uh, Turn that into a major win, too. That would be awesome for Matt Orem, another longtime veteran on the tour. So awesome to see him get a, a win in the new era of disc golf. I think this hole right here ranks up there with, with I'd the I'd say top, the number two handicap, two maybe number three. Hole. Yes. That tee shot's not the easiest. Can't see where you're landing. Then that second shot, very daunting. Back to three for McMahon. He's looking for 540 feet off the box here, and that is well within Eagle's reach. Downhill play. Cast it out there towards those trees. This is looking perfect. Oh, oh clips the trees. The oh. trees. That's not the worst, though, champ. That's not too bad there. He can work with that. He's going to be a little tight for the angle that he wanted. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to make a three from there, but four will be well, Pretty routine. well within the real Should be wheelhouse. routine from yes. there, absolutely. Kyle Klein on a heater on 13. One of the most technical second shots on the course here at the Ooh, 13. Did he do it? It's looking perfect, Ian. Let's see if the finish is right. That Inside is in. circle one for Kyle Klein. Ooh. Wow, what a 800 line. and some odd feet there at the 13th, and he made that look pretty simple. Speaking of Kyle Klein, he had this putt to push the playoff with Paul back in the day. That's Remember right, that yeah. Here's Paul the McBeth was just a little long. Yep. Kyle missed. Barry, Barry made a similar putt from that area to keep the playoff going against me in 2003. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was less bushes there, but he was the same distance That's up, cool. up there. Cannon Burr was online, gave it a poke, comes up a little shy, tap in par to start. And back to three for Heimberg. Heimberg also another competitor with the arm to reach the super sweet spot way up in the top of the fairway. This looks wow, better, no? he put a move on that, Ian. And gets there, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. safe. That's about 580 to that spot there. Man, that is prime position. Ooh, he's gonna have a beautiful angle through the Mando and into the Cypher screen. Back to one, Sexton putting up the hill for birdie. Oh, 
Up and in for Sexton at the first. Solid start. Absolutely. A little, little giddy up in his step there. Mm -hmm. That'll definitely put some pep in your step. Get off the first hole with a birdie. Now you got one in the bank. Building block. It's a great Nate Sexton tournament when you think about it. You know, forehand friendly. Very smart forehand. golfer. Great Absolutely. putter. Absolutely. Yep. Position player. Yeah. Very solid on the putting surface. For sure. Looks like Simon's waiting for 17 to clear up. That was uh, LeCastro on 17 down there. Nice. Simon. Dead center, solid. Absolutely. Look convicted on that one. That was a drop in birdie from Barella, I believe. That's what you really want on that hole. You want to throw the perfect <laughs> shot. <laughs> you are not Skip lying, up Chad. there and just have no stress <laughs> going to hole two. The, the park drop is kind of rare, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you go short or you go long on that With one. With that big log in the way, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day, it was wide open. Use the ground play. Now you got to clear that log 60 feet shy of the target and have the appropriate speed and touch as we've just been talking about. Fellas will head to hole number two. We're going to jump ahead with Matty O on the 13th, formerly the 888 hole. This screen presents a bunch of problems with the trees that surround the basket. Yeah. Especially when you're pin high on either side, the six or the three or the nine or the three angle, then you're in trouble. And that's kind of where Kyle looked like he ended up with the with his shot. It looked like it was on the, the three o'clock side of the basket. A little more favorable on the three o'clock, nine o'clock, not so nice. McMahon, that'll work for an easy par. It's not going to birdie, though. That was not very aggressive from Eagle McMahon, just playing for position. Yeah, like my champ said, he's a little out of position for it. Wow. Inside circle one, just a step or two off the bullseye for Kyle Klein, and the streak continues. Ooh. Eight under for his last seven holes. Great birdie there. If he was 10 feet farther forward, he would have not had a putt at all. Back to two, Lazat. Swings that a little wide, gets around the tree. This needs to fade in a hurry. Oh, gets Just all the love. Just enough. Kicks the right direction off the little tree Ooh, there. Ooh, that was close, champ. <laughs> yeah, if it goes the other way, it's out of bounds. That's two holes in a row for Simon Lazat getting a little tree love. Sexton next on the tee. Looks like he's taking the skinnier gap up the left side. It's gonna, it's got a mando on that side. I don't know how he's gonna try and get it all the way to the pin with that shot. I he's think he's not. Just, this he's is a concession for three. Yep. yep. Wants no part of this hole. Doesn't feel confident throwing the backhand along the right side. I'll take my par and move on. He's grabbing a stroke on Dickerson and Heinberg. <sighs> Strategy, man. We've talked about it in the Philo's philosophies, man. You got to be a heady golfer around here and make the right decisions at the right time. A B. No laying up in this guy. Nah, no, he's definitely got the carry. Could go fairway driver with A-B speed. Chooses the left side. I don't think he got over on that enough, champ. Oh, the branch didn't help either. That's the mandatory tree, is it? I believe it is. He should be right on the mando tree. Well, if it hit the mando, that means it didn't go across the line. It did not, so he should be safe and be able to do a little straddle out and get up and down. If he hit the other tree, that means he made the mando. Correct. Burr. This is what I consider a bonus birdie on this course. I'd agree with that. I wouldn't think there's a high percentage of birdies throughout the field on this course. <clears throat> well, let's take a look there, champ. Hole number two is playing slightly over par, about two-tenths of a stroke over par. The Guys. champ's point, just 12% birdies from the field. There you go. Yeah. That looks oh. nice. A little tickle there. Shouldn't hurt it too much. Plenty of speed into circle one or edge of there for Gannon Burr. Well executed shot at the second. Down there on the ground is our man Nate Perkins. He is doing a little walk and talk with Nate Sexton. All yours, Perk. And Nate, this is uh, one of the biggest changes out here at Winthrop. How much more difficult is this par three than the classic par four that we're used to? Oh man, I don't even try to birdie it. That's how hard it is. It used to be a really nice birdie hole for me where I'd play up and then f over the parking lot with the forehand. If they took that Mando away, I think I'd still think about over the parking lot with the forehand, okay. but yeah. it's too tight at the end for me. Uh, so I, I totally takes that out of play yeah. for my game. All right. Well, we see you carrying your own bag. Typically we're used to seeing you with a caddy. Like, What's the game plan there? I just was playing poorly and, and just felt like I wanted to go it, go it alone. Not, nothing, no slight against anyone who's ever caddied for me before. I'll be back. All right, thanks for joining us, Nate. Good luck. Thank well, you. He confirmed what we thought. It was yeah. a little too much for him off the box at the second. Marweed. Could Cookie it monster. be another one? 
Uh, no. Oh, not shy. even a bounce. Oh, no. Marweed's going to have to reload. The forehand specialist, Andrew Marweed. He certainly is. Remember that ace at Ledgestone yeah. through that tight little gap on hole seven. Mm -hmm. He's definitely got a fantastic sidearm game. Unfortunately, coming up short here on the island green, going to have to reload and try to scrape up a bogey now. Saw two discs laying on the green there. It looked like they had been pretty close to an ace run for those two discs to be laying where they're at. I Truth. agree with that. Oh. Are we just does get across the hay bales right on six? I'd say about eight steps mm -hmm. inside circle one. Jumping back to two for Sexton throwing two. Yep. Casual little sidearm swing there from Sexton. Perfect touch. Bop it off the pole, and he'll drop that in for his par on two. No stress par. Played right into his game plan. On hey, three. this is the line we're looking for here. Calvin Heimberg all lined up at the third. Low line drive, skip flare, bounce right about there. Oh. Didn't get the edgy skip he was looking for. Out there in the fairway still, some 85 feet away for Heimberg. On to Barella, putting for birdie. It looks like he hit the next tree past the man. Oh, look at this. Ooh, oh, nice what a bid from A.B. Two inches shy from a long range make. Speaking Lizotte. of, off the mark as well from the right side. A couple pars coming up. Well, I guess three pars coming up there. Bird will try to grab the lone birdie. Takes a heck of an effort to get it inside circle one on this shot. It looks like he's right about there. He's stepping forward, so uh, I'm imagining he's shallow circle two. Maybe a step or a pace shy of circle one. Knows he's picking up strokes on folks if he makes this one. Almost everything but in. A little low, a little left there for Gannon Burr. Could have maybe snuck in there, but not centered up quite enough. And that'll slide off. And he'll pop that in here for a par. I think the circles play tricks on your mind sometimes. You're allowed to jump putt, but should you jump putt if you're two inches outside the circle? Huh. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just better off to do a normal putt there and instead I of agree trying with you, to Cam. jump it from two inches outside the circle. It's the same thing that I coach all my clients when I'm doing clinics. You know, if you don't have to jump, don't jump. You know, like if you're comfortable doing a standstill putt from 27, you should feel the same from 31. Right. It's the same stroke. Back to three, McMahon in his third. Easy four from there. And 17 Marweed. That is for bogey. And a good make after the OB drive. You have a range where you go to the jumper, champ? Um, it depends on certain factors, you know, but usually it's, you know, 40 feet. 40 feet was your yeah. number? Yeah. Heimberg going to give this a bid from way out the fairway, oh. and he just slides by on the strong side, and that's fortunate that's been cleaned up a I little bit back there. I was going to say they there. cleaned it up, didn't We they? took a good look at that yesterday. Wow, and, yep, that's a we did big our, change. Our little recon in a golf cart and yeah. got all of our numbers and checking out all the changes. There's definitely a tree missing from that section, and uh, if you happen to get a little basket roll, you can go a long way. Where the Kyle Klein, the heater continues. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Good stuff there from Michigan's Kyle Klein. Heimberg coming back. And this will be unmakeable last year, but it's still kind of tough this year, isn't it? That's a tester, Ian. Couple of things in Calvin's way. Going to have to dial up a good swing. That's a great putt. Yeah, it's uh, tough, to, tough to not go for the birdie when you were in such a good position after one, but he cleans it up nicely. He does. Let's fly this whole three. Walks through, champ. Hole three, by far the hardest hole to make a birdie on on the whole course. To get into the prime position, the sweet spot as we call it, you have to throw about a 540 foot hyzer the whole way if you're right handed backhand. And then from there, as you saw Calvin's disc, it looked like it was in good attitude and position, but the ground sometimes just doesn't let it do what it needs to do. And it takes weird skips and rolls and bumps and it just, it, it's hard to get in there inside the circle in, in two shots on this hole, no matter who you are, and how far you can throw, it takes a lot of Great attitude and distance, and, and you got to hit that dry spot right out there. That's yeah. really what most of those guys are looking for. Right after the crest of the hill, there's a little dried up spot. If you can get there and get that flare skip, you've got a better chance. If not, you get that thick grass, kills the speed as we saw from Calvin. And if you play it a little wide, which I think Calvin was just a touch too wide, it's not ever going to come in there. Yep. And just two birdies on the day from the field. Not surprised at all, Ian.
a very, very difficult hole to score a birdie on. Most everybody, I imagine, is going to be completely content with par. One of them from the fairway, one from circle two. So nobody's in circle one. Yeah. As Off. Champ just said, extremely difficult to get to circle one. This needs to stay in the air for Simon Lazat running out of air. And wow, oh. by the skin of his teeth and a little ground play. That's kind of a different line. Haven't seen many people take the low stinger like that. Most yeah. of those guys are sending it towards those trees in the background about halfway into the canopy and hoping for that late fade right as it approaches and yeah. work its way towards the drop zone over there. I think you've got, if you've got Simon type speed, you know, uh, you, could, you could work that line. It's downhill, so the speed stays up a little bit when you, when you put it on that low line. And the higher you throw it, you know, the more it's going to want to stall and, and slow down. Sexton. This looks going. like a play for par. Maybe? It is, absolutely. Yeah. Going for the comfy spot out there in the middle of the fairway, about 400 playing downhill, more or less, where Sexton landed. Leaves you almost a half of a U-turn to get to the pin from there, <laughs> it and it's really still does. another 400 feet-ish mm -hmm. from there. So he's definitely probably looking for a par. Barella. You notice how they're using the back right of the tee pad to, to put their feet in before they take off because you want to squeeze every last inch you can get out to get to get that disc going left. Yep, those guys are creating the angle on the tee pad. Obviously, the fairway moves to the left, so these guys are shaping their body in the direction of the shot, and Anthony Barella drops a dime out there in the fairway. No issue with the speed of AB. Nice smooth swing there. First steps up. Wish I had a 550-foot hyzer in my back in my right? day. You tell me, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. If there's a hole out there and AB can't birdie it, you should change the hole. <laughs> Big blast there from Gannon Bird. Does this move left in time? And he will join Anthony Barella, Calvin Heimberg out there. Excuse me, Heimberg, Simon Lazat. Mm -hmm. That's a little right of... Ideal. Ideal, yes. It's, it's going to be too. hard to swing it all the way back around to the basket from there unless you throw some kind of crazy roller. It's happened before. We saw it from Kyle Klein last year from deep in the bush. One of the most technical par threes out here, hole four. Kind of a, a mini BRP hole four, if you will. Oh, early tree for McMahon. Yeah, that mandatory is just 65 feet off the box. I do believe he hit the tree beyond that, so he should be safe. And Orem on 14. Vicious run here for Matt Orem. Just drives up shy. That should stay safe. It does sit is the word. That green is quite angled, more so than the camera makes it look. You can kick up and roll on those if you miss them with, with some high pace. <laughs> Any pace. Heimberg on four. Ooh, look at this 6-12 to 12 swing from Calvin Heimberg. Straight up and down oh. on the line. Post toasties. How you like that one? <laughs> My man. <laughs> I'll take another look at this swing from Calvin Heimberg. Let's see where he gets this disc into the window. Left edge, turned over, getting straight, and doesn't move an inch. Calvin Heimberg showing you how to make the flat shot like a technician right there. I will get Calvin back to even on the day. That hole's 299, but it seems like it plays an extra 50 feet <laughs> yeah. almost just because it's so tight. McMahon going to the overstable approach with his second after kicking out of the woods. There you go. Klein, you saw the drive on 14, drops in the birdie. Trying to match what Joel Freeman did earlier this afternoon. Kyle Klein continues the heater. Four to go, back one of the lead. Wow. How about Sullivan Tipton, huh? How about young Evan Smith, man? Yeah. Kyle's wow. 11 for the last 11. Includes a par and an eagle. Wow. Back to three, Sexton throwing two. Solid rip there from Sexton. Doesn't oh, get man. the ground play. It does. It's going to be still circle two. Or fairway, rather. Just shy of circle two, but a good effort there from Sexton. That was ideal. About all you can expect from where his drive was. Copy Absolutely. that. If he wants to give it a run, he can. But he can also just lay it up and play for par. Sexton's got a nice little floaty putt. He could give that a half bid and keep that thing within the bullseye on the way, at, on the way back if he should miss. Mm -hmm. Bird throwing two, as Champ mentioned, a little short of ideal. Yeah, you want to be on the left side of the mandatory tree, not on the right side, looking at it from the tee pad. All the angles are out there to the left, but it's a good 580 feet, 585, 590 even to get to the super, super sweet spot. There he 
he looks like he's going for that roller I was talking about. It's the only way to get wow. it in there from that position. This is curling up. Nice champ. And that's oh, inside wow. circle two. Does it stay in circle one? Right on the edge of the Cypress there for Gannon Burr. Gosh. What a shot. I feel like just a year or two ago, he would shy away from the roller a little bit. And now, that's a weapon. That was a super flippy disc. And he dropped that in this perfect spot. That was a spicy roller from Gannon Burr. Huge thanks to our friends at Halal Guys for sponsoring this spicy moment of the day. Check them out if you haven't. They are delicious. And that shot, unbelievable. That shot was tasty. That's, that was a very <laughs> spicy, tasty shot. <laughs> Is he the first one in the circle then? That thing traveled I about think that 40 was, feet he's gotta on be its right back on almost. <laughs> Didn't it? <laughs> that was definitely inside circle one momentarily. It looks like it may have retreated into circle two. Simon from almost an ideal position. Dries up a little bit. That's yeah. just the ground play there is really tough to judge. It's it's <laughs> Barella. It's wide. A little wide. Oh, oh slow down, my. baby. Whew. By the skin of his teeth, dries up just in time. Is he okay over there, champ? Yeah, he's safe, but uh not sure what kind of look he's gonna have. Okay. Jumping ahead to Tipton on 17. Has birdie three in a row. Mark at one. Mm. Ooh. Super close. Fantastic shot. Good, good chance for the hand bone there. Klein on 15. The clown's mouth. Such an iconic hole out here. They all Absolutely. are, aren't they? They certainly are. Every hole has a story out here. Yeah. 250 feet to clear the triple mandatory. Then Boogie left in a hurry, and this looks spot on from Kyle Klein. Should have all the angles in the world to come into this short par four here at the 15th. That is the meat there, the drive. And there's the birdie for Tipton. Four in a row in third place. Solo third, just two Too off close. the lead. A chance to get within one as he heads to 18. Couple bogeys on his card, that means has 10 birdies. That's very good stuff right there, champ. Anytime you can recover from those bogeys and keep it under, you know, seven, eight under par, man, you're doing some work out there. Well, it gives a, well, yeah, that was a little a, half go, huh? That was a three quarter go from yeah. AB. He was trying to send it home. Just does come up shy. Just such a hard entrance to this. It's almost like at nine o'clock to you when you're throwing the disc and it's really hard to, to get it to come right in there unless you've got some kind of weird roller like Gannon threw or a perfect, Perfectly thrown flare skip sidearm. From the fairway, Sexton looking at birdie. Ooh, taking the soft bid. Yeah. Dropping time. Oh. Sexton from range. 180. Fairway. <laughs> With the dart. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Nice early call on that one, Philo. Hey, man, he's got great touch. I've seen yeah. it all my career with Sexton, man. This dude cool was so good at making those touchy little floaty putts. I've been seeing him do it both sidearm and backhand. Yeah, if that one doesn't bring a smile to your face, nothing will. Birdie and out here. Yeah. Holding the pose, man. Doing the MJ. He got that. He knew it. He did. Sometimes you know exactly what's going to happen as soon as it leaves your hand, and he's holding the pose. Boom. Incredible. Great stuff, man. Sexton's going to need a bunch of that if he wants to hoist up another one of these mm -hmm. USDGC trophies. This field is not joking these days. No. Yeah, the level of play these days is just mesmerizing. You're Every, telling me. Everybody's man. out there throwing 1060s and 1070s, it seems like. Simon with a birdie bid. Ooh, off the cage. Well, one word that comes to mind, my friend, Champ, is the word inspiration. And you, are, my friend, are a big part of that inspiration that kept a lot of us going and chasing down those achievements that you set the bar with. I'm sure these youngsters, they know what's up, man. Even though we've got Paul McBeth the last decade or more doing work and trying to make a run, take a stab at those stats that you've built up over the years. <laughs> Play he's a big part in a lot of our, our past and present, buddy. He's taken quite a stab at it, for sure. He's, uh, he's an inspiration to many as well. For sure. Absolutely. A fantastic birdie by Burr. No doubt. Rarely seen birdies. We got two on the card. Two on the card. We doubled That's the field number right there because <laughs> it was two before the... <laughs> That card hit the hit the hole. That's nice work. Yeah. That's nice work. What do you expect from the best players in the world, man? Yep. That. A little shot of the maintenance yard over there for the golf course that might not be a golf course anymore I hear, and they might end up putting disc golf over there. Oh, really? That would be, be so well. cool. Wow. Beautiful piece of land out here on the back side of the Winthrop Arena. Nine-hole golf course being converted into disc golf. All the rolling hills, the trees, wow. the alleys. 
good stuff back there for some fun disc golf. And actually, the Throw Pink uh, Spectators course, I believe, is back there. It is. We also played a uh, second course there in the 1997 World Championships called Eagle's Nest. We had the Winthrop Lakefront and then Eagle's Nest right on this property that was 36 holes. Wow. Incredible. That row of trees pointing straight up and down in the middle of your screen, that is the fairway, ladies and gentlemen. Not a whole lot of room to work with, just around 300 feet. Feels like a bit more mandatory tree on the left, 65 feet off the box. That gave the players a bit of a relief. It used to be a double, double mando on this hole, and That's it was true. really tough, and it really messed with your mind. But now there's only a single mando, and it's early in the, in the fairway, and it's pretty hard to miss. I mean, so You'd have to throw a shank to miss the mandatory yeah. here at the fourth. It's a little easier to go after this one this year and try and be aggressive on it because there's only one single mando and it's fairly early. So I'd, I'd imagine the players are going to give it their all to try. And there's no reason not there. to. Right. Obviously, when the double-double mando is out there, you had two gates you had to go through, one early, one late. Got to keep the disc central now. If you get off the grid a little bit, you're all right as long as you get 65 feet off the box and right. Is he going to flex this outside the trees? Uh, it looks like he is. There's a little airspace there. But huh. The this gap to hit to get there isn't that big. Super technical from Sexton. Wow. Oh. oh. Got it moving in the right direction. Just a smidgen too high for Sexton. He hit the left-right gap, but there was an up-down gap there with a little branch sticking yeah. out there. Yep. Two inches away from pure there for Sexton. Gannon Burr on the box. Imagine he'll go either over stable putter or mid-range. Maybe go something fast and glidey. Hard to tell what kind of disc he's got in his hand there, champ. There's a lot of different ways you could attack this hole. You could throw a flippy fairway driver. Or you could throw a overstable mid-range. I imagine that was the overstable version there, swinging to the left side of the fairway and unfortunately did not get it in the center. Going to bop a tree, kick left, and he'll have a short up and down for his par here at the fourth. Simon. He's using that right side of the back of the box, so it looks like he's going to go off the left left side, kind of like Calvin did, trying to take it off the left side and flip it up in there. Just turned it over a little yep. too much. Dragged it off to the right just a bit much for Lazat. He's going to bop a tree about <laughs> 200 feet up the fairway, make a little gesture, and head back towards the bag. Barella. He's got to watch all of his competitors pink some wood here. And maybe he can be the percentage that gets through. As it's he's a small percentage it. that gets through on this whole clean. Begging for it to flip oh. in the oh. last tree down the tunnel. Barella kicks and goes off to the right. He's going to have a very congested angle. Maybe nothing. Yeah, not much of a look for a deuce there, but should be able to get on up and down. On 15, Orem throwing two. Actually looks like he's pretty good shape there. Really good shape for Matt Orm, and he's going to use the ground play. First down, putting for birdie at the 15th. T of five, Heimberg. Solid sidearm play on this hole. Drag oh. Dragging your disc away from the water. Oh, Ooh, he flipped it early. Burned it that over. That be better get over stable, stable in a hurry. And it. it oh, no. Oh, no. man, that's going to be so close to staying safe. I think the line is up a little bit on top of the, so I don't think that's even got a chance. Good a call there, champ. The Let's see here. Kyle Klein trying to keep the streak going. Nearly flare skips that in for an eagle. Heimberg confirmed OB. Out on five. That's a mistake you cannot have out here. Back to Sexton throwing two. There's a lot of room to the right of where Calvin went. OB left. There's a ton of room to the right. He didn't need to turn that shot over either, no. champ. He can go one angle, 375 twice, and get on, you know, get into position to score. Yeah. Definitely didn't need the extra D with the what a turnover will give you there. He just needed to throw it flat, and let it let it spin out. Yep, man. I wonder if this isn't a putter or a mid. Let's see how aggressive he's going to be. That looks like no, a he's mid disking up. Yeah. Oh, okay, disking up. That looks skinny. Perhaps a roller even, maybe? Oh, it's definitely possible. He's got the... Heiser flip and drag. We'll find out. Heiser flip and drag for yep. Eagle McMahon. High up into the left side of the window, dragging this thing back to the high right side, and perhaps a little too high up on the right side. Still with Eagle's abilities with the sidearm, shouldn't be too much of a stretch to get into the scoring position. Now he got down there by that ditch, which crosses the fairway, which is a long way down there, so his distance is really, really good off that tee. That was Simon second into the green. That should work for par. Oh, we're looking at Burr now from our Flight Factory drone. 
Beyond all circles, trying to give this a go. Well, Cannon oh. Burr from Rain. Off the tree and in. <laughs> That's one way to do a fight. It certainly is, man. <laughs> you take a little luck early on. Let's see it from the ground this time. Defending champion with a little tree love. It looked like it was a redirection right at the last second. Yep. Oh, oh look at wow. her. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah. Some highlights early in the round for this featured card. Absolutely. No Spider-Man brought his Ned. There's Ganon Burr's buddy, Matt. And that was a pitch up from <laughs> AB for par. Did you get it? He's still cheesing it up out there. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you be? You got to have a short memory out here at Winthrop, man. Even if you do something awesome, don't get too excited about it. Put it in your back pocket and save it for later. Got a lot of holes to play. Tink. Perfect true kick. <laughs> the falling bark. It's so good. Uh, Sexton loves it. <laughs> the, the man is a fan of great disc golf. He certainly <laughs> is. First guy to congratulate me when I threw the albatross. Yeah, hey, you're right, huh? Yeah. There's Simon saving par after the, the drive. Barella in for his par. Simon's like, you lucky, you know what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see none of that, man. You better knock that off immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Saying it wasn't a brush, it was a full-on kick. Yeah, <laughs> full-on bopperoni. They're on their way to five. Jumping ahead to 15 in the birdie putt for Orem. He's in the holly bushes on the right. It's That's too close to miss, man. For a share of fourth, Matt Orem. Is Solid play there from Matty O. Three off the lead, three to go. And Klein, that is a share of the lead. Look at that three streak. Three go. Can you snag it? You'll find out on the other side of this break. Back in just a few. One. Two. Three. I want to be known for winning a lot of tournaments. You know, hopefully I get to a point where I can be dominant in an era with so many people coming up in the game. So hard to stay consistent at the top. That's kind of my goal is to set the new standard for this generation. Kyle Klein, looking at a tee of 16. What a run from Kyle Klein, man. And if he can get this into the house, this would be one heck of a historic first round from Kyle Klein. I can't remember the last someone got 12 deep on an opening round. It's out there for him. 
Heiser flip up to flat. Don't drag. He needs this to get left in a hurry. And a bop, and I believe, into the hazard on the right side for Kyle Klein at the 16th. Oh. A long ways from the basket to get up and down for a three. Dang. Not sure if that got there, but I'm pretty sure I saw him kick to the right, Ian. All right. It looked like it was headed that way. Back to five for McMahon throwing two. Ian, he just went for it. Eagle McMahon spreading his wings, trying to cross the water over 500 feet. This has got it. Putting for Eagle. Come back, Eagle. Come on now, man. He's out there 70 feet away. It's a death putt, but, man, what an effort from Eagle McMahon. Wow. That's it's the second birdie. time. That's the second time we've seen that. Yeah. Double G going for yeah. it. Now Eagle. What a shot. Back to the tee for Burr. That's the line you're looking for off the tee if you're going sidearm. One angle hyzer. Keep it low out there and let it do a little flare skip. Shouldn't move much. Well done there from Gannon. Wow, Eagle had no problem clearing that far bank of water. I mean, it must have been 100 feet past the bank. That and was, he was insane, man. Wow. Did see that he ended up in a great spot, though, on his drive. He was up by that ditch. and you got to have some cojones to go for that shot. Agreed. Sexton. Also a one-angle hyzer out of the hand of Nate Sexton. 375, 375, 375 should equal a birdie here. That seems to be the math. Off the tee, 375, good position. Same thing on the second shot. Get past that last fairway guardian on the left about 100 feet. 375 in and have a look for birdie. With this pin being a little tucked more to the left this year than in years past, it's a, it's a little tougher for the side armor to throw the third shot to the green with it being way tucked left. So he, he might have to go backhand on his third shot. We'll find out. There's some room to miss a little bit on the right side for these guys. You could still play for something that finishes circle's edge on the right side, but yeah, it's hard, it's hard to park. Target on the left, yeah, hard, hard to sure, park tough. with the side arm on the I third agree shot. I agree 100% with you, champ. If you're looking for an eagle repeat, you like the A-B chances. And this drive... Super smooth, man. Yeah. That's what you're looking for. Nothing fancy off the fifth tee. Just get in position. You can definitely shoot yourself out of position off the tee here at the fifth. Scrolling through some scores earlier, I saw a few eights and nines on this hole. and It definitely can do it to you. Here's Eagle from Fort Eagle. And he's just going to have you be happy to lay up for birdie. Little tiny bit of work left there for Eagle. Call it five or six paces, potentially. And that's about all you have behind the basket until you hit the water. So that's probably why he laid it up. Wasn't it less than that? It was like four yeah, steps four from steps, the water, yeah. right? Back to the fairway for Simon throwing two. Goes with the spike hyzer over the top of the trees. And not going to have much movement when it hits, I'd imagine. Yep. Wow, perfect spot there. Past that little nubby. We called that one, what was it, 385? Yeah. Into the green from that little tiny baby tree growing up there. And you don't want to go too much farther down the fairway. Nope. Start losing angles for the hyzer play in the further up the fairway you go. Kyle Klein trying to save par from range. Not going to happen. Still a little bit of work left there for bogey. That's going to be the end of Kyle Klein's, excuse me, Kyle Klein's fantastic run here, first day. Burr throwing two on five. Saw it work for Simon, decided to replicate the shot, and they're laying almost on top of each other. Going to have the same third shot into the green. Little Jeff Rick caddy in there. Barilla doesn't look like he's going to try it, Philo. Early on, round one, just one down after four holes. I think it's a smart play to go on ahead and dump this up there and play for your birdie. Don't do anything silly and take on any extra water if you don't need to. That's a big part of success here at Winthrop, man, is making the right choices. He went super vertical on that, I think, just so he could be a little closer to the water mm -hmm. and not have to worry about it skipping out. And that's right. why he went so vertical. So his next shot's going to be a little easier because you're a little closer to the water. The farther you played away from the water on the second shot here, the tougher your third shot's going to be. So you got to risk it to get the biscuit on the on this one. You put it close to the water, it makes your third shot much easier. Sexton's going to drive this one down towards the water and a little baby flare back towards the center and find position there for Sexton. I'm going to jump ahead to 16. Orem putting for par after the hazard drive. Wow, is he long? He long is, there, champ. huh? Yeah, long and left. Didn't see much of that in our walkthrough, huh? The potential was there, but that Orem cleans it up with a big bang. First down. <laughs> Roll tide. My man. <laughs> Thanks, Azuka, for rolling back that replay. Love Maddie's reactions to the long putts. Ah, he's the best. 
<laughs> the epitome of cool right there. Yes, Matt Orem yes. keeping it chill always. And McMahon did pick up the birdie on five. Got on the board. He's one down on the day. Do you see what six. Eagles lining He's up He's lining up a spike hyzer outside the first tree on the right. Talk about an eagle line. You uh, said it, Ian. Oh you will not see many people try this yeah. line this week. Eagle McMahon out and around the outside. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's a good 35, 40 footer there for McMahon. Did that get a little tighter? That's in circle T for McMahon, yeah. so he's going to have some work left. How far is your disc going on that angle, Philo? Not very far <laughs> these days, man. I'm, I'm old and getting crustier as the time goes by, dude. <laughs> even even Eagle's disc didn't go the full distance it's of the true. hole there. It's true. I mean, that may just be a safety play for him. He feels safe. Actually, he's got, he's got a birdie putt. Champ, yep. He has gone out of bounds on that hole so many times. Like, that's, I Half think you're onto something we've there. seen him on that hole. Never, he skipped OB into the pond. Never uh -huh. seen that forehand, too, mm -hmm. before. We've yeah. seen Eagle do some interesting things out there at the six. not had luck with that hole. Not much success. So maybe just wanted to mitigate that big flare, skip towards the pond, say, oh, you know, I'm good at putting from 45. I'll just give myself this look. Yeah. You might need to travel to Florida a few bit, a few, a little bit more often. <laughs> come come check it out. Yeah. He might be a little bit more comfortable with the Florida hole. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. Here we go. These are the, these are the three discs that are in the. The prime layup area. A couple of options here. These guys could go a hyzer stand up, which I don't really recommend, or a little bit of a cut swing throw at the trees. Or Cannon a bomb over there. the top. Ooh, is that going to make the mandatory? That's That was questionable. Oh, that, I, was, that was questionable. That looked like he pushed it a little wide out the hand. Can we see that again? Well, we'll get a, one more look at that. Huh. I wonder if that's in question right now. Is, is that, that a group talk? call? they got to talk about that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my angle looked pretty good that he was looking to the right of it a bit there. Disc is outside the mandatory. Outside, outside the, the mando, mandatory. Still outside. outside the mandatory. Still outside. We're still still outside. It. I think he went around the right side, champ. Yeah. I think he missed the mando there. Yeah, I would agree. From this perspective, we're obviously not the ones who get to make the call. The group will have to make the final decision. That's why that mando is there, just to kind of take away that shot. Because it's so safe, right? right? Like there's no stress to go up and over from back there, but you got to stay inside that line. And it looks like Gannon Burr pushed it out there, just pulled the swing ever so slightly. Yeah, the course designer definitely wants you to throw it more of a straight, flat level shot across the water at the basket. And that's why that Mando was implemented. But he did give you a little space inside of it to do the spike hyzer. But you have to make sure you, you're inside that, that flag. Simon throwing three. That's the shot I imagine most will play. A little tiny cut towards that oh, limb up there. And just through. a little too much respect for Ooh. Simon. Could have given that thing a little bit more room to work. But hugs the tree. Wow. He's going to come down. That'll be a pretty routine up and down for Simon. It's a great Mando. It's a well thought out Mando. Yeah. Absolutely. Get no breaks here at the, <laughs> on this uh -huh. par five, man. You got to throw good shots. And then obviously the most daunting shot of them all is this one right here. Got to have the right texture to that swing. But he's so close to the water where he can now throw the spike hyzer if he'd like to and not yes, even risk can. the Mando yes, sir, because he he's could, so much he's closer to the water. He's, he's looking at the straight line. He's not looking vertical. I think the straight line's the way to go. He needs that to sit in a hurry. You hear him saying it on circle one and all right shallow circle two look there for anthony barilla that's a, not a bad angle it gives him a hair more space to put at it yeah i mean he's just barely outside of 35 feet so heimberg did pick up the bogey on five after finding uh, the ob here's your more conventional team. line at the sixth hole big flare skip get into that sand yes there just barely go. calvin heimberg in business at the six drop that shot in the perfect spot about 300 feet up the fairway perfect flare skip and onto the beach sexton lying two throwing three if you're on the beachy on hole six it's all peachy my man <laughs> has it always been a beach champ or they do that for you uh i think it's always been a beach they've definitely Brought some sand in there through the years and kept it fresh and nice and white and thick and fluffy and all that goodness. Here he's going with the sidearm, which is going to be hard to get close with the sidearm. He's, you've got to be a little bit cognizant that's about, of. That's, yeah, that's about where yeah, we figured you'd yeah. be ending up out there just outside circle one. 
It's 38 not like he footer. doesn't have the backhand to do that shot and get a little closer, but it's a little safer. You know he's coming away from the water. He knows he's going to be on land with that shot. So. It's all about throwing what you're confident in out here, champ. You know yeah. that just as well as anybody. Sexton not ever really leaned on the backhand game much. Always been a predominant sidearm player, so not surprised to see him golfing his way around this disc in this manner at the moment. On 17, Orem. Solid, man. That's a very smart play there at 17. If you don't want to challenge the basket, just dump it out there in circle two. Take the long look. Birdie putt for McMahon on six. It's a great angle to putt from for Eagle. Yeah, he can be super aggressive from here. Tries to walk oh. it in and just barely jumps in over the rim for Eagle McMahon. Back-to-back -back birdies, five and six. Starting Start to get a little momentum. Yeah, he saw him definitely favoring the right side of that basket. You don't want to skip off the left side of that rim. It's going right out of the, into that water if you do. Kyle Klein trying to recover at the 17th. Does get across the hay bales. Out there 70 feet away. Burr. That's a drop zone, That's it looked at like. That's the drop zone, absolutely, champ. Yep. Into circle one, a little yeah. six meter putt left there for Gannon Burr. For bogey, I believe, right? I think it's easy clean up uh -oh. there. Because he missed the mandatory? Yeah. yeah, yeah First yeah. shot, second yeah, shot, yeah, third missed. Yep. That was his fifth. And now the Mando's well short of that group of trees. Where it looks, uh, I think in years past, Kirk, it was uh, more in the that group line of trees. That Burr used there. Yeah, Gannon's miss. I mean, they, they talked about that for, for quite some time. I mean, Gannon believes that, that his shot would have actually hit the mandatory pole. And by the new rules, if you make it with half your disc, and but half your disc is across the line, you've actually missed the mandatory. So it was a short discussion, and he proceeds to the drop, throwing his fifth, so he's got a putt for the single bogey now. All right, thank you, Nate. Simon, I believe. Putty for birdie. Yeah, that was uh, the layup all the way. There's no way you're going to run that from 80, 90 feet <laughs> yeah. with four steps behind his water. Not the first day anyway, right? No. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the final round five, if you're down a few. Strokes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're down a few and you need to make a move. Then you start pushing the issue. But day one, yeah, play conservative. Get yourself into the house with a good number. I mean, it doesn't even look like it's on the green anymore. It's over there in the brown. There you go. <laughs> Nate Sexton down there, lining up a birdie putt. Oh, this is in range for Sexton again, man. Really good touch around the putting green. Yeah, he's got a soft enough bid that I think he's going to go for this. He does not a spin putter. He doesn't have it flying a million miles an hour past the basket. He's, he's definitely going to give this a run. Soft yeah, run it was. didn't like any of that. Sexton, not the right feels on that attempt from 38. He'll scrape up a par. It's tough when you got a million gallons of water staring you in the face <laughs> behind the basket. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Barella from just outside the circle is going to step this one in for birdie. Same issue here. Maybe a touch more room to work with, but not much. You know, there's step than, than Nate had. And he's going to fire this a bunch faster than the, than the Sexton putt. Yeah, I think it's all about having your confidence of, you know, hitting solid metal here. If, you, if you're confident enough to hit solid metal, go ahead and give it your normal putt. No, off and the mark for Barella, and that's going to dry up safe. Fortunately for Barella, didn't have a lot of pace to that, so that's what you guys are just talking about. Releasing the disc with the right attitude. Burr for bogey. Yeah, I think the Barella putt was uh, one where I was, we were alluding to earlier that you don't have to jump putt everything, and he jump putted that. And why would you jump putt but put more speed on a disc when there's water right behind it when you could putt it softer and not jump putt? That yeah. didn't seem like a good decision to I jump putt you, that. I I talk about these things all the time, using the right motion for the distance. I get it if you got that low ceiling and you need that extra little pop and you're going to give it that run, but, man, with that water behind you, Imagine they'd float the thing in there and try to jackknife it into the chains. Right. Have it coming, falling out of the sky. Vertically. Yeah. yeah. Up and down, not flying horizontally. Burrell is going to pop that in for his par. Simon Lazat, I imagine, will do the same. He had no issues. Same for Sexton. Let's go to the beach. Heimberg. Feeling at home in Florida on the Florida hole. There we go. <laughs> on the beach. At the Florida Hole, Calvin Heimberg. He needs to get something going here. He's had a slow start. He needs to. Oh, that was a little low and right, but sneaks it, in there. It don't matter, man. He'll take it back to level par. Through six goes Calvin Heimberg. As you said, champ, he needs to pick up the pace. You saw the drive for Klein. Here's the putt for two on 17. Oh. Get it there, oh. Kyle Klein. 
huge make. Rattles that thing in on the low left side, and what a way to recover after the bogey at the 16th. That thing was tracking out the hand Ooh. and just slid off. Roll back that Zuka. There was danger on that putt. There always is danger at the wow. 17th green. Yeah, the hay bales are very close to that basket, and the water is very close to the right side of that yeah. basket as well. Orem on the same. Looking to match the effort from Kyle Klein. Disc is away, coming in low. Matteo got nothing doing there. You could tell the commitment wasn't there. That wasn't his normal He didn't follow stroke. through, champ. Yeah. He cut off the swing. It looked like it to me anyway. Eagle McMahon at the seventh. That's a very conservative layup. And well to the side. That's not even wow. that good, is it? That was not the best effort there from Eagle McMahon. Back on six, Sexton. Nate Sexton. Imagine he's just going to throw the, the Calvin line on this one, nice and low, out to the right, and try and get a little skip at the end. And Ooh, that could be enough. a little early, champ. He said short, in danger of finding some water. Oh! Wow. Did that skip off the post? Whoa, no, not like we saw yesterday <laughs> in the walkthrough. That was not quite that favorable, but Sexton Ooh. did get some fantastic ground play, a little exactly push, slide, and hover. Simon, hoping he doesn't need that kind of luck. No, you don't. You want to bring like this thing lining in up pin high, not early. Something wide, yeah. It looked like he, he was lining up something wide here. And yeah, he took it up. Not as aggressive as the eagle line. Oh, look at you, dude. Right off the bullseye for Simon Lazat on the beach. Threw a little sand out of the divot there. <laughs> there you go, Simon. Barella. Yeah, he's looking wide right as well. Low driver. That's got to hurry. That was a good skip. Come on now. Oh, there you just go. Enough. Safely onto the just beach for enough. Avery. I mean, less than a yard for both of those discs. Agree with those drives on a razor's <laughs> edge right there. <laughs> Gannon Burr living on the edge. It's not like you can push it too far to the right on this hole because there's Obi waiting for you over there, too. True story. It's not just the water. There's the line over there on the right that's uh, flanked by rocks and things, and it's maybe 50 feet, 45 feet off the right side of the basket. And that looks like it's heading oh, towards that area. Yeah, that's perfect for Gannon Burr. Flare oh, skip. Okay. That's perfect. That's the way you'd like to play this hole. Bring it in on the top side. Take all the stress out of any OB. A little short five-meter putt back towards the water should not be stressful at all for Gannon Burr. Heimberg, T of seven. New tee pad here at the seventh at the lounge. The Zuka Lounge surrounding this tee pad. This this elevated could do tee something pad. awesome. Woo. That is a pretty shot. I like the shape on that shot. Agreed. Yuna Heinonen on 17. All the way from Finland. That putt was from Finland, Philo. It certainly was. That was across the Atlantic Ocean right there. Big putt there for Yuna Heinonen. Lovely. 18 with Klein, share of the lead, trying to grab Solo. He's got to sit down. That's a little more left than you'd like. That I imagine so that's going to drag OB. Yeah, he didn't get that up into the hill enough. You've got to throw it towards that stump and let the gravity, you know, the laws of physics take over if it's not gravity and pull it back towards the left. Or throw a slightly, you know, less stable disc there and that's let it another drift. option. That is Mc another option. McMahon after McMahon, the yep. poor layup goes to the forehand roller and he covers Perfect. that up nicely. Executed wonderfully. But that's a tough spot to be over there mm -hmm. if you're on a, a safe drive that's not past the Mando and having to go from the drop zone. I think the drop zones are pretty similar areas to where he just was, maybe not quite as far out. Mm -hmm. Looking down at Gannon Burr, putting for birdie. No excuses from this distance. <laughs> And Burr covers up that bogey on five nicely. Back to two down on the day. There's some bricks surrounding this basket where the bullseye is, and they kind of get covered over by all the people walking. But you can see the, on the left side of the basket there that there's a brick circle. It's posing as the bullseye where the orange paint normally is. Barella makes short work of that birdie putt. Sexton should do the same. You guys count your lucky stars on this hole, you two. Oh, you my guys goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Skinny and by there. Certainly was, champ. They're, they're going to enjoy watching that catch cam footage tomorrow. <laughs> Find out exactly how close they got to getting away with that one. Is that a little star frame there at the six for our feature cards? Yes, sir.
<laughs> and we are celebrating the new concert series that is every night at the Championship Village. The Empire Strikes Brass is tonight. Friday, we got the Tan and Sober Gentleman. Saturday, Big Something. And Sunday, Josh Daniel. Josh Daniel, make sure you are in the house this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're anywhere within a few hour drive, this is the place to be this weekend at the Championship. All the excitement, all the music, all the vending, all of your favorite stars in one place. Gotta come. Hole seven, Dickerson, just a moment ago. Smooth. Now through the wickets. That's Smooth. all you're really looking for here is to get something through that gap. If you get through, you got a birdie. It's, I mean, unless you over crank it, right? I yeah, mean, I mean, there's a little OB behind it, but you have to throw it pretty hard to get back in there. Yeah. This is all about touch here at the seventh, just 87 meters, 200 and some odd feet, 284. It plays a little shyer than that if you hit it with the Bushnell. I believe we shot this at 285-ish. All right, it's right there. It okay. is downhill, it so does it does play, play a little shorter. That elevated tee pad really doesn't change the, the shot very much, does it, Jam? No, not at all. It's a little, maybe a touch wobbly underfoot, but not too bad. It's, it's doable. So our friends at Zuka, check out the Zuka Lounge there on hole seven. So cool. Trying to get that waste management feel. Yeah. Hole 16, uh -huh. get that big gallery. I imagine as the years progress, we will see this grow even more. Every see year. Some, some beer cups flying onto the <laughs> pad. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. That would be so much oh, fun. Man. Sexton with the box. He's got that a little wide. He's got to hook up. Not yeah. enough. That's in danger of rolling around the backside of that even for Sexton. Yeah, it got a strange reaction off it the fence. It did. If that knurled on the backside, he's heading to a drop zone. Yeah, it looked like it hit it hard enough to come back just enough for the curl maybe to be on the line instead of over the line. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll find out in just a moment. Meanwhile, Simon Lazat lines up here at the seventh. I imagine some kind of stable putter. On the line for that Lazat. That's great. Beautiful on the 6 to 12 line for Lazat. Drop in birdie. That's how you want to do it right there. You no stress. It, Look at this card. We've got three twos and a three. Fairly even play so far but for our featured card here. How about Sexton holding it down early, huh? Clean three down through six. Barella. A little hot and left. Yep, he's gonna bop the lattice. and That's definitely going to be on the safe side of the line. But for sure. Really tough look from there. Not, not much of an angle. Not much of an angle to no. try and make birdie. Get him burr. Which shot shape do you like best here, champ? Do you like the guys that are trying to go the hyzer flip up that has the potential of dragging off to the right or that cut swing to the flat side, throw it off to the left and try to drag it back online? I like playing it off the left pole and trying to drag it back in, like a little bit turnover, kind of like that. Just enough turn for Gannon Bird. He's yeah. going to creep inside circle one. That should get Gannon to three under par on the round. It lets you be a little more aggressive. You I can, would agree you with you that. Can, the hyzer really, flip's a bit more yeah. touchy, right? Yeah, you can be a, you can be a bit more aggressive on that line and follow through and commit. And if you hit the right side, it might bounce left and give you a putt still. T of eight with McMahon, a layup play. Must be lining up the roller, Philo. Or he's got enough sidearm to get uh, it in there. I mean, yeah, it's not right. the it longest of par fours. So, I mean, if you can get that thing 400 off the box, 375, he's got almost the same number in. Or I'm on 18 throwing two. Looking good. This is looking really nice. Needs a skip. Got to skip. Does it have enough to drag all the way in? Green flag, but circle one. Circle one. There you go. Matt Orem in business on the last. Well, that must have got some great ground play. It's pretty slippery down there, and yeah. we lost the stump on 18, champ. How about that, huh? Yeah, it's been there for many, many years, and now it's gone. It's flat. There's no remnants of it left. Second for Dickerson on eight goes to the roller. I like this play when you're in that position, but a couple of late things to miss, and one last. Oh, oh. there you go, oh. Dickerson. All right. Just outside the circle, and that will worked out for him. Good angle to putt from. You would like to be below, most. I would say, probably the safest of angles, but. Solid shot there from Dickerson. Anthony Barella trying to get cute here. Oh, no. Too cute. That's still a makeable putt Ooh. at least, but 
It's makeable, but you'd rather have a stress-free par Absolutely. after that kind of drive. Little tester left for Anthony Barilla at the seventh. Here's our here's the call on Nate. Let's see where he ended up. Doesn't look like they're sending him to a drop zone, so I imagine he's safe. Yeah, like you can see the disc there he's just short of the short wood. Short of the line, yes, sir. You, you can, can see, see that, that line. Yeah, the cut grass yes, is the sir. line. That's a very smart way to do it. Oh, yeah, well safe. Still awkward, but safe. I think he's going to go with a little more conventional layup. Sexton. Yep. Nice touch there displayed. From the one-time USDGC champion. Here's Barella. Big putt. He's going with the jumper again. He's outside the circle, circle right there. Circle two look for Anthony Barella. More than a tester. This is one of those tourniquet putts. You do not want to hemorrhage early strokes, especially on this hole. Step through putt away. And dead center for Anthony Barella. No doubt about that one. Makes good after a small mistake on the layup shot. No, a bigger mistake on the drive. But he walks out with par. Not too bad. We'll see how that does for his putting confidence throughout the rest of the Ooh. round is Gannon Burr. Fortunate to see that one rest at the bottom of the cylinder. Sexton drops home the par. That is a birdie for Simon Lazat. Beautiful mm -hmm. stone drive there. That was. Simon. He did that perfectly. Simon joining the three down gang with Nate Sexton. Both through seven. That's a good pace right there, Ian. You it get through this front nine, four, five, six under par, you're doing things, and big you things. You kind of look at the scores. You know, it's kind of survive. The first four score. holes, and then you can kind of get yeah. going. I would agree with that. Two, three, and four, no joke. This is Klein on 18, throwing three after the OB drive. That got down the hill. That looked nice, man. That Green is. flag. Should be a circle one look. That looked like it had all the right attitude on it. It did. It's had some speed coming across there on the ground. Those wood chips usually do a pretty good job of killing the speed. McMahon yeah. does go to the roller on eight. Looks a little high right. Yeah, Ooh, that was a good bounce, perhaps. Oh, oh. Same tree Dickerson hit in the wrong reaction. Still out there in circle two, potentially fairway. Hard to say for Eagle. Klein going down the hill. It is mild circle two to save par. Mm. Mm. Just a little lack of commitment there. Man, it's a tough basket heavy to change, putt at. Though. Yeah. That was heavy change, champ. Yep. Just a smidgen off to the left for Klein as we rejoin with Simon Lazat on the box of eight. A little semi-amphitheater wood around the back of this tee pad. And a little bit off the front there. It's a little different look than it's had in the past. This whole skinny's up out there at about 400 feet. Yes, it, it gets does. very tight, so I'd, I'd see most of the players like throwing 350, 360 at the most because... There's really no need to challenge that left side, right? You're not really gaining anything by right. getting further to the left unless if you're only wanting to throw the sidearm. Long birdie look for McMahon. McMahon's going to come up empty up ahead on the green of eight. Yeah, and you don't really want to go long on that shot mm -hmm. because that bush behind there will block you right out from everything. Again in Burr. Are you surprised to not see these guys often for the sidearm with that tree that came down up there ahead of the fairway? That looks pretty sharp there from Gannon Burr. But didn't throw it very hard, so he's going to land in that sweet spot out there around 330, 340. Yeah, I thought I would see some more forehand sidearm routes, lefty routes, because there's a, a big tree that's missing down there. There's a stump. You can see the stump that used to be there, but it looks like it's a little more friendly off the front right of that pad, a little more airspace. Sexton. Sexton will go to the sidearm here at the eighth tee. Force over something over stable, getting this thing to bleed back towards center and right. Well executed shot once again from Sexton. Barella. Maybe a clean two down so far. Well, half the group picked a, the sidearm option here with that, that missing tree down there. Low stinger from Anthony Barella just past the stump. Big flare skip up to the right, and that should have plenty of room to be safe. That's pretty solid angle to work with. Two options there, sidearm in or a roller potentially. Backhand shot, it's almost impossible. Yeah. yeah. This fairway cants a little more from right to left than the screen's showing, so it stops those sidearms from skipping away and getting out of bounds or in the hazard to the right at least. Dickerson in circle two looking at birdie. Oh, Dickerson, low, instantly out the hand. He liked yeah. none of that, Ian. Never got it in, into the chains. Nope. 
Hand was definitely pointed at the pole when he let go, and the disc followed. And like Freeman <laughs> finishes a great round with a bogey on 18. It'll get you, huh, Philo? It will. 18 is a, an extremely difficult finishing hole, man. You have to make the right shot, make the right decisions, have all the right feels. You need to know the lay of the land and how the disc responds up there because you can't see it. Nope. You just know where it's at. James Proctor for four in a row on 17. That's the keg climbing the fence putt there. <laughs> it certainly was. Nice little hand bone there for Proctor late. Back to eight for Burr throwing two. We got Robert Burridge coming through the field pretty quickly here. He's uh, nine down through 11. Oh, my. And a clean nine down at that. Yes. Gannon Burr going towards that Mando tree. There is a little room back there, but I don't think he found it. Going to be tied up along the fence line. Most likely just a layup and a par for Gannon Burr. I'm surprised to not see him throw a little, a little spicy sidearm, sidearm in right? there. Get the flare skip, man. And there's so many more variables in the roller, in my opinion, than there are in a one-angle sidearm. Well, especially if you let the roller, set the roller down on the right side of this fairway. You've got to get it in the center or to the left a little bit for it to, to clear all the trees on the right. Did Simon get the disc in the right spot? Too much that cut. Was a little too bit much too much cut. into the face. Yep. You set it down in the right spot. It just didn't have the right angle. Was that always your play here, champ? Uh, pretty much, especially with the longer pin here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems, seemed to work. It curls around nicely if you hit it in the middle and get some kind of look at it. To be fair, you have one of the best roller games <laughs> ever <laughs> at your peak, man. I love rolling the disc. It was it was a nice tool. You know, I didn't have much of a sidearm per se, so uh -huh. the roller worked in where the sidearm, you know, would would be an option. Ooh, oh, Calvin Heimberg takes a stab for down. the ace at the ninth. He's going to be just inside circle one, pin high off to the left. That's going to be congested, champ. Yeah, there's a big tree over there. If, if he's just passed it, it'll be all right. But if he's pin high with it, it's going to be it's going to be a tough look. This is what I was hoping to see on the second play. A little too high out the gate for Barella, and it's getting beat down instantly. I think that's why you, more people go to the roller here is because if you're a little bit high, it's just going to it's just gonna get, yep. just get taken out by I just by feel those like limbs. these guys have got that shot, though. They do it all the time, and then it seems like a routine little sidearm pitch into the green, and they can't seem to figure it out. Up ahead, hole nine, 362 feet, 315-foot comfy carry over the hazard. Disc away for Dickerson. Watch out, that back line is close. Ooh. Oh, dries up just short of it. Had just wow. enough angle on it to stay in there. And luckily enough, that line actually goes out away from the basket there a little bit. If it mm. went straight across, that would be out. Sexton throwing two on eight. Set up beautifully for his forehand. There you go. Just got to keep it low and tight. Looks a little high. Yep, and good it call. Is. That's, that's exactly why they go to the roller. It's yeah. just, you're not going to hit branches on the roller. The only thing you can really hit on, on those right side trees. Yeah, you got the fence on the left and to the straighten you out. Yeah, yeah, the fence on the left will always kind of pretty much save you from going anywhere horribly. This looks Man. a little left from Eagle. This, this spikes down in a hurry. Indeed, it is left. And and he's in circle one, but he's got an open look. Yeah, just short of that tree, which is going to give him a good look. Yeah, seven steps in. Yep. Shouldn't be too stressful for an Eagle McMahon. There are your scores, and as the champ mentioned, Bobby Burridge on a 9 through 11. That's amazing. You notice all those other scores are finished, finished, yeah. finished, finished, and he is at 9 down through 11. Still got a third of the course left to go. Can Man. he add to the tally, or will he get held up somewhere along the closing stretch? We will find out together bob, bob going burr right now man <laughs> Ooh, Bob's course, got record game, possibilities man. going on out there yeah. if, he, if he finishes up strong what's the number these days was it 14 15 52 i believe is dickerson's number mm. i can't remember who did it sexton in his third looking for the up and down par that's right it was alex russell that did it a couple <laughs> yeah. years back he got yeah. on the heater and held it together Champ, we kind of talk about this course being a uh, forehand friendly. Was that a prevalent thought back in the day as well, or? Yeah, I mean, took the thought right out of my mouth, dude. Yeah, really. <laughs> you did. I was just thinking that. <laughs> With all the right-handed people in the world, uh -huh. you know, they, they kind of were trying to make courses tricked up for for right-handed players okay. and bat right-handed backhand players. But then the disc technology evolved, and it became a little easier to throw the sidearm. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, I mean, try and throw a beat-up cobra with a sidearm. Just go ahead and try and do that one time. <laughs> Tell me how it works out for you. <laughs> so I think, yeah, that had a lot to do with, you know, how this course sets up and how the angles of the, the ground are favorable to a sidearm. That's cool to know the history of how it evolved into a sidearm-friendly, you know, course. Oh, oh Heimberg. Heimberg off the mark. Just not enough airspace on this elevated basket. <laughs> it's a major, he says. Simon throwing three after the roller found the fence.
I'm also curious from your perspective, Champ, over the years, you know, obviously nowadays it seems like pretty much everybody's got a, at least a serviceable sidearm. Like back in the day, it didn't seem like we had much more than a couple of guys that really leaned on the sidearm play. Not off the tee so much, but, you know, for trouble shots, trick shots, getting up and down, kind of like this here. There was there was a lot of sidearm play back in the day, but just for pure all-out long-distance drives off tees, you didn't see it a whole lot. But there was definitely a lot of this stuff. But. Was it mostly due to the technology not being able to handle the torque, or was it just that guys just hadn't really developed that sidearm game? Oh, no, this Ooh. is the place you don't want to go. If it keeps curling, should have a look, but, man... Rolling out nearly to circle two. Wow. Brutal break there. That's such a good landing. Defending yeah. champion getting a little Uh-oh. unfortunate here. He might have thrown a backhand into that side hill. It's choices, choices, right? Yeah. yeah. I think a backhand would have been a better choice there because he did not match the hill angle. Exactly. Anytime you're landing on a hill slope like that, you want to try and match the angle as best as possible. That way it can't kick up. A little baseball action happening down here at the Winthrop University Arena. Watch. Eagle Man. McMahon slide one in for a birdie at the ninth. Quietly to three under par this afternoon. Yep. Avoiding trouble. He is. Yep. He Avoid. might have a number set in his mind, man. If I can get it to six, seven, eight, I'm right in the battle here. Even if somebody does go low, low and pop a 12, I've got the firepower to come back on him. Yeah. And he's done it time and time again. Bogey Brr. free is key out here. Yeah. You said it, bro. Going up the hill for par. Trying to clean it up here. Gannon Parr possibly made the wrong decision to get to this position. He does have a comfortable look where he can be super aggressive with it. Because uh, You hit. could get the front edge and roll back at him. That's true. But if he misses everything, it, the ground will stop him quickly yeah. there. Everything but in for Gannon Burr. That was tracking. Heard some band. Heard some chains. Not um, to be... Birdie Unforced for error on that bogey. It was, wasn't it? There's a Chris Dickerson putt, and he quietly gets to three under par. That's actually better than uh, Joel Freeman's base <laughs> through nine, and then he went on us. Then he got hot. Yeah. For par, Barella. Solid swing and pop there for Anthony Barella. Clean up that par. Sexton is going to do the same. Step and a half off the bullseye. Shouldn't be much of an issue for Sexton. Yeah, that bush that he's got his left foot into, me and Pilo noticed that it was grown out and gotten a lot thicker. And if you're anywhere around the backside of it, you have absolutely no look. There's Simon in for his par. And Burr with the, the bogey after the roll away. And welcome into the booth. Chip, what do you make of our first uh, nine holes out here at Winthrop? It's, uh, it's gone pretty smoothly, I think. You know, the players are doing what they need to do. There's a couple unforced errors here and there, but no one's blowing up real bad. No one's tearing it up a whole lot. So, yeah. well, not that we've seen on camera, right? Not that I mean, Burge is out camera. there ripping this place yeah. to pieces right now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, kind of kind of what you expect. You know, first round, you, uh -huh. don't wanna, you know, you can't win it the first round. Just but get you can, a solid one. You can down, damn right? sure shoot yourself out of it. Yeah, no doubt. that's for sure. We've seen that lots yeah. of times. Jumping over to hole 10. Dickerson is playing this for birdie. We say Philo is about 270, 280 feet to the ideal layup spot. It looks like he's gone a little bit left of that. He's yeah, cresting up on that tree there. That a little too hard. Like to have nice footing, no obstructions. Got a little about 250, 260 in from there for Chris Dickerson. Eagle McMahon, I imagine he will take a stab at this for Eagle. One of our favorite calls on here is eagle for eagle. Eagle for eagle. Well, this hole plays 471 straight from the tee to the pin. It says 549 on the tee pad, and that's if you play the way Chris Dickerson played out to the left and around. And if you're going straight at the pin, it's only 470 feet, and it's about 440 to carry the front line there. So that's on the circle's edge. The, the OB is right there on the circle. So 440 foot of accurateness is what you need to get onto this green, and that's Eagle nowhere like near it. where it, it needs over. to be. That's Hoping way to the right. Hoping for a late fade and skip, and it's not going to happen for Eagle. Blowing it long and to the right. 
It's going to result in a drop zone third throw yep. for Eagle. He's going to have to get up and down for par from the drop zone. It's like 380, something like that? It's only 330, 330? Yeah, 340 okay. or something, somewhere in there. 330 is the number from okay. the drop zone. Looking down at hole nine. So fun fact, the course record to par owned by Alex, Alex Russell. Russell. Yes, sir. Score right there, Ken Climo. 49 down, 49, not 49 down, but a 49. Quite a different layout back in of 99. Course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and this course has evolved year to year. Almost every year there's some significant change out here. Simon, T of nine. Left to right looks fantastic. Didn't do much on the ground, no. but we'll take that. You'll take that yeah. every round right there. You'll take a 20, 25-footer on that hole every round right there, wide open, nothing in the way. That's kind of what you're playing for if you're not going to park it. We're going to see a forehand on nine out of Sexton. Oh, no. No, Go this backhand. is a righty backhand play all day long, just 330 feet to carry. Yeah, those big trees down the left have some limbs that hang out that really are going to affect a, a sidearm play unless you're trying to throw a frozen rope at it. And I don't think Nate wants to throw a frozen rope sidearm with the with the OB directly behind it. And all those limbs hanging down on yeah. the left side just doesn't make any sense. 315 feet, check that to carry over the hazard. Disc away for Sexton. This looks a little early and left. Oof. Oh, Ooh, and he catches the rock. Sexton doesn't put rock. enough juice on that to cover the, the hazard. To the drop Ooh. zone. <sighs> Big mistake Sexton. there for Sexton after a really clean first eight holes. And that drop zone putt it. is no fun either. <laughs> no, it is no. not. That thing was a meter from being safe. Barella. Ideally, I think you want to see the guys with power throw it a little higher. That way they can spike in and not move as much when they hit the ground. Barella just barely squeaks past the rocks, and he's going to be shallow circle one. Wow. Right on the inside of circle two. Birdie is just keeping pace with the field, though, here. This is a 70% birdie rate. I feel like this is a got to get birdie on the course, Ian. There's really not much to it at 315 feet to clear the hazard. Wide open, lots of airspace. Got to get this one in there. Overstable approach from Gannon Burr. Ah, he pulled it. He yanked that a little bit. Let's hope it's not to too far. In a big hurry. This green is only 60 feet deep from front to back, max. It looks like he just dried up in time for Gannon Burr. Going to have a lengthy look. Circle two, putting for birdie. So he's probably right around he's the right, drop right zone. He's right near the drop zone spot where that tree is a bit tricky yeah. of an angle. It's a, kind of a low ceiling, or you have to putt it on a big curve left to right or right to left there. Heinberg famous for eagling this in the downpour. Can you do it? Hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> Monsoon. It was a leftover hurricane. Soggiest tee pad I've ever seen. Calvin Heinberg, this is looking really nice. Calvin Fading Ross. back on time. Oh, what ace run from Calvin Heimberg on the par four 10th hole. What and a shot. Man. Still Talk only about, about an three or four dude. feet from being Woo. out of bounds behind it. Wow. That's that how tight that green is. Putting for Eagle. Not Again. a gimme. Yeah, he's just got circles edge both sides. Yeah. Wow. That was fun. This would be a nice catalyst to, to bump him up to, towards the end of his round and get him going here. Oh. Off the band for Vinny for Eagle. At least a drop in birdie is your consolation prize. There's nothing wrong with that. You'll take your birdie, but he definitely kind of. Yeah. You see that look on his face. You know he let one slip through his fingers. Yeah, that's two down through ten for Calvin. Mm. Going back to ten for McMahon from the DZ throwing three. This is, this is still the T pad. This is the T. He's going again. Oh. Ripped over on this once again, and this is also not going to fade back this, in time. I think this is a replay. That's a yeah, replay. A My bad. Okay, he should. Uh, okay. We'll get you the. We'll get you the tee pad. I was shot. about to say, what is he doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> there would be no reason to throw from the tee again. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Sexton from the drop stone for par. This is a tricky, tricky line from here, and it's also 50 feet away. Yeah, 50 feet on the number from the DZ. Sexton on a knee, trying to spin it home, just not enough go. Line looked good. Hard to challenge the height of the ceiling there. There is Burr in circle two. Looking going for a similar, yeah. 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 Going to do the same thing. Out of airspace. This, this, this raised basket gives this, this side of the basket a tough look because just because the basket's raised up and it kind of just has to be near those limbs. 
if you want to make it in the chains. I'd say for practically every angle putting on the screen, if this elevated basket wasn't there, it would be just too easy. It would be much easier for sure. Well, be no stress, yeah, be, yeah, no stress to put with the baskets. Look Damn. at this guy. Burr, come on. That was ridiculous. That Solid had some heat on it, man. That had some pop. It had to, right, with that, that ceiling? Yeah, 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 we can do it a little slower than that, <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know if I would recommend it, but that guy's got such a fantastic putting oh, action. Man. He yeah. usually doesn't miss the line very often. Nah, He's a little hot under the collar from the last hole, a little unfortunate roll away, so maybe I'll put a little, little extra pop Why on not? it. I can see that. Barella to match that birdie. <laughs> Nicely done there from Anthony Barella. That can be his Achilles heel right around that eight yep. meters, nine meters tester range for these guys. That put could have gone on OB with a miss. Absolutely can. If you airmail it, you got no space behind this target, less than five meters. Yeah, I'd, I'd say four at the most to yeah, that the back The bullseye line. is, what, two, half a step away from the OB yeah. line? Yeah. It's like right there, one big foot away. Zot. Sneaks home the birdie nicely. Yes, sir. That, that's uh that's four down for Simon. That's a good nine holes. It is. There's nothing wrong with four down through nine, especially with two, three, and four out there. That could easily send you the wrong direction. All right, you can't win it in the first round. I guarantee you it all, any or all of these guys would be thrilled with an eight under opening round here. Gives them a nice solid foundation to build on. The real drop zone shot now stands up. Yeah, I think six under or better, you're, you're, you know. You're, you're in the in, match. You're in position. You're yeah. in the match. You're in the match. For sure. All right, that's the drop zone shot from Eagle McMahon. Looks like he's seven steps away for his par. Dickerson saw the drive, ended up here. Imagine overstable mid-range for Dickerson. Just inside 250 feet. Leaves it on the, the good side of the hole, I would say, Smart. for a righty backhand because it's going to stop quicker. And and filters in, right? With Robert Burridge. That's an awesome shirt, man. And it's good. I like that. Looks like he's taking his first bit of red on the yep. card. Uh-oh. The 12th got him. He's still eight down through 12, which is really, really fine. It's a really good pace. Things. Really yeah. good pace. Eight and you look at the scorecards, everyone's taking a bogey. <laughs> but you got to keep him yeah. under, like, five for the tournament, yeah. man, if you want any yeah. chance of winning. You can't come out here and take 12 bogeys on the week and think you're going to survive. McMahon for par. Oh, rejected. Oh. Brutal. Oh, the throw pink just threw him right out of the basket. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's that was a well-executed putt. Yeah, that wasn't anything wrong Not surprised to see one. a little frustrations there from Eagle McMahon. Thought he had that up and down for his par locked up. Basket said no. He'll pick up bogey here at the 10th. Meanwhile, Dickerson, short little tap in here. Snag a birdie on the card. Relatively easy birdie hole if you play it over to the left like Chris did and then throw it across the green. It's and the softest uh, hole on the course, Jim. Yeah, it's not much risk, you know. This hole didn't always play like this. This hole has changed a bit throughout the years, but it's been this way for quite a long time. So there was, there was more of a front uh, area in front of the basket, like 60 or 70 feet back short of the basket where you could land in. Uh -huh. Basically, OB came just in front of the drop zone back in the day, didn't it? No, it came to that tree, the little tree this that's tree. like 380 gotcha. out okay. there. It came all the way back to that. So gotcha. you, could, you could reach the green, but you'd have like a long eagle putt if you couldn't reach the basket. But gotcha. now now it's pretty much at circle's edge. you got to throw it 440 feet just to get in the inbounds area from the tee. That is a mash. Absolutely not many guys in the field have the courage or the arm to do that comfortably. I'm not saying that they can't do it at all, but comfortably is a whole other situation when you're playing for a major title. And it's a bit uphill. You it know, is. And you like got some downhill. crossing wind blowing out there every once in a while, and it's kind of unpredictable. This yeah. section of the course can get kind of swirly. The tee pad is a bit on a cant uphill as well. It slows your footwork down. Simon. Oh, he's caught a little piece of mulch there. A little bulk there from Simon. He'll reload and fire it off to the left side. Simon, one of the longest throwers in the world, choosing to lay up, and I think that's good golf strategy. You know? Look at where he's at, man. He's four under par through nine holes, and if you pick up this one here, then you can start making some tougher decisions in the holes coming up. Ahead on 12, Chris Dickerson. I think this um, is 11. 11, thank you. With the holly bushes, and I think <laughs> this is our all hazards out there, unless you go across that sidewalk on the left, correct? Yes. So. 
That's a really Ooh. nice shot there from Chris Dickerson. You will not see many people execute that play much better than that. Up on top, flat footing, great spot. Can go sidearm into the green. Yep, choices. Choices, exactly. Back to 10. AB going over stable fairway. And looking for Eagle. He's going for it, folks. Big rip out of the hand of Anthony Barilla. This is tracking. Similar to Calvin's, going to be a little It's going to be a little further, yes, sir. But he's going to get a green flag and a long look from inside circle two from Anthony Barilla. But he's putting towards the drop off on the backside of the screen. Will he run it? Burridge. Second shot on one of the hardest holes in the course. Ooh, got a little far moving. out there. Ah. Oh, just a little too far out. Come back down on the short stuff. Didn't see it I fall. It's green, it but he's going to be pinched up a little bit along the left side there. See if he can scramble up that par for Burridge. Back to 10 for Burr. Ripped over too hard. I don't think any disc is stable enough to come back from that, is it? Yeah, I think he's he's got it on line. Good wow, enough line. just yeah. enough. He didn't miss it too far to the right. That looked like he really ripped over on it. Usually when we see these guys throw this shot, the disc doesn't really move to the right very much. They kind of hit it out there on one angle, and it drifts a little, but it doesn't turn. Right. Sexton playing for birdie. Burr loves that cut swing, though, doesn't he? He certainly does. Very much so like Nico LaCastro. Yeah. A lot of over-the-top action in their swings. A little bit of texture there on the drive for Sexton with the sidearm, but executed perfectly. Oh, well, there you go, right there where Dickerson was a moment ago. Yep, right by that 320-foot tree off the tee. Yes, sir. Second shot for Dickerson on there 11. There you go. Thought He's about this would be the sidearm coming in. Great position here. Fantastic position. Lots of room to work with. You can see everything. This green has gotten a lot tighter throughout <laughs> the years, and uh, this year it's no exception. It's very tight up there around the basket. And they changed the position of the basket a little bit. They dropped it they down, dropped under, it the down flat, into the flat into the flat up onto bit. the side hill. Yeah, it definitely changes the, the feel coming into this 11th green. Back to 10 for Simon throwing two. It's another one of those little tweaks we were talking about, Champ. You know, every year they make a little adjustment. Yep, here and there. It's got to go. That's not going to get there. That's a red flag for Simon. I can't believe he came up that short. Is it safe? No, it no. didn't look like it. It looked like high grass. Gosh, I mean, that's a little long on this shot, if anything. I'm super shocked to right? see that from Simon Lazat. That's a big beat-yourself throw right there. Jeff Berg, Berg on the bag. There's like no way that was I think it's in. brick. B-R-Y-K. I think this is going to be red all day long. Yeah, you got to get to the short grass. Never got out of the high grass. No, yeah. There it is, shy. She pointed yeah. down at it. <laughs> Simon Lazat will have to reload here at the 10th. Now throwing four. That has some better attitude to it. Got to slow down. Flare off a little bit inside circle one, just barely there for Simon. Have that left to scramble up a bogey after right. playing this one for birdie. The safe play. Heimberg, the tee shot, fantastic. Throws two now on 11. Skip. Flip. Stop. Job done. That's a very satisfying birdie there. Back to 10 for Sexton and his second. What do you think about the shape of that champ? It was, it was very sawed off, wasn't it? It, was it looked All steep right, and sawed out. off, but it worked. He put enough pop on it to get it there. McMahon also had a fantastic drive on 11 throws, his second. How do they both end up right Gotta on the go. line, Isn't basically? Crazy? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And safe. And safe. They are Team both McMahon. putting for birdie. Yes, they are in position. Burridge, Ooh, on 13. you don't want to be here. <laughs> mm. That looking really nice, though. Yeah, Burridge might be nice. getting scrappy here, champ. Oh, man. He's great on both sides, I'll tell you that wow. for sure. Wow. <laughs> he likes oh, man. it. Man, <laughs> what a shot. That's your U.S. college champ right there. It certainly is. And par does not kill you on that hole at all. No, yeah, no, good point. no, no. Looking down at the green of tent from our Flight Factory drone at your final feature card. A solid little Thursday afternoon gallery out here at Winthrop. We've got Barella 58 feet on this eagle putt. Got some drop off behind this basket, so you don't want to be you don't be flying by chain high here with a flat flat flying disc. You could find the out of bounds. So, Barella sends it, misses to the right. And that 
can't imagine that's much further than three or five meters if he didn't touch the back side of the podium there. You never know with the little s little skitter out on that on that downhill slope. It could be six or seven, eight meters. That's true. It's pretty dry back there. It is. Now the birdie putt for McMahon on 11. Nice. Smooth up and down there for Eagle McMahon. Gets it back to three under par. Still got some time here to pick up some heat. Simon. A putt for Bogey. Another finds the one. ground in a double. Another one off the band. Gosh, makes him. Simon wishing he played this one for Eagle right Just now. Just go for <laughs> it. You know? yeah. Yeah. I have a hard time imagining Gosh. he's going to miss that drop zone if he throws the first one, OB. Yeah. Barella coming back up the hill for Birdie. Hindsight's always 20 20. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And he's about right in between where we said. I think he's, you know, six six or seven meters out there. Yeah, that's Burr at 25 feet. Nice. Just up enough. and in there for Barella. Just enough. Good enough, man. <laughs> and Gannon for the eagle. Thought it didn't look so great out the hand, but here he is, pin high. 25 feet left for Gannon Burr to collect an eagle, get it to five deep. Oh, pushed that one, didn't he, champ? Yeah, it looked like he took a little too much time maybe for that short of a putt. You know, those should be a little more routine for this caliber of player. I think if you think about something a little too long, it, it you know, it messes with you and it gets you out of your routine, out of your rhythm. You'd like to see him take about that much time that right. he took on the comeback or right. just set up and go? Right. Yeah. There was a lot of comments about that with Gannon Burr last season and a half or so, and he started picking up the pace, but it seems like when he picks up the pace, he starts making tiny little mistakes. Well, he, he slowed down the pace and missed the putt. Right, you know, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Fryer, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is it took, seemed like he took a little more time, a little more deliberate, off the mark there on that eagle bid. Simon a bit dejected, a walking double. the hole with a double a bogey. A bit dejected. Oh. <laughs> it looks like he just took a karate chop to the neck. Yeah, he kind of did. He took a disc golf one. Oof. Second shot on 11 onto the. Look for three in a row. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Burridge on 13. Saving the par, par, isn't it? Yes, yep. I believe so. Has to stretch out. Has that little bit of a crooked tree right there. No problem. No problem. Burridge. What a fantastic par save up ahead at the 13th after the. Bogey on the 12th. Still room there for Burridge to bring it in strong. There's the Antela birdie putt. Three in a row. Niklas three down on the day. Two or three more birdies for a guy like Niklas, and he's still in the conversation. Also a birdie for Dickerson. Speaking of five deep, that's where you will find Chris. Heinberg drops in bird. Star frame for a chase card at the 11th. That's not a call you'll hear every year. Yeah, I don't hardly ever remember hearing too many star frames on hole 11. Yeah, it's so easy to find that hazard. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of it out there. Yeah. Three little moguls out the left side, one right in the middle, then a whole bunch of OB surrounding the target in an extremely tight green at the 11th. Bound to cause troubles for some of the competitors this week. Anthony Barella on the box. How aggressive does he get? I'd like to mention, though, when we first started playing the USDGC out here, this hedge row on the right, the holly, holly bushes, were probably only four or five feet high. You could see right over the top of them. You could throw your disc high, highs are right over the top of them, and had to come back in really easily. This hole has changed immensely with the size of those hollies. Barella doesn't like it. Yeah, he's going to need some luck here to That's find some safe territory. And he, he gets does. it. There you go. Found a little sliver of shade over there. <laughs> Have something to work with. He thought that was heading OB for he sure. Did, oh, yeah. I think that he was didn't fight through that tree. He for sure was OB. Right. Gannon Burr coming off a missed opportunity on 10. Does he play for the same spot as Dickerson, or is he going for that second cutout way up there, somewhere in that 430, 440 range? Yeah, going high speed over stable. It's that that same second cut 10. is way up there, and you have to really commit to this one to get it into that second second slot up there. Big, healthy smash there up high over the holly bushes for Gannon Burr, looking for this thing to flex. Dropping down into the sweet spot. And Green flag. Well-thrown shot from Gannon Burr. Options available from that position in the fairway. Burridge, tee of 14. 
From Burr to Burridge, huh? That's a fun one. It is. Got it out to the right. Tracking. Don't, don't hit the sidewalk. Oh, oh I can. Baby, yeah. it'll bounce off the sidewalk. Skip. Yeah. It's a park job for Burridge. That's a little short, but not much. Not much at all. Dickerson. T of 12. This one's got a, a new little OB section out there in the middle. It's a little island of rocks and tall grass, and he lays short of and wants no part of that. Hmm. Yeah, you'd like to see the disc get down there by the drop zone if you've got the D to cover it. If not, lay up for par here is not a bad idea. Back to 11 for Sexton. Oh, that's awful. Sexton going backhand off the box at 11. He likes none of it. Commentator doing the commentary for us. Into the hazard and not the friendliest of lies either. No. Yeah, kind of behind that tree, wasn't it? Mm. Simon. Could definitely use a bounce back birdie here. Yeah, look for Simon to throw the disc fairly hard here unless he's playing strategy on this hole. Uh, that's a nice solid rip there from Simon. Going a little hyzer flip up and glide. He's going for that second landing Trying area. Trying to match Gannon Burr out there and oh, overthrows the landing zone. Simon Lazat in the hazard. Can't believe it. 460 plus feet to get into that area there. Brody Smith scooping. Dark Horse making an oh, appearance. Oh, get it. Count it. Dark wow. Horse salute. What a gutsy bit. Hey, man, back to level par. Three bogeys, three birdies. Kind of. It'd be like that sometimes. Yeah, he's taking punches from the course and giving some couple punches to the course. That was a big punch right there. Hey, that's one of his patented moves right there. Brody going a little two-finger pop over the head. Nice work there, Mr. What's your name for that shot, champ? What do you call that one? Uh, scuba. Scuba? Yeah. Upside down, sidearm. Is there also a Scooby, Pancake. which is a, a different shot? Pancake, Pancake, another word for it, for sure. Burridge, putting for birdie on 14. I told you it wasn't that far off. Not yeah, bad. the actual original Scuba was a backhand grip that's thrown to the right side of your head. J Jeremy Colling does one, and it's really cool. I ran into, you know, Snapper Pearson at uh, Morley? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was telling me about okay. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that was originally called the Scuba. Okay. Second shot for Heimberg on 12. Throwing into that blind pin on the backside. This is all about oh touch. My. Heimberg. Oh, that's taking a little bit of a that's pretty stroll. Close. He'll Still take inside that one. circle one. Yeah, he's got to start connecting. It's a bit of a weird spot here for Nate. He's uh, in the hazard throwing three with a bit of a tree in his area. And I don't know what's right ahead of him here on the left. There might be another one that he's got to weave around. I think he's got a little space, but if he's going sidearm roller or something, this could get really interesting. That's no. the tree I was wondering oh. about right there. Man, Cham. That found hazard again, no? Or is Hard to say. Uh, he might have bashed it and dropped straight down safe. We didn't have a good angle on uh, that. Two OB throws ah, for Sexton. So, yeah. It's, you can see the bumps that come out there, right? It's, there's a lot of it out there. A lot of that high grass hazard on that hole. Back to 12. Is this Eagle second? Oh, uh, yes, it is. Wow, champ. That's up in that 600-foot range that's off the box for Eagle <laughs> McMahon. <laughs> that's a mash off the tee. I mean, he's taking out all the early trouble by mashing it that far. Overstable approach for his second shot. I'd imagine this is right around 320 feet Come left for Eagle. On. And dropping a postage stamp on this green. Wow. Solid shot there from Eagle. Little work left. Yeah, Overstable you, approach. you can see that grass is extra high this year. They, they do not want you skipping out of the hazard into the inbounds this year. If you no hit luck. that hazard, you're going to stay in that hazard this year pretty much because that grass is super tall. Back on 11, Burr is second. Overstable mid-range away from Gannon. Watching this track in towards the green. I love the decision. I love the play. Well executed from Gannon. Defending champion trying to keep his nose in the battle here. Yeah, that shot shape just really fits this green. Yeah. Dickerson on 12. Looks like he's playing this one for par now. Yeah, from where his drive was, there was almost no way to go for it. He had almost 500 feet to the green. That's not really Chris Dickerson's uh, forte, man, stretching the disc out like that. Not saying he can't do it, but that's not what he does all Ooh. the time. Sit Get down. Sit down. Ooh. Oof. All right. In between circle one and OB, he'll get a little bit of relief off of that line, but not much. And back to 11, Barella, his second. What do you do from here, champ? 
I think you, you know, be super aggressive. You, you messed up the tee shot and you got away with it, so you might as well try and make the best of it. He's got a nice hyzer swing here, nice wide open area out to the right. His disc will match the landing area of the of the green if he if he pulls it off correctly. Should kill all the speed on the entry is what Champ is trying to describe. Solid play there from right. Anthony Barella. And job done. Gives himself an opportunity to score at the 11th. Looks like a bunch of them will be scoring there at the 11th between the top two groups. Yes, or the, sir. The we just had a star frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Dickerson putting for par on 12. He saw the approach go a little long. Beautiful. Nice cleanup work there. He almost actually gave that third shot a run, you know, to get there. I think he was running it a little bit. Yeah, and I, I don't wonder. think it was, it was just a layup. I think that was a, a, a run. A Trying to make the birdie from 150 feet. Perhaps for Chris Dickerson feet. to yeah. throw it in from 150, turns it into a par either way. Solid work as we catch up with Lazat. Threw it a little too far on his tee shot to get into this area of hazard where you throw from where your disc lies but take an extra stroke. This is pretty. That's a very beautiful play there. Matching the hill slope. Awesome. You saw it only moved about a foot, foot and a half after it hit. The touch and control displayed from Simon Lazad is pretty much second to none. He is a rare combination of power he's, and touch. He's isn't got he? such great touch for a guy who throws the disc well over 600 feet. That's just not something that you're accustomed to seeing on tour. Usually the guys throw hard and the touch suffers. Heimberg putting for birdie on 12. It's a little farther away than it looked on the first first view of this, but step and a half inside C1 and there we go. just dribbles it in for a turkey. He's got a little run going, there trying to make goes. his way through the back nine here. This He's four under. Is that stretch people have been lighting up. Yeah, it certainly has been. Yeah. And back to 11 for Sexton. And his Fourth? Fifth? It should be his fifth, Ian. Yep. Unless if that's, he looks like he's in the hazard. That's some tall grass. One out of bounds, three out of bounds, throwing five, trying to skid up and down for a double bogey six. Okay. Yep. That's going to drop Sexton back to one under par after a really nice start. A little chalk bag you know, for the bridge. Chalk bag, yeah. With him holding the chalk bag <laughs> on the chalk bag. <laughs> That's a chalk bag section right there. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, we're on the clown's mouth hole here. Yep. Robert No. Doesn't shy away from big moments. Remember that playoff last year with Playoffs? Simon? Yeah. You want to talk about playoffs? Ooh. That was <laughs> multi hole. <sighs> He hit some huge putts in that playoff, too. He's got game, man. Yeah. It hasn't, you know, arrived on a weekly basis, but when it does show up, it sure does look good. A.B. going up the hill for birdie on 11. Count it. Yes, sir. That a way to turn lemons into lemonade for A.B. Off the, the good feels off the tee, a little out of position, turns it into a birdie nonetheless. Lazat. That is a par make for Simon. After the OB drive. Good cleanup work there. Burr, a birdie look. After a perfect drive and a perfect approach. Yeah. That's what you'd expect. Four down through 11. Making his way. Putting in work. Sexton, unfortunately, heading the wrong direction. That's going to be a double bogey for your 2017 champ. Little hiccup on the way through here. Yep. And that's a momentum killer is what it is. Yeah. There was a putt for McMahon for birdie. Finds home. There he is, four under par. And let's take a look at your scores. And a big old collective deep breath, everybody. Yeah. It's been one heck of a show so far. Joel Freeman in the house, 10 deep. Will Robert Burge catch him? He's still got some holes out in front. Look at the numbers in the clubhouse already. Nobody out on the course able to match that number. They're gonna have to get a move on here in this last third of the track. Make up some ground. Scores packing in tight together, you know. It's, That's typical, uh, right? Yeah, you know. That's kind of what we want to see. We want to see good battles out there and some, some drama. Absolutely. Yeah, man. That's what we were talking about yesterday on our little cart ride, man. That's what we're all hoping for is for there to be drama once we get to that final round on Sunday afternoon. And more times than not, there's been was <laughs> high drama on the last few holes here it at the USDGC. Like Year and year again, man. We were chatting about that too, man. The finish with Kyle Klein and Paul McBeth, Calvin Heinberg trying to run down Chris Dickerson, the excellent play of Gannon Burr after he's kind of opened the door for Nicola Santola last year. Yeah. 
Burr hit that like 70 footer on 17 last year. And that putt on 14 that yeah. gave him that bounced him back into position after that kind of blow up on 13th. It's just a lot of moments there. It's never over till it's over out here at Winthrop. And obviously, you can think of a moment like Johnny McRae going 10 cup on the 17th. Yeah, yeah with a fairly like it sizable was, lead going into looked, that. I was hole. about to say it, man. It looked like he had it wrapped up with a bow. And the next thing you know, man, just she can't don't. find it. McMahon's tee shot on 13 is away. Aggressive cut swing here from McMahon. This should land up on that left edge fairway. Just a and little too is. far left. A little yeah. too much. Just 10 feet to the right, and he's in a great position, but 10 feet to the left, and now he's going to maybe even have to throw a sidearm from there. Maybe a Burridge-style play if he feels froggy. Dickerson. This is a tough fairway because you cannot see anything. You're throwing up over about 25-foot tall mound, which breaks off and becomes a 30-foot drop-off on the other side when you're flying out to the fairway. And there's OB to the right, so you can't get too aggressive on your Anheuser swing. And like I said, you can't see anything, so you just got to go by memory here. And, and feel. And memory feel. and feel. Yep. You know where you'd like to see the disc fly. Can you get the disc into the appropriate airspace and mitigate any stress of ending up too far left? Dickerson on the edge Ooh. and slightly back i believe from where you would like to be a b t of 12. this is a a crush it or lay it up kind of tee shot here and full he, stand he, from barella and it's dragging off to the right there is a little bit of land up there if he can hit and drop in a hurry oh it's that spit might him be right. good it spit him right i'm not sure there's a sidewalk there i think that's right it's, it's, it says it off the fairway after one throw no b marked yet okay okay there's a little bit of land over there. He's going to be extremely pinched off, almost no angles to approach or to attack the green. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be a layup from there. Unless if he's far enough away from the tree, he can go hyzer over the second. Uh, over, the the holly, yep. over the holly line on the other side, that would be ambitious. That would be extremely ambitious, and he won't be able to see a thing. The fur tee shot. It looked like it was doing Solid. what it needed yeah. to. Yeah, right over that little patch of out of bounds that's in the middle there. That's kind of where you want to be if you're, if you're trying to get there in two. If you're short of that patch, you pretty much have no chance to get there in two. And the way we saw what Eagle flew it earlier, he was way past that patch. Had yeah, to he was in the 600 mark area, definitely over 500 feet. We did the numbers yesterday, 485 feet gets you to the sweet spot. Just shy of that drop zone, then you've got a pretty manageable second shot to get onto the green, albeit it will be blind. He's yep. onto that slight upslope, which means he's way down there. Mm -hmm. They talk about 17 as your 10 cup, Cole, but we saw it last year, Philo 12. We're 10 cupping from the fairway on this one. Man, we guys were struggling numbers. with that second shot. Yeah. Having a hard time feeling it and getting the disc into the appropriate airspace. Nate Sexton after the double bogey on the box of the 12th. A little layup with the sidearm here, a healthy rip. Should end up on the spine. Yep, and that's going to be it's going to be tough to get to the pin from there. It might just be another layup. He's I just don't think it's in his game plan, man. You know, he's just going to play these longer holes for par and mitigate blowing up any more than he already has. Jump it ahead to 15 for Burridge. Very important drive here. Right. Absolutely down the middle. Pure. Split the wickets. And a big healthy flare skip on the tail end of that, and that should be in business for Burridge. Looking back up the fairway of 13 and live with Heimberg in his second. You think he got enough? I mean, obviously we know he can throw the disc, but is this in the testing it, pushing it a little bit range, or is this in that pretty comfortable swing range? He's throwing a mid. Comfortable distance range for Calvin, but it's it's the, the shape of the shot, I think, that's, that's a little uncomfortable here. You have to twist it over and get to the right, and then you have to make sure it comes back because there's, there's a road out there to the right that you can get – you can get into. And you can't be too far left because there's some bushes on the left side that keep you from making your putt as well. Taking a little long to drag back there for right. Calvin Heimberg. I imagine that's going to be a shallow circle two putt. And that would be an opportunity to tally up four straight birdies for Calvin Heimberg. Back to 12, Sexton in his second. No doubt about this being a play for par <laughs> you now. You throw that hard. Yeah, nah. we all know that. Sexton's just going to pick a spot out there to the left, try to give himself a nice look into the green. Tons of space to work with. I did notice that whole left side is all inbounds. There's no little bumps that come out there like they, they, there used to be. There used to be some semicircles that came out there that were out of bounds or hazard or whatever, but now it's just all wide open. <coughs> clean they, they kind of inbounds. bottlenecked that section of the fairway a couple of years as well. Burridge on Clown's Mouth trying to get it into the Hollies. And it's, that's hit and gone down to the right. That's going to be a really difficult look from there. He didn't penetrate the trees at all. 
don't think he's going to even have a sniff. Here we but. are with Anthony Barella. We figured this is about where he'd be. Kind of pinched off. Didn't quite get the angle to go out and around over the backside of these hollies. So he's just going to dump one back into the fairway, try to get it up and down. Pars are good here at the 12th. Yeah, he's going to have to play it over by Nate somewhere from here. There's no way to attack the pin. Yeah, second toughest hole on the course today, playing .37 over par. Job done there for A.B. I imagine he's right around 125 into the basket from there. You see the green whisker. Looked like he was tracking on that a little short. Dickerson on 13, throwing two. You saw the drive just barely stay out of the rough. Little branch hitting him in the head in the back neck area there just to make you feel a little uncomfortable. It doesn't matter. Chris Dickerson's a champion. He knows how to handle shots like that. Drives up a bit short, and there's Does. four trees that kind of... Front hey, man, but basket. a quality shot. It was a quality That's shot. Quality. That's what you're looking for out here. Good quality shots that give you opportunities. Yep. This is Simon 357 to the pin. Yes, sir. Opportunities are the name of the game out here. Ooh, that looks that really needs wide. To hook in a big hurry. That it's is nice and so high. steep. Wow. Oh. Simon Lazat. That OB? That's no, close. he's safe. That's circle That's one. The close. darkest line you see is circle one. No. That's close, yeah. That bounced backwards, didn't it? It did. It did. That looks safe by a mile. I think it landed safe, and I think it popped backwards when it hit because there's a little slope right there. Ah, too many yellow and red flags there. Perk, are you down there on the ground? You, you catch an eye on that shot from Simon? Oh, what a terrible reaction, guys. It totally hit safe and just got that Annie skip, and it's, it's out of bounds by less than a few inches. I'll sit down. Yeah, that'll curl up. Thank you, Perk. That will work for bogey, at least. No yeah, huge tin cup moment. Simon's gotten a little loose here in the last few holes, man. Just yeah. having a hard time keeping the disc in bounds. We questioned the decision on the 10th. Right. This is that shot. Uh, yeah, Simon shot. Ooh, oh, that was well short. Yeah. Yeah, just too much steepness to that shot, I believe. I, I can't blame him for wanting to spike it in there, but yeah. got to make sure you get there first. Yeah, you got to get him for 345 left for him. That's a great spot to be, right near that drop zone. Just in front of it there, that's the whisker for the drop zone in the bottom right of your screen. Gannon Burr, very comfortable distance here over stable mid-range. Once again, I like the choice. Yeah, the ability to throw mid-range on your second shot on this hole is huge. But that's kind of high up in the air and stalling. Let's hope he put the mustard on it. He did. Out there, shallow circle two for Gannon Burr, putting back towards the hill, the drop off rather. I imagine we'll see a nice, healthy putt there. Third shot for McMahon on 13. He's still got the backhand ability here, which is good. And there's those four yeah. trees I was talking about that front this green. Yes. What's the yeah. distance there, champ? Uh, it's probably about 35, 40 feet oh, wow. from those four okay. trees. Yep. Burridge on a 15 for birdie, a crowded putt in the darkness. Champ yeah. called it, man. <laughs> yeah. It came in a little early. He's all tied up in there, couldn't figure it out. Par for Burge on the 14th. He actually had a better look than I thought he was going to have from there, but yeah. there still wasn't was much of a look. On the right side, right, Jim? <laughs> yeah. There's just not much doing at all on the right side of the 15th. That no. was Simon's disc, barely out of bounds. Mm. Fractions, man. Sexton in his third coming up, playing this for par. You can get this to bounce right around circle one. This should hit the brakes right at the podium. This is should be routine for for Mr. Sexton. Pop it off a little left of the hole, have it skip up, have there it curl up, 12-footer. There you go. Live with Dickerson on 13. Birdie look. Yeah, I think those trees are right near the circle's edge, so he's got to be 40-some 40, 40 feet away here. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Bang, bang! Those trees are only 25 feet, and he was maybe 35 feet. Okay. Solid jumper there from Chris Dickerson. Oh. Keeps things moving along. Six down through 13. That's not a bad pace at all. No, not at all. And he was lucky to not be right behind them. When you go right behind those yeah. trees, you, you have absolutely nothing. A.B., his third. 125-odd feet, maybe 130. little spin putt there from Anthony Barella. If that doesn't impress you, I don't know what does. Yeah. That is not an easy thing to do. Stand still. Just like a normal putting stroke for 125 feet. Yeah, that's silliness. That's something I never did was 
putt stroke from over 100 feet. <laughs> I would always go to a, a small backhand. Mm. And so he's got the window here. He was dried up a little short, but he's got the window. For four in a row. Bang. Calvin Heimberg, count that. I mean, and you couldn't have framed that up any better. It was <laughs> nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Crowd coming to life here for Calvin Heimberg. And back to 12 for Bird. This is a birdie look. Bit of a death putt. He has pushed a couple. Boom. Got that one. Up and down on the line of the pole and in for Gannon Burr for birdie. Well executed 12th hole there. Perfect drive once again. Perfect approach just like at hole 11 turns it into a birdie. That's a great birdie. You know, getting those two back to back makes you got to make it feel real good going into the last third of the course here. Especially that's the second handicap or number two handicap on the track. Yep. There is Simon in for bogey after the unfortunate second found the OB. There's a par for si or Nate, followed by a Varela par. Let's jump ahead to 13 and the green. McMahon looking at par. Looks like he's got a clean, clean swing at it. Yep. Nice. And he had to watch that all the way in. He's had a couple slide out on him this afternoon. Eagle. Solid par at the 13th. Can someone chase down Freeman? You'll find out other side of this break. Back in just a few. When I walk up to a shot, I'm looking for the target. I'm looking at obstacles around the target, specific landing zones, looking at the height. Knowing all of that, I'm able to shape a shot. I don't want to think, did I get the right shot? Did I get the right distance? Like, that's it, I got it. Confidence is everything, and the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder gives me exactly that. of the educational disc golf experience, disc golf is now a mainstream activity in physical education across the nation. 150,000 lightweight golf discs, 267 permanent campus courses installed, and thousands of partner programs in all 50 states. As a 100% publicly funded charity, Edge Disc Golf couldn't do it without you. Please join our mission to reach and teach the next three million young disc golfers. Heimberg on the tee of 14.
disc Biggs. away for Heimberg. What you got, champ? Sky Heiser. Sky Heiser. It needs to do some ground play and just doesn't get it. He's going to have that tough putt to a raised basket on a downslope. That's, that's that Gannon Bird death putt we saw from last year's championship. That he smashed. Absolutely did. Right in the heart of the chains. Doesn't no, like he it. didn't. Caught the tree. Did, on didn't the, he do right. that on the last round, too? You remember he threw the second shot OB. I was like, I don't think you should throw that green disc, oh, and he threw it OB. 13, and that's yeah. Same yeah, he, thing that happened last year for Gannon Burr. How about that? 14 with Dickerson. This is always a fun hole to throw. A lot of airspace out there, not a whole lot to hit. <laughs> Ooh, Dickerson would like to see that drag out That's a little a more, perhaps. That's a mid-range-looking disc right, there. Yeah, he threw the right disc. Yeah. If that was a driver, that thing was toast. Yeah. But Dickerson, no issue getting the disc to travel 400 downhill with the mid-range. Well thrown. Back to 13, Varela. He knew what he was doing, that's for sure. Oh, he's a champ, man. That dude is a beast. Varela's going outside. Wow, massive spike hyzer from Anthony Varela. Just don't want to yank it too far. That's all he uh, did. No. That just didn't seem like a good choice to go way wide like that. That's in the category of beating yourself right there, champ. Yeah, you can't you can't give yourself you can't have self inflicted wounds out here. McMahon on fourteen. This also a very common sighting here at the fourteenth, way out and around the magnolia tree, drag it in late. Off, off the, the sidewalk. sidewalk. A little deep, but there you go. Yeah, very nice. Seven meter look there for Eagle McMahon back up the hill. Back to thirteen for Burr and his second after the early tree hit. Par would be amazing from here. Yeah, especially because he's got a little little branch there bothering yeah. him backswing he's got to have the memory of what happened here last year don't go under stable don't go glidey throw something stable get to the left don't even challenge that ob get yourself up there another 320 feet and then you can make that manageable he's got to throw standstill he's got no run up because of that branch right there so i'm gonna have to get through this one on the standstill he's got plenty of pop he just needs to put the right move on it i'm sure he's thinking about what happened last time he was here Definitely seems that way. He certainly has taken his time. Disc away, hard swing, and this is in danger, champ. It's over there to the right, but it looks like it's going to just Ooh, enough. Ooh, okay. Enough. All right, does not make the same mistake twice. Gannon Burr safely on the fairway after two. Lots of work left to he make his par, does. though. Certainly does. Jumping ahead to 16 in Burridge. I would say this is one of the most technical drives on the property here. Did he bend it over? He did. How's the ground play going to fare? Short left, very yeah, much. Just Green flag, though. Didn't look yeah. like he gave it you know, enough go off the tee pad. He yeah. gave it the speed, but he missed the height. I would like to see that three feet higher with that drag off on the, end, on the back end of that shot. Barella throwing three after the OB drive on 13. And making your bogey from here would be massive. So easy to pick up an extra one, getting a little too greedy with this shot from this angle. Yeah, those cedars on the corner or the cypress trees over there, are, those are thick. And if you get in there, it's not coming out. The oh, OB right line the cart goes path, around yeah. them yes, to sir. the left side. To the right of the cart path, yes. Yeah. And you kind of have to get aggressive with those to get, you know, up near the, the pin from there. But I don't think he's going for the pin. I think he's just going to try and put it in the middle somewhere. He can get it to the bottleneck. Oh, he got that wide and didn't rip over on it enough. This is working its way. Oh, oh that's actually a really nice a, kick. Yeah, How did it get there? Perfect. Wow. What kind of reaction did AB get off that shot right there? He looks very fortunate to be in the in the fairway. Oh, I mean, that's the definition of tree love, guys. That was going to bury itself deep into the woods and just gets the tree and just kind of bounces backwards and just falls straight down. Perfect position now. How about that, man? You'll take it when you get it. Man, that was a massive break for Anthony Barilla off the grid. He got behind this one in a big way. Got over on it, but not enough. It was going to be buried, Philo. Oh, there's the reaction. <laughs> that was a oh. massive ninja branch. Gosh, he was going into Never Never Land over there, man. Yeah, as you can see, he was a little off balance on that after his, uh, after his throw. He was Body weight dragging off a little too hard. Birdie putt for Heinberg on 14. Death putt. Oh. It's tough. It's tough to get it up there high enough with that <laughs> with that hazard looming down below. You ain't lying, champ. Makes that Brody Smith putt even more impressive. Certainly does. Up ahead, Robert Burridge out there in circle two. Oh. 
It had a chance at the it last did. second, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it came swinging back. I didn't think it was going to come swinging back that hard. Neither did I, bud. Going up the hill on 14, McMahon for birdie. Well, that Brody shot you alluded to was actually an upside downer, which drops really fast. Uh -huh. So no. you could be a little more aggressive with that because it's upside down and it's dropping. Oh, my. You just watch Eagle McMahon oh. inside circle one off the band, return to sender and some. In bounds, Circle's though. edge, though, now Stayed for Eagle in. McMahon. Yeah. Tougher putt than he just had. By another seven or ten feet at least. A little more uphill, too. Yes, sir. Can he put a Band-Aid on that miss? Not to be a couple of drops of blood drips into the water for Eagle McMahon. And the Sharks will definitely catch a scent of that. Eagle will drop back to three on the day, two bogeys. Bounce out the five birdies. With only four holes to go. Yeah, good point, Shane. Hey, man, if he can get two or three more birdies, though, he's still right in the mix here. Right where we said, right where we said you need to be, somewhere around six under or better, you know, you're in the hunt. You know, even four or five, you come out with a hot round, you know, one of those rounds, you can, you can shoot yourself right back into it. Fantastic second shot from Simon Lazat. He's right there where Dickerson was just moments ago, staring down a birdie putt 35, 38 feet away. See if he can convert that. Get back on track for Simon Lazat. Yeah, Simon definitely needs to, to play well these last few holes. Get back in the mix. Man, we have been watching this leaderboard for a while. It has not moved much at all over the last hour. Freeman still a top 10 deep. Burge trying to run him down, running out of holes. Sullivan Tipton also in the house. Kyle Klein got it to the house with nine. And James Proctor, solid shooting this season. Really impressed by the way he's, you know, batting down the hatchets and really become a consistent player on tour. His first full year on tour, Philo. That's know? what it takes, man. you yeah. got to be out here all the time. You can't come and go and expect your best game to show up. you got to be in the mix, in rhythm. It's a little tall, yeah. It is a little tall there for Gannon. He's going to get bopped down and bogey at best. Yeah, lots of work left. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could make a long one, possibly, for par, right? Still, he was never out of bounds. True. Never sure. out of bounds. But it's not impossible, but <laughs> highly unlikely highly from unlikely. where he's at. <laughs> highly unlikely. Dickerson, you saw the drive with the mid-range. The mid-range. Parks it for birdie. Such a heady play there from Chris Dickerson, mitigating any big flare skip going to the mm -hmm. mid-range. It's a downhill carry. It should glide. Smart stuff. Burridge on 17. That looks a bit safe. High, a lot high safe. and right. <laughs> a lot safe, champ. <laughs> is there too safe on day feet? one no, on 17? there is no such thing as too safe no. on 17. Love that play. Barella throwing four. It just seems like with the aggressiveness of all the players these days, you know, yeah. anything that's not at the, at the basket is, is safe. <laughs> with you, sir. <laughs> Barella trying to make his approach, get this thing in there tight. And it looks like he dribbled right inside of circle one. That was a nice neural to the left to get him away from those it four did. guardians. Give him a nice lane, champ. You are yeah. absolutely correct about that. A make there, and he's he'll be at four down through 13. Which is within realm. Yep. You know, that's, that's kind of where you want to be. Live with Burridge for a share of the lead. This looks to be in the 45 to 50 foot range. That's the number I had in my mind. Burge mm. putt away off the band. Left Good side. Bid. It was. Yeah, Good aggressive a, putt there. Didn't make it happen. Wasn't scared. He was not. He doesn't play scared, man. No. He plays aggressive. 15 with Dickerson. As do most of the players on tour these days. Chris, seven down right now. You kind of have to, go. Philo. <laughs> I mean, you can't do what Sexton's doing and win tournaments. Right. That's for sure. You can't lay up and right. play for pars and... Be conservative. Like, you got to put the pedal to the floor and go, man, if you want to keep up. Unless there's some kind of weird weather, you know, going That's on. That's the only time you do it, though. If it's right. super windy, if it's dumping rain, you know, yeah. if the conditions are not favorable, then you start playing smart man golf. Ooh, this is going to get inside. It'll get inside. I don't think it got far enough to yeah. score, though. No, he's not going to make, the, yeah. you know, he's not going to get anywhere with that. He's just playing for par now, well out of position. On the same Heimberg. But he didn't on. miss the mandatory. He did not miss the mandatory, which is... Key Big. number one. Yeah, he's got to make this shot happen. Only 250 feet off the tee to the triple mandatory. Got about 50 feet to you want to start boogieing left, and then it's pretty simple from there. Heimberg, hard power drive. Very That's straight, that tree in the background, 425 skip, feet. Gets there out past go. that little bush. Yeah, he's going to have a nice little sidearm in Let's from there. Let's go, Calvin. He's got options. He can yeah. go putter, backhand, sidearm, dump shot. 
just 175 feet in from there. Absolutely nothing in his way out to the left. If he hits anything, it'll be the, you know, the holly bushes on the right, but he's got angle to go around those. He does. So it's it not a like bad miss to miss a little on the left side. It's not. There's it's less like trees. More open putt. Exactly. The yeah. windows get bigger. Mm -hmm. Sexton did find OB after his second. Oh, no. So throwing four. And he's got... He's right around 200 feet there, yeah, Ian, 218 feet. We did the numbers yesterday at the top of the bottleneck, right around where his foot's at, 220 in. Smooth little swing. I imagine something in the putter realm there for Sexton, maybe that's, a dart. That's, that's in the window. That's, it is, yeah. that's in the window, at least. He's going to have a clean look there. If you go another 10, 15 feet forward from there, you have sleep. absolutely nothing. nothing. The trees are really close to the basket, and they're fairly thick. They're, they're <laughs> I like that as far as course design is concerned. You know, you can't just give these guys wide open putts every time. They're just too good. Right. Got to have a little bit of obstacles in the way to make them think and make them get creative every once in a while, and I think this is the perfect place on the course for it. For par from Yeah, there's enough feet. clean looks around this basket where it, you should be able to get your disc into one of those areas. It's all about being aware of what the course offers and knowing where your disc needs to finish. Gannon Burr is going to try to slide this in from range for a magnificent par. And there's, you know, there's a little drop off behind this basket. It's not huge, but it's enough. Come on, get there. It had the speed, but See? fades out just a little too early for Gannon Burr. And he's going to have a little five meter, six meter comebacker. Uh, should have a good angle. He's clean. He's he clean okay. to the chains at least. He doesn't yeah. have any blockage from there. Worst case scenario, a little straddle out to the right. Yeah. A couple rocks around this basket too. Not only the trees, but there's some rocks where you can hit and do some weird rolling or get the odd ground play yeah you know, the unfavorable things could happen for a stroke on the card Simon Lazat uh, he desperately needs this well off the pace early on here down in a tie for 61st Simon Lazat some self-inflicted wounds but not this time for Simon beautiful straddle put in the heart of the chains now to move him to two under on the afternoon that's a well-earned birdie right there absolutely is champ we were talking about how difficult this hole would be for the competitors to make this birdie seem somewhat routine and comfortable. Blind tee shot, bottlenecking fairway, very protected green. Yeah, I think we're seeing a little this group here. You know, we've got birdies, we've got bogeys, we've got uh, tough par putts coming up, and that this hole, this hole, give it to you, that's for sure. It's, a, it's not straightforward. Gannon Burr from the bush, trying to get this up and in for bogey now. Taking his time, he's got a little little brush on his right arm there, making him a little uncomfortable. Dang, that snapped off the pole and came back towards the rim a little bit too. <laughs> you are not lying, Champ. That had the potential to jump out of there. It had so much heat, but it does drop into the bottom of the cylinder as we watch Anthony Barella inside circle one. This is to save some kind of number as well, isn't it? Yeah, double save bogey. double. I believe. Double, double. Yeah. I think we had a small straight there on the on the card. We had a birdie, <laughs> a par, a bogey, and a double, right? There you go, man. Or no, is Nate doubling as well? Oh, Nate's doubling as well. So we Got didn't have the bogey. Oh, there's <laughs> a putt for bogey. It says. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This should be for bogey. His second win OB, right? So that was his fourth that got him to here putting for bogey. Yeah. There you go. Not very often you see that on a card. Not these days, champ. Right? Not these days. A feature card or a Not chase a, card yeah, for sure. Usually those guys keep things together pretty tight, man. They don't leave much room for you to breathe. Four different scores on the same <laughs> hole. That's just that just alludes to good course design. That's you what I was just saying, man. That's what, it's a perfect place for that to happen too on this course, man. Perfect place. Now you get a little bit of a sigh of relief here as you take the walk over to the 14th. Pretty routine par three here. Everybody knows what to expect. Dickerson on 15. He saw his first. That's about all he could do, Ian. Did he, he was, make the corner? He even? did make the corner. He's going to okay. be out there and around. He should have a pretty straight shot into the green. I think he made the right play. T of 18 with Burridge. Trying to finish it up here. One off the lead. Looking for a share. Uh-oh. That looked like it wasn't committed. But gonna so he's going to get a green flag. He's going to yeah. get lucky. 
Wow. Going to get a green flag. Just threw it soft enough to keep that thing on the yeah. fairway. If that it, thing had any more heat, that was going out the, out the left side. Yeah, out the left side and out the back left side. Either way, it was going to be gone if he had any more heat. Oh, that that looks a little early as well. It is. Dickerson will have a look. Crowded oh, boy, that got, that got a nice little play through there. Now he's only got one line of trees to yeah. contend with instead of two. Second shot for McMahon. What a drive from Eagle. That's way down there. He did. He pushed that into that 425, 435 range. And he champ. put it out into that spot you were talking about, yes. the open left side. Wide open, man. If you've got the D to get there, man, throw that thing as hard and straight as you can and don't let it leave the line. What I'd a like drive to see Calvin do the same thing. Put it Even way out Even better, wide. man. Even better. Opportunity. Oh. Flair skip just comes up short. Be a drop in for Calvin Heimberg, which is exactly what that man needed. He's making his way. You he's know, he's starting making to piece his way. it together. Yes, he is. Play on a 14. Hole 14, 413 feet. Probably feels more about 385 with the downhill grade. Tons of space out there to the right side. You see that magnolia tree. Either you want to be inside of that just by a hair or just around it. There's a couple of different ways to go there for the righty backhand play. Obviously, the sidearm option is available, but you got those massive hay bales that are four feet around that you got to deal with. OB just on the other side of these rocks. So if you come up in the tall grass, it's obvious you're in the hazard and adding a stroke to the card. You can see the undulation here, the topography of this green sloping away from the target. Got to keep that in mind. Simon with a box after the birdie on 13. I'd like to see him keep it going here and give himself a better, better placement in the field going into the second round. If he can close up with two or three birdies, he'll, be, he'll do just that. From the looks of things, five, six under pars, right around 10th place, tied for 11th. That's not a bad place to be. Definitely still in the mix. Disc away for Lazat, and he absolutely hates it. Drops his hand into heads, or head into hands instantly, and he's well short, 38, 40 feet short for Simon Lazat on the death putt side of the green. And when you go that steep, you know, you've got to get all of it to get it to go that far. And he just knew he didn't get all of it. Maybe he's afraid of giving too much of an all of it thing effort there for Simon Lazat with the move he can put on a disc. Seems like he, he could have went with the Chris Dickerson play and thrown a mid range. A, a mid -range I love that play, especially on a calm day, man. The There's right. not much blowing around out here, you know, take advantage. What was your play, champ? I would. I, I didn't have the mid-range distance to get it there, so I would throw like a little fairway driver, a little T-bird or something, mm -hmm. get it to get it to bleed up right of the sidewalk, and get as flat as it could, and then if it did any kind of bleeding, it, I was I was right at the sidewalk. So, you know, if I skipped, it was going to be near the sidewalk somewhere. But this hole's played in all sorts of different rules and configurations throughout the years. There was some years where right of the sidewalk was out of bounds. Oh, oh that's right. So you had to be left of the sidewalks to be in bounds, and you know it's changed here and there. So. Your, your, your play would change with the with the way the rules change, too. They were debating the front of the tee pad right there? Yeah, you get that. They were there, yeah, the there's stop there. It goes all the way to the wood chips off to the right there. It does. They were just talking about the angles they could use. Yeah, it's kind of not straight at the front. It goes on a bit of an angle, like mm -hmm. it has a peak. Yep. You follow the line of the concrete going off to the right. Very similar at hole 12, other Coliseum hole. Yep. And, you know, the, the tee pad area is a bit grippier and the sidewalk area is a bit slidier. And that was... He said it, man. You don't even have to do the commentary. Gannon Burr said that's the worst shot of the year for me. That was undercommitted, underthrown, uh, sawed off, however you want to describe it. Too high, too steep. <laughs> He's well short into the hazard. Going to have a 50-foot, 45-foot look there to save a par. For as relatively a wide open as this hole is, it creates problems. It does. This is all about touch, man. Accuracy and touch. That's yanked over a little yeah, bit as well. Yeah, need to hustle in a big way to get back on safe territory. Oh, off, off the bail. The, wow. Oh. Anthony Barella getting some love out here late on the first day. That last break on the 13th got him in position to get his par on. Oh, wow. And that bounce off the hay bale sets up the birdie opportunity. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And you were just alluding to the fact that a lot of people aren't going with the sidearm play because of the hay bales are there and they're in that perfect window. Mm -mm -mm. And just, they did update Barilla's score on 13. It was a single bogey. Copy okay, that. Yeah. so they didn't get a small straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Back to 15 for Dickerson. Great drive, okay upshot, solid putt. 
He'll take that par. I mean, he got in trouble yep. off the tee, didn't hit the gap, was yeah. well short of the, the, the first leg of the hole. There we go. Couldn't Missed throw that. towards the green, so he'll take the par. He was a bit fortunate to penetrate as far as he did into there to get that putt. Burridge is throwing two, playing for par, no? Yeah, he's Dickerson laying it up. could have got worked on that tree hit. He could have bounced either direction and been out of position. Right. Or obviously don't want to go to the right, but just fortunate that didn't happen. Eagle McMahon also on the green of the 15th, and that's up and in. Smash, bang, boom. Yeah, Count man, it. easy work on Clown's Mouth. Yep. Penetrates the drive deep into the landing zone. Nice little sidearm on there and up and in for birdie. 400 with three to go. There still go. got that's chances. Still, yeah, man, five, six, seven. That's that's out there for him. Looking like the Freeman score will hold up. I don't see it being chased down at this no, point. No, I don't think so. I don't think anybody else. I mean, maybe Dickerson could get on a late heater here. Dick pick tie up three. with three birdies yeah. in a row. Yep, it could happen. Don't put it past Chris Dickerson. The robot chicken is just as dangerous as anybody. It's technically Burke Hood as well. Oh, no. No, not a no, 14. The momentum's yeah. heading the wrong yeah. direction for Gannon yeah. Burr right now. We've Eight. got Calvin into uh, tie for 11th at six under with oh, three yeah. holes to go after starting fairly slow. And they're running out of real estate. Just three holes to go. Most likely they will not catch Joel Freeman. Hot score in the clubhouse, 10 deep on an opening round. And he had just the one bogey, wasn't it, on the last hole? Yeah. That's right. Got it clean, 17 holes, and had a little slip up on the last as we rejoin with Nate Sexton out there deep in circle two. Dangerous. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to play safe, this would be a spot you might want to play safe from. <laughs> I mean, now he's back to level par, so maybe he's going to start feeling like, you know, i got to do a he's little something press. here, he's right? Gotta press. Got that same disc as hole three. Lofty put away for Sexton. Oh, Everything but in on line. Great height, just doesn't get it to drop. Fantastic effort there from Sexton. Well, the reason this basket really, really makes this putt a lot tougher if you're not, you know, somewhere close to the basket. You Simon. want to be on circle one or inside circle one. Death putt for Lazat. He's, he's bust out the pitch putt, Philo. Oh, is he doing it? Is he going to do uh -huh. the dad? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh. He's going back he's and going forth. Back we don't know spin. what he's going to do. We'll just have to watch together. He might not either. No, he's going standard putt for yep. Simon. Up and down. Oh! No! Everything but in. Come oh. on, basket. It's just not been the German's day. Nah, a little 50-50 ball. That he's could, had that some dropped. moments. He had, him, he had a couple of nice moments earlier, but since then, Simon's just been on oh, the roller coaster. That was the flip upside down. When the disc Brutal. flips upside down, the spin is actually going the opposite direction now. So normally it would pull you in, not that high, but once it flips upside down, the spin's actually going the other way, and it pulls you out. I have a tat that I have a hyzer putt, so wow. it happens to me a lot you huh. know, when I hit a bit right uh -huh. and it flips upside down and so now the spin's going the other way and it takes you out of the basket. That's exactly what happened to him right there. Burr in the hazard after the drive, looking at par. I'm sure all disc golfers have experienced just what you're talking about, champ. There, yeah. no stranger I never, to that. I, he put it into words right there in a pretty cool way. I'd never thought about before. Gannon Burr trying to salvage par here from the hazard. Disc is up. Ooh. Off on the left side, dries up deep in circle one, maybe a step and a half inside the circle. And at best, back-to-back -back bogeys for Burr now. Yeah, work left to clean up the bogue. Yeah, not a guarantee. This is a birdie bid for AB thanks to the hay bale skip shot. Hay bale birdie bid. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it now, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he's uh, definitely needing this. He hasn't had the greatest round so far, so look for this to be center cut. Up and in for Barella. Five down, not too bad. Not bad. Firmly in the mix. Still got some dangerous holes up ahead, and this is one of them, hole 18. Mr. Burridge, did he put enough go on that champ? That looked a little shy. He is uh, in circle one, I'll tell you that. Like he said, wood chips okay, like we'll to slide see how far into bit. circle one he is. Mm -hmm. Producers telling us it's really good for Burridge, so he'll have a drop in for par at the 18th. Burr now putting for bogey. A little Band-Aid putt. Let me tell you, you're, it squeezes your head a little bit when you have a little bit longer putts for bogeys. And oh, no. Adding insult to injury. This is heading towards the hazard, and oh, in it goes for Gannon Burr. Believable. Defending champion on the wrong side of the luck stick, and he's going to grab that up and Three take putts. another. You do not have to play it from where it lies. Once you've added a stroke to the card, you can play it from the last position. He leaves the mini and he'll take another stab. 
This is for a triple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that one sticks. Hair left, but it does drop. Gannon Bird picking up a big number here at the 14th. That is a six. Speaking of six, 16 and Heimberg. I like this play here from Calvin Heimberg going mid-range. He's got plenty of pop to make this carry. Just needs 370 to leave himself a 20-foot putt. Does this drag to the right? It yes. does. Lovely play from Calvin Slide Heimberg. Slide up in there. Come on now, baby. What a shot. So technical, champ. Yeah. There is. It's the 390 feet slightly downhill, but, man, mid-range is a, is a good play there because it's not going to drift too far left or right on you. That's what Our you're looking for. Not lying to us as Burridge drops in par. Yeah, Solid that, effort on the day, champ. Yeah, I mean, nine down. That's really what you're looking for out there. You got half of them. <laughs> That's yeah. what I was talking about, man, a 50% birdie rate and keep those bogeys at bay. You got to keep those bogeys away if you're going to be successful out here on this Winthrop Arena. Just the one back on 12 for Burridge today. That's okay. You can handle that, man. If you can average one bogey per round or better, you're doing big things out here. You're definitely going to be in the mix. Oh, look at that. The ground that play. Went 60 yes, or 70 feet off the ground. And that looked like a mid-range as well. You don't usually see that kind of jump out of a mid-range. A little bit of dry stuff out there for the guys to take advantage of. A little Seems up like slope where it somehow it was kind of cleared out where he popped. No grass right there or something. Yeah. All the things worked out for Eagle. We'll take a look at Chris Dickerson now. Also going to the mid-range. I really like this adjustment these guys are doing. This used to be like a beat-up wraith type drive back in the day. Now these guys are just comfortably throwing mid-range. Yeah, it's a, it's a luxury to be able to throw a mid-range 400 feet down a tunnel. Back in the day, it was possible. You, most guys would not take the middle line. Oh, he drags 50-50, I'm imagining. That should be a green flag. Line it rider, is. but it's good. The ante line was the more favorable for the righty backhand throwing the mid-range. Don't see it much anymore. Yeah, that, that, card that outside left OB line, or hazard line, has really pinched in throughout the years, and it makes it a little less desirable to, to throw that outside left shot. Fly through, champ. Oh, it's this hole. <laughs> We've got a, a Mando on the right, a Mando on the left, a Mando above, and the ground makes a fourth Mando. So actually, you could call it a quadruple Mando if you wanted to. But, you know, it's all about hitting your line here. If you get a nice straight shot going down the middle, then you want it to finish a little bit left. you got to go at least 50, 60 feet past the Mando to get to this somewhat clean area. And this is still a little pinched off right here. You want to get down a little farther to give yourself a perfectly clean open look. And then you go by the emergency uh, phone there, and, and you've got a green that's tucked in there. but. It's, it's makeable almost from anywhere within there except for early right. Early right is absolutely jail here at the 15th. You do not want to be there. Even if you make the Mando and go in to the left, you're just in jail. There's not much doing on that side of the fairway. Best idea here at the 15th, blast that thing hard and straight and don't care where it goes. Just make the Mando go straight. You'll have something out there. Yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a look of some sort. Barella with the T. That was stranger to... Absolute smashes. This is hugging the left side. Does it have the push? It no. does not. Missed mandatory for Anthony Barilla. I have a hard time imagining he'll have much of a good angle there for an unwrap. Yeah, if it didn't go past the Mando line, he right. would have to play it from where it lies where it over is. to the left. So we'll have to see what happened with that. But if he did pass the Mando line, the, the, man, the drop zone is on the right side of all those trees you see out there. And it's about a 290-foot shot, and it's not straightforward. It's, there's a bit of curve to it, and there's a bit of a gap. Low, tunnel, low, low ceiling, rather. Lazat, this looks high and right. Does it, it drop high. in time? It oh, he hits the not. top. And that squizzles over to the left near where Anthony is. And oh. he's definitely not past the Mando line, so he'll have to play his second shot from right there. Perk, we're watching Sexton take the tee right now. How are those tee shots looking for Simon and A.B. after those Mando hits? Well, Simon squared it up, dropped straight down, and A.B. is going to be in a tough spot because I don't believe that he missed the mandatory, so he's going to have to try and pitch back to the middle. On, Thank you, Perk. Sexton tee hey. shots. Oh, oh, that's a bit lucky to get there, but uh, once again, it's Taking birdie out of question. That's a tough one, champ. I'm looking at it thinking, man, if he doesn't hit it, it looks like it still had a chance, and it would have got through the mandatory and, you know, pushed off to the right a little bit. So a long birdie look for Dickerson on 16. Finds chains, but also the ground. A par coming up there. Back to 15 for Burr. Coming off a triple bogey, I believe. He's going to. 
definitely want to spike this right through the Mando. And that's the shot you're yeah, looking for, champ. That's it. Drifting left, dead through the middle. Give yourself some options. He's behind a tree, but he'll have options from there. He could throw a backhand turnover. He can stretch out and maybe throw a sidearm. He's definitely going to have some options, even though like he's pinched off behind the tree. I yeah, imagine we'll see a little backhand play there from Gannon Burr. I think that yeah. tree to the right of the disc is a little too close to shape something. Yep. Mix. 16, McMinn makes the birdie putt. I was a bit fortunate. He got a 60 or 70 foot jump off that disc out of the fairway, and he'll take that. Absolutely, he'll take that, champ. Still got a couple more opportunities to grab a couple of late birdies here. Heimberg also putting for birdie. Heimberg heating up. Seven down, two more to go for Calvin Heimberg. As we're jumping into the booth while they make the long walk over to 17, taking a deep breath at our day one USDBC. <laughs> How you guys feeling so far? Uh, I'm loving this, man. This is what we've all been waiting for in the championship week out here at USDGC, the 25th anniversary. I got my boy, the champ here. I got my other homie right <laughs> here, Ian Anderson, on the ones and twos. This is awesome, man. So impressed by what we've seen so far out of guys like Joel Freeman, man, like getting himself back into the conversation out yep. here once again at USDGC, feeling really comfortable. Haven't seen much of the heavyweight superstars yet. It seems like some of these underclassmen are coming out swinging early, saying, all right, boys, we're not afraid to, to spar with you a little bit here. Uh -huh. Isn't that a theme with the USDGC, though? It kind of it seems to yeah. be a, a, every year it's, that seems to happen. The cream you. rises late. Right. right. Yeah. They start <laughs> off a little slow, and they, yeah. they let you believe you've got a chance, and then by the end they run you down and surpass you, and then you're in 35th place or something. <laughs> yeah. I see we got Calvin coming up the board. He's now tied for sixth and seven under par. There you go. Mm -hmm. Forehand roller out of Lazat. Does work, but play for par from there. Par at best without a miracle throw in. Yeah. And that would be a miracle up in, under that little tunnel. Forehand roller coming up from Sexton as well. Yeah, we knew where these two ended up. It was uh, Anthony that we were wondering yeah. if he was past the Mando line or how Headed far to, left yeah. did he kick and how tough would it be. Live on 17, Heimberg. Big moment here for Calvin Heimberg. Looks like he wants no part of a birdie. Casting that thing way That's out. Not that bad. Not bad. It's shallow yeah. circle, too. Is that yeah. on the edge of the circle? I That's think it's what edge it looks circle. like. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad effort there from Calvin. Not yeah. completely conceding, right? No. He threw it plenty high to make sure he cleared the bales. Mm -hmm. and and threw uh, it nice and firm to make sure he got right. Yep. McMahon going over stable fairway. Boy, they have really pinched this, this hole off by putting that basket way into that left corner. It, it makes you. It makes you almost have to play safe. Like, it's it's really hard to park this hole. Eagle swinging it a bit wider, trying to keep this in inside circle oh, one, and oh. he's making minis with Calvin Heimberg right on the line of C1. Dickerson. Chopper Dickerson, seven down. I think he's headed out for your earlobe, Kenny. <laughs> you did not just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. There's a tree at my there's a tree at my home course that drops these black seed pods and they call them petrified climo ears. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. And Barella, head to the drop zone, Nate. What happened there? Yeah, so that mandatory rule coming in to play twice today, his disc was only halfway across that thin green string, and so that leads to a Mando miss and he threw from that drop zone. How about that? Wow, rough break though for AB, but man, six of one, half a dozen of the other kind of kind of deal. That wasn't his best effort there from the drop zone. Still out there at the edge of circle two. A long true. look for a par save for Anthony Barella. His champ was just eluding to a low tunnel. Got some trees, got some limbs, got the holly bushes. A lot happening from the drop zone. Very fine one, line. One good uh, tee shot. <laughs> I'm not too fond of the ambiguous halfway across the line rule. I think it should be one way or the other. Either it's all the way across or it's not. 
just like an inbounds out of bounds. Why isn't uh -huh. why isn't it the same? I don't I don't like that. It's Either way, it's going to turn into the same score. Yeah, right. It could. Yes. Most likely from what happened with Anthony's second shot, right. third shot from the drop zone, well short, got a long look for a par save. Burr should find a birdie putt in there somewhere. Yep. Over to Simon in his third. Overturn? No, it's the... just fine. Okay. Just fine from Simon Lazat, right inside the bullseye. There is that s slightly bigger tree on the right side. If you overturn it just a little bit, it can catch it and leave you a nothing. testy little 30-footer. Yeah, almost nothing. Third for Sexton as well. Wisely you know, chucks that around the back side of the green. Things much more open. Live on the green of 17 with Dickerson putting for birdie. It's a long ways off to try and be running it with that OB back behind there. Ooh, that might have caught some metal. His body got in the way, but I thought I heard a little tickle there. <laughs> it was right on line. Yeah, he's usually really good about that. On line, the pace is usually the, the caveat there for Chris Dickerson. AB for par. Oof. Low, low ceiling. Tunnel. Yeah, this Almost is where you might want a little, little step bit. through jump putt with this, the turnover. Yeah, yes. This is where you want to get the extra energy on it. A little, little extra step, a little extra push. Got a bunch of trees back there. And he doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. And we'll have that left for bogey. And I'll drop AB back to four on the day. Not too late for the championship's sake, you know. Yeah, Not yes. Obviously the strongest start that he was looking for, but he hasn't shot himself out of it yet. No, a couple birdies closing up. He'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. Burr trying to manufacture a birdie look on 15's green and not having much luck, it appears. A couple of skinny windows. He's trying to find the one that offers the most airspace. Going to take a knee, straddle out to the right. I think he's found a line. Now he's got to get himself set and fired. Don't want to just stand there pump faking for 30 seconds. Definitely doesn't have a clean look. He's trying to get every last millimeter he can out of that foot to give himself a cleaner look. That's a rule I'm not too fond of nowadays anyway. I think you should have to split the disc dead center and be on the line of your disc to the pole. I don't like having to be out to the side of it like that. I, the piece of paper type yeah, of... Yeah, I, I don't understand the ruling behind that. You should have to be on the line of play. Or gave it a bid but found the band and will drop in par. Disappointing after a fantastic tee shot. I mean, seven times out of ten, those were those were for a birdie after that tee shot. Got a little loose on that approach there, Ian. Wasn't yeah. his best effort. Kind of gave it away off to the right side. I'd like to see him miss it more towards the left. Things much more open there. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those course management things you just got to be aware of out here. McMahon looking for three in a row on 17's green. Eagle still firmly a part of this conversation here. Six down. Opportunities. Five down, excuse me. Still an opportunity here. Ah, na 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 na. <laughs> McMahon getting his name back in the mix thanks to those three birdies late. I like the energy Eagles got right now. Quiet and focused. Mm -hmm. Handle business, man. Heimberg, this to get to eight under par on the day, two off the lead. Seems like the energy Calvin usually carries with him all the time is that <laughs> quiet, focused energy, not saying too much and keeping within himself. With you, champ. Not getting too up or do too down at any point. I'd say for the first time in a lot of years, I think we've seen a lot more out of Calvin emotionally than we really had in years past. You know, like he was very, very buttoned up and reserved. Stoic. Very stoic. And now yeah. you kind of see some emotion come off the sleeve of Calvin every once in a while. Still not an all-the-time thing, but, you know. Not a good miss there, though, guys. Where is not that? Is that on top of the? That's at the baseball oh, stadium. Oh, the baseball stadium. Okay. Yep. Just a weird view of <laughs> the Eagle. Aerial the view. Eagle. You know exactly where that is, champ, over by hole 16. You come inside the gate to use the restrooms. Oh, yeah. I've really never walked in there. Yeah, man. Right behind home plate out here at the Winthrop Baseball Arena. Ah. There you go. Okay. I've been okay. here a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There's 16's there pad over you to go. the left. Beautiful evening out here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Man. Couldn't ask for better weather. Carolinas are beautiful, man. Absolutely gorgeous around here, man. 18, McMahon. 
Looks like mid range if that's not a putter. Look at this. Drifting Eagle. right. If this Drifting thing fades right. out, this could it's be a kick back. Oh, it no. hits the oh. Mando stump. Or the, the Mando is the pole, but it, it used to be the Mando tree. It used to be the Mando tree, correct, Camp. And unfortunately, and he dragged that off to the right too hard, and he's going to be dropping a disc and lying three in a very awkward place. Yeah, that's really steep on that right side line. If you happen to go yeah. be on that right side line, the footing is awful there. You definitely want to be down to the left a little more. It's a little flatter, a little, little, little bit easier to, to get your run-up going there. There's actually a little bowl. So it's shorter where these guys might want to end up, but there's a bowl that gives you perfectly flat footing if you can end up in it. It's right where the drop zone hashes, uh, the little whiskers are. That's the ideal landing zone. Looks like Calvin's shooting for that. Got it sliding right. This should be right in that spot. Yeah, maybe a little right a of that little spot. Shy. but just a hair. Still good shape. Yes, sir. Dickerson, and we're going to see our third mid-range in a row off of 18's tee. You like that play, champ? I do. I think, you know, it's going to land flatter. It's going to not kick or skip or roll or twist when it, when it, when it hits the ground of the fairway. And I, I think it's, it's, you don't need a whole lot of distance on this hole. You need, you need the footing. You need the line. Mm, I like that thought. Down left is a lot harder, you know, to get up and down. Up right is a lot harder to get up and down. So, Right in the middle, man, 310 right the middle feet. That's the number these guys are looking for. I think that's why they're going with mid-range, so they can uh, hit that middle. Overturned and low from Dickerson. He's going to be shy of the ideal landing zone here at the 18th. He'll have a decision to make. That is shy of the bowl, which makes it a lot tougher. Back to 16 for Simon. Simon, one of the best players I've ever seen, throw the disc on the 6 to 12 line, and this is tracking. Nice. Oh, little heater out the back. Ooh. By the skin of his teeth, green flag for Simon at the 16th, and he desperately needed that good fortune. Not been Simon's afternoon. Those little trees on the left hand side of the basket might pose an issue with that putt. You might have to fl float one over the top and try and drop it in. I'm not sure how, the, how it's going to look on the line there, but they could be an issue. Sexton going for the flex down the middle as well. Got this thing pushing out towards the boundary yeah. line and sliding oh, in. Oh, what oh, a oh. shot from Nate Sexton. Almost That's went in twice. <laughs> Looked like that was going to go in in the air. The little bunny hop skip just shy of the bucket. Well executed play there from Sexton. Gannon Burr just two down on the day. Thanks to holes 13 and 14. How hard is it to do it two times here, champ, to go back-to-back -back champion at the USDGC? Oh, what a oh, horrible kick that was. Brutal. Kicked him out in the hazard. It, it, you know, this course has so many pitfalls every, you know, all the way around the course that just so much can happen out there. It's, it's hard to, to dial it up two years in a row and, and avoid the pitfalls and, and put the disc where you need it almost every shot, and that's what it takes to win. Varela. As well as making some putts. With the backhand right up the middle. Looks like this is moving left. Doesn't have the pace. It does. <laughs> he's he's going to have some some issues with those little trees right there. Hopefully he's, he's found one of the gaps. you got to find a way to get that in, Jam. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Straddle Six left, straddle right. you got to you know. find something. Got he's so tall, he should be able to get up and over that stuff. A little float drop in. 18's fairway, Dickerson Oof. at his second. Way out of position for Dickerson. Just going to fire the move. move on it. That oh, that's hanging up left. there. That is hanging up left. there. No, oh. for Chris Dickerson, a red flag. A bogey finish at best now. Mm -mm -mm. He's 100 feet from where his disc came to rest, too. That'll drop him to six if he gets up and down. Maybe ill-advised stab there from Chris Dickerson. A little out of position yeah. further back than you'd like. It's an uphill carry. You're going to have to drop the hammer. Yeah, he tough footing. It. He had the tough footing because he had to run uphill. And side hill. And up side end, hill, yeah. yeah. There's too I, much going on for that play. That, that, should, that could have been a layup very easily, and he could have just dropped it in and, you know, tapped in for his seven under or whatever. Burr headed out into the hazard to save par. A look from 56 feet. Wide open. Wide open, but knowing you already took that extra stroke, puts a little more pressure on, on the putt. Or will he turn the page and use this moment as an opportunity to resharpen the focus? He needs it bad. He's only two under. Defending champ up and oh. in for a big par save in. An early must make, honestly. <laughs> you know, wow. if you only this thing, yeah. 
I mean, because you miss that, you're one under, you go into 17 and miss, and then you, you're even or worse. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, a big, that's a big difference. No doubt about the stroke there from Gannon Burr, perfectly up and down on the pole, on the tape. Massive par save for the defending. Thanks, Azuka, for rolling that back. Simon just kept this thing in bounds. So he can mark his disc, but he does not get to take a meter because it's a yellow hazard in case if you're curious. The red, you can take your meter in. The yellow, you play it where it lies. This looks like that one tree is definitely in the way. Simon oh. don't care. <laughs> he he shaped it around that champ. He did he, shape yeah, it around yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Sure. Yeah. yeah, he put an Annie bit on that. Uh-huh. It wasn't straightforward. Mm -mm. Lovely putt there from Simon Lazat. Gets the people going a little bit with that yeah. smooth stroke. Oh, AB's way closer than I thought he was. Yeah. I tried to tell you, champ. He's right <laughs> off the bullseye. He's <laughs> got to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. There's no plenty excuse. of room there. There's plenty of room there. Anthony Barella picks up the birdie at the 16th. Nate Sexton next to act. Similar Almost distance. marked at one. Almost, man. What an effort from Nate Sexton getting things back to level par on the afternoon. I like the more natural look of the trees rather than the mozzarella sticks. I agree with that too, champ. Yeah. As we take a walk up to 17 for those guys, we're going to jump back with Calvin Heimberg on the fairway of the 18th. Just to the right side of the drop zone bowl, which is the perfect place to be. And I I think he needs to go for this one. It's He's not in such a horrible spot as, as Chris was. Gets it a little tight That's on early. the left side. I don't like it, champ. Oh, it what kicks out, but then moving. it goes back no. in. Oh. Calvin almost got a fantastic break at the 18th. Unfortunately, missed the line. Clobbers a tree, had a chance to come back and bounce, and he's going to be playing for bogey at the 18th. He'll drop back to six under. Chance for McMahon, McMahon to grab two strokes. Big opportunity um, here for big McMahon. Competitors. He's got to he's got to execute, man. He can't yeah. get loose here. He's been playing real nice the back nine. Well, he hit the Mando tree and ended up in. Oh, the you're OB, right. Jim. This so is for three. He's got to get up and Thank down you. for you par here. And he's, oh no, oh. he sawed that off. That, that had was no chance. I booted that one, and then Eagle booted it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, that was rough. And there they go. The walk. That is a. Uh, you know, a lot can, lot can go on in your mind in this walk, especially during the final round when it's coming down to the uh, possible champion or not champion position. But in the first round, you know, you're, you're not thinking quite as hard, but you're still thinking. You you're try to find thinking. someone to talk to, champ, or are you more of a... I'm more of a kind of just keep my nose to the grindstone right and get up there and not really think about it until I get there. And then take your 30 seconds to make up your mind, do what your, you need to do, and yep. focus up. Yep. I've, I've always been that kind of person. Anthony Barella taking long strides up the hill, trying to get to that six under mark, which definitely keeps you a part of this conversation early on here at the championship. Two more opportunities for young Anthony Barella, superstar at just 23 years old. And this uh, 17 isn't all that tough if it's, if it's not that windy. I mean, it can get in your brain a little bit and, and be tough that way. But if it's not that windy, you know, it's, it's a fairly easy shot to get in bounds. Yes. For most, for most people. Unless you don't have a sidearm, the righty backhand play is extremely technical. It is, and that's the way I used to throw it all the time. <laughs> throw a putter or a rock? I threw a rock most of the time. I'll beat up rock, make yeah. sure it drifted a little right. I was know. the play for the first 10 years I showed up here. Then I learned how to throw a little sidearm and said, you know, this is <laughs> a little less stressful. <laughs> There is McMahon pitching over. That's that could be a six, isn't it? Oof. Yeah, he was out, and then he was out. Yeah, yeah that's a putt for six. Yes, Oof. It is. Trending in the wrong direction is Eagle McMahon. That will drop him back to four. I would not be surprised to see Eagle come out here and pop off a dozen tomorrow. Yeah, but four is like the kind of the bottom rung of where we're talking about. You want it where you want to be to yeah. still be in the mix a yep. bit. Because you can definitely get hot and, and throw off a round and make make up for that four. You go four and 12, you're at 16. That's like two eights. Exactly. You got to average eight, right? Right. That's yeah. the number, man. That's that's my magic number. I hope to see it happen. It could be it would be really fun to see somebody you know, truly light this up for four days in a row, but it's just not what typically happens here. You know, there's always a lull somewhere in, in the tournament for whoever ends up winning. And there's usually one or two days where the weather is not the same as yeah, that's you know, true. very very rarely do we get four days of consistent Pristine weather here. Weather. Yeah. The, the, as far as rain, I'm looking, we're looking at it. I heard a little bit of wind, wind on, yeah, on that's, Saturday, that's, right? Right. Yeah. That, that usually does that. It yeah. usually has a day or two of wind or yep. a day or two of something it's going on. It's supposed to be mid twenties on Saturday, so we'll see how it shapes up. Oh, we 20s. are at the yeah. ever dangerous seventeenth <laughs> hole, the ninth hardest on the afternoon, just two hundred and fifty feet playing downhill, water deep, hay bale short. 
This could really ruin your day if you have a hard time getting it together. It used to be able when you had to go rethrow until you landed safe. Now I think after a couple, these guys get to head to a drop yeah. zone. The tee pad used to be down by the water's edge, and you would play along the lake. Kind of t sim similar to where the basket is now, I think, is where the basket was then. But the tee pad was in a different position altogether, 90 degrees away from where it is now. Did you need that one? Uh, I didn't need that one, per se, but I think that was... Uh, my first ace in <laughs> the USDGC, so it felt extra special. Awesome. Any ace is special, but yeah. you get in in a major championship. and Especially special. Yeah, especially <laughs> special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see that little tree that I threw it over? That's that huge tree you see on the wow. right right now. I think it's grown up a bunch <laughs> in 20 years, huh? <laughs> right. We got a lot Ooh, more 25. pixels these days, 25. too. 25. 25. That was the first one, 99. <laughs> yeah, huh? that I'm was not the doing first my one. Math here. <laughs> my math was not mathing. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> and the, uh, the island was more of a perfect circle more of a circle and this is more of a earlobe as you called it before it was more of a circle back then simon trying to get touchy and he did does it have the go it does dropping a dime at the 17th simon lazat that'll be on the highlight reel later a beaut very reminiscent of johnny mccray's shot that hit the top of the bales and mm -hmm. stayed out of bounds the year that he had that debacle, but that was a very similar type line and speed and float. Mm -hmm. It had the same texture to it, but yep. that one had the pace, and Johnny McCrae's did not, and that would be the end of it for him. Sexton going to the sidearm here at the 17th. You've got to imagine this is going to be 20 feet to the right at least. But he's... This is dangerous. Oh. A little too much go there from Sexton, perhaps a bit too aggressive on the line of the target, and he's going to have to reload and throw three. I imagine he will get that sexy bird back. Just a foot off the bank there. What is the ground rules this year on this hole? How many do you throw? You throw three? I heard the women say it was two for them. Really? So for the MPO, they're going three, three throws before you can go to the drop zone. And that oh, that's is also a tree on the way out. Did it, you guys see it, that? It clipped. Okay. It definitely clipped. Wow. Yeah. Uncharacteristic misses here from Nate Sexton. Such a sidearm friendly shot, unable to find the touch. I, I think it was because he was going directly at the pin the first throw. I don't think you can really go at this pin. It's I, tough, man. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a smart play. I think you should play 20, 25, 30 feet to the right of it. You should Very go conservative directly play at here it. from Sexton, hoping to keep this on circle's edge, give him an opportunity, and it blows past circle one. I mean, that's what you do the first two, time, That's I what think. you're supposed to do the first time. That would be smarter. Give yourself a chance and mitigate any stress of an OB stroke. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the land is farther, you know, you have more land to work with the farther you go right. And the farther you go left, you have less land to work with distance-wise. So you can throw the disc farther to the right as well. You can go more right and farther and still be safe. Oh. Anthony Barella giving this a half go for a one, and he just, just dives the over the hay bales, and he'll be inside circle one staring down birdie. We'll have that to get to six down on the day, four off the lead of Joel Freeman. And I think that's the optimum play if you're going to throw a sidearm. You know, just clear the bales by a couple feet and be 25, 20 feet to the right of it. That's the best you should really be looking for. If you park this hole, I think you've made a mistake. <laughs> Gannon Gannon Burr. Burr going mid-range off the box. This is aggressive as well. Buzzing the tower. Does it sit? It does. Inside C1 for Gannon Burr, putting back towards the OB hay bales. Well, he has that for a 50% birdie rate, but he's not doing the bogey rate. He's not. He yeah, about. that's that's where things fall apart around here, man. If you can't maintain and save your pars. McMahon for double bogey. Ouch, ouch, it's ouch. Back to four goes McMahon. Still in the mix, though. Dickerson, yes. a bogey putt. Not a bad effort overall there for Chris Dickerson. A couple of bogeys, one early, one late. There's a bogey for Heinberg late. Unfortunately, again, for Heinberg. Three bogeys, nine birdies. Birdie count good. Bogey count not, but still in the mix. Six the under. Mix. He's on the... At the bottom of the first page, you know, anytime you're you're on the first page and after the first round, you, you're looking at a a win possibility if you play good the final three. Uh -huh. How about young Evan Smith hanging on to a top 10 start? Joseph Anderson does the same. Andrew Marweed, the cookie monster. Solid seven under effort along with Matt Orm. You got James Proctor, Burridge, Hutton. Joel Freeman, though, still the man of the afternoon. Solid effort out there. One bogey, 10 under par. 
the only clubhouse. double digits of the day. Unbelievable, man. What a wow. fantastic round there for Joel Freeman. You know, after that USDGC putting woes a couple years, but he changed his putting form because of this. And it's it's been paying off. Good for him, man. Yeah. You got to make adjustments when you're a pro. If something mm -hmm. ain't working, you can't be stubborn and just say, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing and taking the same results, man. You got to be willing to change and evolve as a player. Right. I think it's good to know all the different putting styles and, you know, use the one that, that suits works the, the moment, best right? for yeah. the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, obviously, you're going to have your basic, normal, open 25 footer, nothing, no problems. You're going to have one style for that. But then you know, there's a lot of other situations where you need to learn how to to do the different things with the disc and learn how to putt different ways, straddle, turbo, two finger upside down, uh, <laughs> just yeah. all sorts of different things that can, little tricks that can help you out. But you definitely need to have your go-to style. And if you got to revamp that, you know, then put the work in and do it. Back yeah. to the woodshed, man. Figure it out. That's it went, what used happens. to be a, like a nose down putter. It kind of went to a more neutral slight nose up. That's okay. what you'd like to see. That's the way the disc was intended to be thrown. Man. Yeah. Kind of helps with those nervy putts. <laughs> it should, man. Yeah. Like Champ was saying, you got to hardwire your baseline putt, man. That can't really have much variation. Right. Barella to get to six. Nice. That was exactly what we were talking about. That's a hardwired Bates line putt for him right there, and it looked repeatable. It has been a bit of an Achilles for Anthony Barilla, though, champ, as we've been watching over the season. Sometimes he gets right around that five, six, seven meter and has a little brain fart and pushes it off to the right. That was something we used to talk yeah. about all the time in post production yes. doing Central Coast stuff. And like that. Oh, exactly right there. the same yeah. thing. Yeah, it's just like just a little too aggressive, just a little too much want on it. And yeah. It seems like that's his predominant miss if he's going to yeah. miss from close. He draws, he draws back to the left hip on the putt. Right, which kind of makes you pull over to the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can, unless if you hardwire your spine being the guiding line and yeah. you can keep the disc in the middle of your body on the release. That's nice. what most of us are trying to do. L little em Emerson Keith reminiscent, the oh, pull yeah. off to the left side and pull through. Yeah, but I think Philo's hit the nail on the head there. I think you want to keep it more spine-oriented, more central, more central all the way through the backstroke and the forestroke. Yeah, I think it helps him get a little more pop well, on it, but he's, he's offline. Yeah, he's putting it in his to left me, it's pocket. The footwork, you know? Yeah. Like, look at how his look, feet his are pointed left. His foot was over here, yeah. And his body's pointed right. And, and his disc was going left, left and then back across the right. So right. to me, the math don't math there. Right. You know? If that's I'm all sorry. feel. And I'm not trying to be mean to Gannon. He's a fantastic, awesome player. Obviously, a major winner. Great putter. <laughs> he does what he does, you yeah. know, and he's earned that, you know. But when you look at it, you can kind of go, well, maybe that's why this happened. This is where he can get better. Potentially, he if, he want, if he wants to, man. He's 18 years old. For sure, man. He'll figure it out. I hope he does, man. He's one of the best talents I've seen in a long time. He is. I mean. It's been a fun three years. I saw a video of him throwing this hole right here when he was 10 years old, I believe, when he came to the USGDC like eight years ago. And yep. there was a video of him throwing this hole. And, wow, what a <laughs> – what a turnaround. My first look at Gannon Burr, the kid was on crutches with a broken leg, draining 50-footers with one hand on the crutch and one hand just, <laughs> it was just unbelievable. And maybe that's where he developed a little left side <laughs> pull from you know, on that crutch. It was <laughs> yeah. insane, man, to watch that kid putt from 50 with one leg. <laughs> Simon on the tee. Maybe that's what a new rule we can make up. We got to do a flamingo one legger. <laughs> <laughs> Simon just shy of the perfect landing zone, but still great angle. We'll be just fine there. That bowl you're talking about, champ, just a little bit to the right of there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, it's like perfectly flat. I mean, it is flat. It's a dimple in a hill. Uh -huh. It's right where the drop zone is. They give you at least they give you the flat footing that's for the friendly. drop zone. I like that. There really isn't anywhere else flat until you get on the back side of that hill. So. Yeah. I think that's a smart little course design thing. Maybe they got a couple of shovels out here and just said, you know, we got to give them something fair. A.B. with the putter off of 18's tee. Well, if you've got 85 miles an hour, you know, yep. you could do that, but it doesn't look to be. <laughs> no, Anthony Barella makes the mistake of missing left. And that's the reason you would throw a putter is to not miss left. <laughs> Long and left. Yeah. Right? yeah. It just got too stable. It didn't look like he quite shaped the disc to challenge the right side just a smidgen. Burr next. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's got the shape. It's going right at the ball. It's a little low. Where, kind of where C. Dick was. Yeah, was, yeah that's going to yep. be some tough footing and a long way to go from there. He's got plenty of pop. It's all about the shape out the hand. Yeah. You've got to challenge that tree off to the right, hang it up there along the line, and then get that late fade. And we've seen a bunch of guys already just in the last 20 minutes or so sawing it off, yep. making that early entrance onto the left side. And it's all been a case of not perfect footing, I think, as Eagle was up high on the right, Calvin was a little on the right of the bowl, and Chris Dickerson was a little below the bowl where it's more uphill from there. Definitely affects things. Hard to get full pop on it when your feet are pointed uphill and you're trying to throw level. Yeah, and it's hard to get the direction as well. Kind of a yank at that point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like a controlled yank. A controlled yank. Yep. Sexton. This is... It's uh, not needing to not skip very much here. Ooh, oh, some friendly boy. ground play there from Ball Sexton. Over. I think he deserved that one after <laughs> all the bad luck yeah. he's had. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Quadruple on 17. A rough one. And of all the guys you think are going to 10 cup 17, you don't think Nate Sexton with that sidearm, man. You are top 15 as we fly along the lake. Hey, look at young Rasmus Salkuripi from Finland putting in work out here. That kid's going to be somebody to contend with. Former champion James doing, Conrad man. at the bottom of the list. We there got go. Dickerson, who's the next champion here. And uh, that's about it for the top 15 right now. On but these guys right here champions. around the top 25, they're still well in this battle, man. They oh, just yeah. got to come out swinging tomorrow, man. They need a good number, you know, somewhere 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I mean, even down to 2 or 3 under, you know, you're still you're still part of the conversation. Part of the conversation if you come out with a hot one. Got to go low tomorrow. Yeah. Got to go low, especially if we're expecting some wind on Saturday. You're going to expect scoring to be down. The conditions making the shots a bit more difficult around this Winthrop Arena. There's no guarantee that top five can repeat tomorrow. Right. Not at all. They can fall back a little bit. I completely agree with you, Ian. That is a very good observation. Obviously, Kyle Klein, the closest of the bunch in that top five to getting the job done here at USDGC, but falling short to the greatness of one Paul McBeth in the playoff. Burr throwing two. Which Kyle had the putt on the regulation 18th to win. And he did. Wasn't Couldn't able to come done. up with the goods there. Mm -hmm. He's due too, man. There's so many players that you just feel like their day is coming, man. Yep. And it didn't used to be like that 10, 15 years ago. There was this six or seven of you cats that everybody was looking to you guys to hold it down. <laughs> you and Felberg and Nate Doss and you know, Barry Schultz. Barry, you know, shoestrings. Mm -hmm. A young Paul McBeth. A young Paul McBeth. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Mike Moser, that guy was a gamer. He'd come out here and slay. You know, there's a bunch of names, but. So looking like Tipton and Burridge will first make their first league card at a major tomorrow. Cool How for them. about that? And only being one stroke back of the lead as well. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. place to be. Matty O was warning us about Sullivan Tipton, wasn't he? He had some words about young Sullivan, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Keep an eye on that guy. He's a gamer, and he showed up today in a big way. Let's see if he can keep that rolling for all four rounds. That is the toughest thing to do here is to repeat the effort. I think you can go to any part of the country now and they've got someone that's a gamer in their area. <laughs> it's I just think it's always been that way, yeah, champ. It yeah. just didn't get broadcasted right. as much as it does now. Right. Simon attacking for birdie. This would be a great oh, finish. Yes. Yeah. Get it to five under on the afternoon with that effort on the last. That keeps him squarely in the picture. It sure does, man. This is a guy who's long overdue too, man. Some weeks I really feel like if Simon would just stop goofing around and just do the bare bones minimum, he would beat everybody by five because he's so talented. Right. He's got all the shots. He does. You know? Barella leaked OB off the tee. Will now throw three. I can take it in this line. Did you say that that's Yeah, I think that's fair.
Needs, it, need the speed. Needs the speed to get around the he corner. He has gets the it. speed, and he is in the bullseye champ. Yes. Anthony Barella covers up the errant drive here at the 18th, and he'll scrap that up for a par. Beautiful. What a scramble. Right? That's nope. the way you like to see it be done out here, champ. That keeps him right there and squarely on the top 10 line. And, and A.B. has really grown up out here the last couple of seasons, man. I was going to say, you, he, we talked about that nervy putt to the right. I haven't seen that in a long time. Man. Not much of it, man. Yeah. I can only think of maybe one or two in the last couple of times we've been in the booth watching him. Yeah, but it used to be back when he'd get on a lead card, we could almost count on it. At least a few per yeah. round. Just get all in his head and start grip locking him yeah. or however you want to call it, man. Yeah. Just off to the right, off to the right. The growth has been awesome to see. The maturity, man. Yeah. You know, growth and maturity. Sexton's shot. Beautiful. Bunch of good ones coming in there. Yeah. Stress-free finishes. And if you guys are watching on YouTube today, thank you for watching. And also head over to the Disc Golf Network. Get 20% off your first month on DGN with the promo code USDGC2023. Absolutely. We would love to have your support. Have you guys tune in with us throughout the disc golfing season. Always, always awesome shows for you guys to take in. Appreciate all you guys who have subscribed. Make sure to let your friends know we could use your support. Check the link. Description in the link. Yep, exactly. And you just point your phone at that QR code, it'll send you right there. Technology is pretty fun. Technology, man. One half a hole to go here. Anything jumping out at you as we close down this first round here, champ? Uh, some unforced errors out there, I think, jumping out at me. People making mistakes that they didn't necessarily have to make. Uh, maybe Nate had a little bit too conservative game plan going into the day. And it bit him because he needed a few more birdies at the end that he uh -huh. didn't get early and he needed them towards the end. Um, Gannon, you know, he missed a couple putts through a couple errant shots. A but big triple bogey at the 14th, yeah. really holding him up. But smartly, you know, he played from where his disc was before instead of going down, down there and, and, taking and trying to make a longer distance, putt. Yeah. yeah, and just not, not not thinking about it in the moment. Yeah, easy to lose your head right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No doubt. That was definitely smart of him to, to play from the other lie, have a shorter putt to, to make the triple. Speaks a lot to his growth and maturity developing out here before I eyes on tour. You know, he's starting to figure out and get the right mental attitude and approach to playing at the highest level. And I mean, this is one of the better weather days you're ever gonna get to play this kind of course. And only one person got the double digits. So if we see some wind this weekend. Expect to see the scoring averages drop. Yeah, I would think. Sexton up and or, in. Or raise may be the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depends which way you're looking at it, right? right. Yeah, exactly. right, Thursday gallery giving Nate Sexton, our 2017 champion, some love as Anthony Barella slides that in for his par. Again, and Burr in for bogey. And Simon in for birdie. Day one is in the books, gentlemen. Always a fun watch at Winthrop. Always an adventure for the players. It's just, it's you're not going to get through here clean. It's one it's of the greatest challenges that disc golf has to offer. It's not just the course, but it's the mental strain that this place puts on you. Champ said that at the top of the show, man. This place will put you in the mental grinder, in the physical grinder, in the emotional grinder. and you got to have the fortitude to keep your stuff together, man, and battle through all four days out here at the Winthrop Arena. Gold course, such a fantastic place to come play. Obviously, the environment, the crowds, the music, the fans, the, you know, now we got Vendor's Village, we got yurts. I mean, it's just, it's <laughs> growing, man. It's so awesome to see where we've come in such a short period of time. Yeah, the build out this year was uh, amazing. It's mm -hmm. way bigger than I've ever seen it before, and it's just, it's awesome. They've got a great setup down there by Hole 7, with yep. a little Zuka Lounge, yep. and big area back here for the players to warm up, a little hospitality going on down there, and a new parking area for the competitors. It's mm -hmm. just, the build out was awesome this year. It gets better every year. Every year. That's it's the plan, the isn't it? Staff, it's Make exactly things right. better. A little, little Kaizen, right? We're going to kick it off to a break. When we come back, we'll have an OTB after show. I guess we'll catch you there.
never give in, we never give up. Coming back again like a selector with a wheel up. Time to go and seek out, about to go and re up. Got my second win, watch it when I speak out. They hover around like a flock of vultures. They want a piece of what I got, vultures. You think you got the higher ground, but you didn't now. Caught them off guard and you wonder how. My name is Garrett Gerthy, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. I love the fact that it's resealable. I can just get a little bit, keep my energy levels up, but not eat like a half of a meal in the middle of my round. My favorite bag is the Smash Cracked Pepper. That's my perfect salty snack. This is my go-to, the sex and sweet and spicy. If this bag gets opened, there's no need for the seal, because I'm going to eat it all. The Innova Alien, our newest multi-purpose disc. It's like nothing you've seen before. With a pretty beefy mid-range bottom, but a very familiar sonic top, it creates physics-defying stability. From intermediate to pro-level power, backhands to forehands, the Alien. Flying to a dealer near you. A round of disc golf can be long, and if you're playing in a tournament, it can feel like a marathon. This can leave you physically and mentally fatigued by the end when your shots matter most. With space for your discs, water, and even a place to sit, a cart enables you to bring what you need, helping you feel more prepared and energized without carrying the extra weight. This can help you maintain your edge and save you strokes through every round. Welcome into the after show. Down there with our very own Terry Miller is your leader, Joel Freeman. All yours, Terry. Joining us now is a 10 under out of Joel Freeman opening round here at USDGC. How does it feel? Great. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, started a little slow on the front, but then couldn't ask for much better on the back. So, yeah, pretty incredible. You were two down on the front nine, as you were just saying, but then you got to hole 10, you go after the eagle, you pick that up. Is that just something you're always going to be going after, or is that going to be a, a, you know, kind of reading it week, or I'm sorry, round by round in terms of hole 10? Yeah, hole 10 is not, uh, not situational for me. Um, you'll always, always see me going for that one. Um, even if you land the tee shot OB, you still have got that opportunity to walk away with a four, which is just fine, so... Uh, and it's a familiar shot anytime you're playing from the drop zone. So, uh, so yeah, just happen to execute well and make the putt. So what's the lesson for everyone at home watching and seeing like, well, you know, you can start around slow, but then still turn it into something really special. What, what's the mentality? What, what could be the lesson for somebody at home? Um, yeah, I mean, I think for, it might depend on your personality, might depend on who you are, but for me personally, like I've... <laughs> I've grinded so hard, <laughs> ground, grinded so hard in the, you know, in the last, um, a decade or more. Um, and so the work's been done, 
that's that's something I I just always tell myself like the work's already been done. You you're not you don't need to figure anything out. Like odds are things will come back around. And you'll start playing like yourself again. Um, and so yeah, just trying to um, stay calm, and leave it in God's hands. That's that's my mindset. So. Yeah, maybe feeling of don't panic, you've got this, so to speak, and that's exactly yeah. what happened. And then even though you finished with a bogey on the final hole, kind of break down how essentially you're almost still okay with that, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, The what f felt good about 18 is I executed the shot beautifully way up there, center fairway, uh, and just happened to catch the hill in the, on the wrong angle and roll OB. So I don't ever feel like I slipped up, uh, which feels good. Kept the kept the momentum rolling into uh, in the next round with in, in that sense. So, yeah. all right. Final question is how do you think a 10 under, how do you feel like that fares in terms of the overall week and, and kind of some goals out here for you? I think it's a great number. Um, if, I mean, I'll tell you right now, if I shoot 10 the next three days, I will be shocked if I don't take the trophy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think anywhere like eight or higher, uh, in my mind, is, is keeping pace with, with the leader. So happy with a 10 for sure. All right, everyone, that's Joel Freeman, open with a 10 under at the USDGC. Best of luck to you in round two. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry and Joel. Ken, any reaction to Joel's words there? Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much hitting the nail on the head with all that, but uh, you, you got to factor in the possible weather. Yeah. You're talking about maybe some 20-mile-an-hour winds. Yep. So. I don't know if you're going to need 10 every round That's if, it, true. if it gets a little windy like that. So we'll just, you got to take it day by day, you know, yep, shot by shot, time, right? hole by hole, you know, stuff like that. That's more, that's more where it lies here. But if he keeps up that solid play, mm -hmm. no matter what the weather is, you know, he'll He's probably good, have yeah. a good chance. I'll be a filo. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of can relate to what he's saying about the work has been done when you've been on tour for seven, eight, ten years. Like, you've pretty much earned cool your moment. skill set, you yeah. know what I mean? But you still got to keep working at it. You can't just say, well, I've done the work to get me to this place. Now I'm just going to fall back on it. You got to keep pushing, you know what I mean? You got to keep challenging yourself. You got to keep making those shots dialed in a little tighter, you know, just tweak, 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 you know, make those little adjustments like we were talking about with this putting yeah. earlier, you know what I mean? He had a little bit of troubles with the putter in certain ranges and did some homework, got things sorted out, now things are coming around. So, yeah, I like what Joel's saying. He's going to have to earn his way to four rounds of 10 under par. It ain't just going to fall in his lap. So we're just going to have to wait and see how things unravel. That's how it goes every major, every tournament. So <laughs> one step at a time, baby. It's always fun to watch as well. The OTB shot of the day, always fun to watch. Always fun, man. I, I think my guest was maybe that Gannon, Bowl, Gannon Burr role on hole three Ooh, was uh, pretty awesome. What do you got, champ? Well, I'm going to go with the hole in one by Cole Rodolin on 17. Also excellent. Mm. I'm coming up empty. Let's just fire it off. What you got, everybody? What <laughs> you, you, got? you guys picked the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what our man Gary to the O picked for our shot of the day. Gary, whoa. Ah, oh. Gannon Burr off the tree. Defending champion getting the nod either way. <laughs> I, I like it. Bank shot. Count it. That was a fun one. Let's go with the luck shot of the day on that, <laughs> that one. Is <laughs> only the best luck of the day for Gannon Burr here on hole four. That was pretty spectacular. You don't see that every day. Gannon Burr out there deep in the fairway. Oh, here's the 90 drone. 90 feet. We watched this from the drone the first time. Yeah, this was we the like, first angle It we hit saw. something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was not pure. No. <laughs> oh, well. We'll take it. Awesome day one, boys. It was absolutely a pleasure. It was. I cannot wait for tomorrow. Should be fun. That's all. Looking over. forward to it. I actually get to play a little bit tomorrow. We're doing a skins match after the play is over. Awesome. Can't That's right. That. If you're in the neighborhood, if you're on the property, don't rush out of here too soon tomorrow. You get to watch the great one, Ken Climo, in action. It has been far too long, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are so thrilled to have you here, man. So happy you're back in the, on the scene, feeling healthy, looking good, feeling good. Such a pleasure to have you, man. We cannot wait. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Thanks, man. It's my pleasure, and I'm glad to be here. And glad to be part of this 25th anniversary USDGC. There are your short times for tomorrow. Throw a pink kicking off in the morning. We'll be back in the afternoon for Philo, Ken Klima, and myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you tomorrow.
Hello everyone and welcome in to Tournament Central one more time today round one of the United States Disc Golf Championship here at the Winthrop Coliseum is all complete. Brian Earhart, Nate Perkins wrapping up the action for you. Nate, it was a strange day out there. I think the conditions were prime for scoring and we saw one double digit score on the day. It was Joel Freeman from mm -hmm. Colorado. A really wonderful round, uh, a good score, but talk about the day and, and kind of what you picked up from him. Yeah, I think that's the biggest story for, for me today as well, Brian, is that the conditions were perfect. And I think that probably lent some players to feel the extra pressure knowing that they had to shoot so well. And it was a big shock that there was only one player to hit double digits. And if we take a look at Joel's scorecard, I mean, he, he had a pretty slow start. You know, two under on on the front nine, and that's the, I would say the softer of the nines, and then eight under on the back with a bogey. Not a stat we hear about very often. Just got in that flow state, got the eagle there on ten, parked it, and you know just started racking up those birdies. And Brian, this is not the first time that we're going to be see Joel leading this event. He's actually found the the lead card at this event several times, and. It was this tournament a couple years ago where Joe, Joel really failed in the final round, big moment, and that is what forced him to kind of change his, his putting mm -hmm. stroke. I don't know if you remember that, but he was having a great tournament off the tee and just never really got into that rhythm, and, and, and he came up just a little bit short, and that's the moment where he went and changed that stroke. Well, you know what's interesting? He changed the putting stroke from a nose-down push putt to a nose-up push putt, which is not common. Uh, heard er earlier in the week, Holland Hanley did the exact opposite and recently switched from a nose up putt to a nose down putt. And they switched for completely different reasons. Joel was missing low and Holland was just getting too many spit outs. So it's interesting, uh, players switching nose angle mid season on the putt. And clearly it's been working for Joel. He's been playing very solid disc golf. You look at the front nine, he misses one, he misses two, he misses four, he misses seven. He misses nine. Those are par threes that are not difficult, overly technical shots. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that he's played this back nine so well shows me that if he just cleans up a couple more things, this could be a 14 under par easily. And he gets a nasty roll away on 18. I talked to Joel uh, just briefly after the round uh, off camera, and he said the course for him didn't score easy, but it was scorable. He mm -hmm. felt like he could easily replicate what he did again. He feels like what happened to him on 18 was uh, not unfair, but it was just a little bit of a, a lost coin toss, so to speak. So Joel's looking really good out there, and this, this course suits him very well. Now, did that roll off his tee shot back OB left or on that approach? It was, it was going up to the green, and he okay. said that, you know, it, it happens, but he wishes it did. Well, obviously went a different direction, and he was able to take that par and score a 900 par in the back nine. With that said, you followed our feature card today, and it was a little mm -hmm. bit of a flat day for everybody, including the defending champion in Gannon Burr. Yeah, it was a really strange day out there, Brian. I mean, like you already said, the conditions were perfect, and I was ready for this card to absolutely shred. Here's Gannon on nine from the knee. That was the putt of the day, no question about it. That was after pulling that approach disc wide, and here he is on 10. He thought he had this one a little overturned, but he leans on the stability of his driver, skips up to 25 feet. But where Gannon really struggled was the circle one putting today. I mean, he goes on to actually miss that 25 footer. I mean, he's, you can count on one hand how many he's missed this season from that distance. And here he is on 12. This one was actually in the heart. That's a birdie there. Goes on to single bogey the 13th. Then on 14, he releases the shot, Brian. And he turns around and says, that's the worst shot I've thrown all year. He throws a spike hyzer short of the hay bales. Misses that putt for the par. Then he goes on to miss and it rolls into the hazard. He re-putts. Cards a triple bogey there on the 14, 14th. And it's it's such a juxtaposition from his performance last year. I mean, 14 is where he made that big 60-footer down the hill on on Nicholas. So to, to card the, the single on... 13 and then the triple on 14 it really felt like his whole tournament came to a close i'm right going to ask you a quick yes or no question before we go to the next person mm -hmm. and you can be pretty blunt with this is gannon out of the tournament right now 
I think not by his score, Brian, but I think he's got a tall mountain to climb based on how he feels mentally and emotionally after the performance today. Well, we have to talk about Anthony Barella also on the feature card. He's a little bit better in the standings right now than Gannon. Uh, he looked a little flat. If you looked at the body language out there, he didn't look satisfied whatsoever with how he shot. He's tied for 10th place. He shot a 600 par. Uh, what did you think about the performance? Yeah, I felt like he shined on, on his birdies, but he was he was really timid out there, Brian. I mean, he missed several putts from that shallow circle two range, and normally he's he's had that little stepper. You know, him and Hammy's both been, been walking those in, and he's been burying those all season, and he was just a little timid. He pulled a couple right, but then he even came up in front of the chains on, on the left side, completely missing it. Uh, w one that comes to mind is the, the putt on hole five. I mean, he had a great look at birdie from 34 feet, and just airballs the basket left, soft enough to not go a B. So you could tell he was feeling a, a bit timid. And then, you know, a weird mistake there on, on 13, throwing it OB right, not a very common mistake off the tee. And then 15, the somewhat common mistake, inside left, misses that mandatory, and doesn't get up and down from the drop zone. So those two big mistakes are what kept him off that eight out of par. Well, I mean, he rattles back a birdie on 16, gets the very daunting 17th, takes a nice solid par on 18, 600 par, decent standing, and he's only four strokes off the lead. I'm going to answer that yes, no question by saying, yes, Anthony Brella is right in the mix right mm -hmm. now. Uh, no, no problem whatsoever. Nate, uh, let's talk about Simon Lazat also on the feature card. Let's keep rattling him off. I mean, we have so many players to talk about this week. It seems like we have players that are at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them really seem to be in a slump right now. Uh, w what did you see from Simon today? Yeah, it was an interesting day for Simon. He Right, off, right out of the gate, got a little lucky. He, he threw that putter high on one, and it filtered through everything, and he had a 20-footer. Same thing on two, pulled it right, got a little lucky, had a putt. And then things started to really come apart late on on the back nine. It was, it was hole 10, Brian, was the big moment. So normally we'd expect Simon to, to just send that one and go for the eagle. He opted to lay that one mm. up, laid it up into a a weird position he had one of those big mature trees right inside his stance and he was forced to throw a real steep hyzer and didn't make it in bounds and if you recall that that's a rethrow from that position puts the next one out to 28 feet and then misses that one for the double bogey in his mind there it is right there on the scorecard in his mind brian he just double bogey what he thinks is one of the easiest holes on the course what consistently does play is one of the easiest holes when you know, 10% of the field is carding the eagle there. Well, Nate, I, I have to agree with you. I, I, I think it was kind of a flat day, but again, I don't think he got out uh, completely, completely out of the mix. 500 par, five strokes off the lead, three more rounds at this course. Anything can happen. Who knows if Joel can hold on to that 10 under par mark for three more rounds. With that said, we have to talk about Kyle Klein. He had a phenomenal day today out there on the disc golf course. We're going to talk about Kyle on the other side of this commercial break. When I walk up to a shot, I'm looking for the target. I'm looking at obstacles around the target, specific landing zones, looking at the height. Knowing all of that, I'm able to shape a shot. I don't want to think, did I get the right shot? Did I get the right distance? Like, that's it, I got it. Confidence is everything, and the Edge Disc Golf Rangefinder gives me exactly that. I want to be known for winning a lot of tournaments. You know, hopefully I get to a point where I can be dominant in an era with so many people coming up in the game, so hard to stay consistent at the top. That's kind of my goal is to set the new standard for this generation. Get ready for an electrifying fusion of disc golf and art. Disc Golf Strokes, a Uplay fundraiser that will creatively blow your mind. Featuring some of the biggest names in professional disc golf. Each six foot canvas is up for auction along with the artist's smocks, disc brushes, and other exclusive disc golf items. Every dollar helps fund Uplay's educational events, and we're currently raising money for our trip to Uganda and Kenya, Africa this October. Disc Golf Strokes. 
where the thrill of the game meets the power of art to benefit the world. Welcome back. You can watch the United States Disc Golf Championship and more upcoming live pro disc golf events here on the Disc Golf Network. Use the code USDGC Live23, all one word at checkout for 20% off your first month subscription. Scan the QR code or hit the link in the description below to subscribe today and wrap up this 2023 disc golf season. You're going to have the Tour Championship coming up next week at Nevin in Charlotte, North Carolina, as well as lots of great off-season content coming your way. One of those players playing in that Tour Championship next week and gunning for a title here at Winthrop is Kyle Klein in second place with a nine-under-par effort. Let's take a listen to what he had to say after the first round. We're catching up with Kyle Klein after round one at the 2023 USDGC. Kyle, nine-under. And that's with a few blemishes on the scorecard. So how did it feel? Yeah, I mean, I got off to a rough start, missing a couple of putts in the first uh, first two holes. So, uh, But once I got a couple of birdies, got back to even, I kind of settled in and found my game plan that I had built over the last week and uh, just kept going from there. And really just tearing up the back. Actually, it started on four. You got uh, a bunch of birdies, four through nine, and then you continued that into the back where you picked up the eagle on 10. Is there a stretch playing easier is it playing softer or do you were you just dialed what was the winning combo out there i think finding like i think i had i found one distance driver that i was really feeling and really throwing on i think most of the shots in the back nine so i feel like that's kind of what it takes you find one disc out here and you can uh throw it on most holes and if you're dialed you're dialed and you'll make the putts and you're good so here we are and you're talking about game plans and being dialed and even have specific disc but it's the end of the year where are you at physically in terms of how you're feeling as we're here at this last major? Uh, it's definitely it's definitely getting to that point where my body's kind of ready to be done here. But mentally, mentally I'm hanging in there, but my body's definitely needing some rest here. And final question for you. Uh, your dad is here. I know he's been here a number of years. Uh, also, a couple of grandparents in, in the audience out here this weekend. What does that mean to have uh, your grandparents be able to come out and watch you play golf? It's awesome. You know, I don't think they've only seen me play a handful of times in person. So uh, it's just it's cool to have them have them make the trip down from Michigan to come here and watch. All right. Well, you shot a nine under. Uh, how do you feel about that score specifically? That'll be the last question. How do you feel about the nine? I think going into the round, it felt it it sounded good. I think going through at least at the end of the round now, it feels like it could be a little better. But also, I don't know if I'm going to have that hot stretch of the middle that I had every day. So as long as I'm keeping it clean and uh, picking up the birdies that I know I can get, I think that's a pretty pretty solid number. All right, again, that's Kyle Klein. He's nine under after round one. Best of luck on the second round. Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously, Kyle has the skills to take down a major title. He has come so close. Uh, he was in the mix at the European Open. He's won tournaments on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Uh, he's easily one of the most elite throwers in the MPO division. But he did mention that his body is starting to feel it, as are most of the players on the tour. But he's dealt with some back issues in the mm -hmm. past. And I know at this point he's going to really have to grunt out the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate, talk about Kyle. Talk about what you know. And, and look at that middle stretch on his scorecard. No, it's an incredible stretch of golf. And, yeah, Kyle had to take nearly a month off in the middle of the season to let his back recover. And you, by the looks of his game this week you you wouldn't be able to tell that he's dealing with any kind of injury because he he looks really fluid i mean when this guy is 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 throwing clean it's a lot of fun to watch i mean the the lag that klein has in his throw is just incredible and the stretch from a hole five to what hole 14 i mean going 12 down on a 12 hole stretch brian it's high level stuff and we've seen it from kyle before here at uscgc and Remember, he went into a playoff uh, with Paul Macbeth in years past, so he knows what it takes to win out here. Absolutely, and he's he's won multiple times before. He doesn't need to get that monkey off his back. It's already done. He's won multiple times already. A player that is getting their first chance to play in a lead card here at a major championship is Sullivan Tipton from Alabama, and you and I have both seen Sullivan play. Mm -hmm. This is a sidearm player. We have to, I mean, yep. he's got a good backhand, but we have to admit, this kid's 
power sidearm is world class, and I can't mm -hmm. wait to see it out there tomorrow. Yeah, I've had the chance to play with Sullivan many times. I actually got to play with him at Throw Down the Mountain earlier this season, and he is a sidearm player. He will lean on it, but he, he can also shape the backhand. I think we're going to see that quite a bit from him yesterday, and he's he's a small guy. He's a little guy, and he can really rip on the forehand. Has 400 feet, no problem, but really what impresses me is the touch forehand. We're going to see the touch forehand bust out on a few holes. Hole 17, he's going to have no problem with, with a shape like that, with a slow speed disc. And yeah, 14, he's going to be throwing a big forehand over the hay bales. And this is going to be his first lead card at a major. I'm excited to see how the nerves present themselves for him tomorrow. Well, I love the versatility in his forehand. And he's mentioned to me in the past, I have to admit I'm a sidearm woods player. That's just who I am. He's from the southeast. Alabama has such beautiful woods golf. And it's shaped the way that he plays this game and it's interesting to see a player like him do so well at a course with a completely opposite style I mean not to take away from his overall skill set but for his first time playing on a major uh, lead card I think he's maybe surprising himself with this with that let's take a listen to what he had to say in his own words after the round today catching up with Sullivan Tipton you started out with a nine under opening round of the USDGC and that looks to be good enough for lead card for day two how in the world do you process all of that? How does that sound? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess I haven't processed it fully yet. Um, it's pretty cool, first lead card. I've never done a lead card on a Pro Tour tournament, so it feels pretty cool. Yeah, I guess it'll hit in later, I guess. Just showing up to a major and putting yourself on a lead card, uh, certainly very impressive. Talk to us about the game plan that you applied today and then how it played out for you. Yeah, I remember uh, playing here last year. I took some big numbers on some holes. That I was getting pretty aggressive on, so I knew today, like, just be a little bit conservative on some of these little bit harder holes, you know, play for my pars if I need to, um, but really attack those birdie holes that I know I can get. And so I went I went for everything on those ones I knew I could get, but then played really conservative on a lot of the holes that are pretty tough for me. And when you say pretty tough, what are some of the things that scare you? Because I feel like the scoring conditions today looked great, but when you see... How do you define a tough hole out here at USDGC? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm predominantly a forehand player. It's my strong suit. So a lot of these backhand holes, can't remember what hole it is, the par four that a lot of people go for the eagle on over it. You yeah, know, just 10. laying up. Yeah, hole 10, laying up, just playing for the easy birdie on that one. Um, a couple of the holes, just laying up short and then going for a little bit more of a aggressive second shot than my first shot. Um, I think that's hole 11 after 10 or something like that. I can't remember the holes on my head right now. But. <laughs> You're still learning them, but yeah. you, you apparently have them pretty well figured out. Uh, your putting, how, how would you, what kind of grade would you give yourself for your putting, and is there room for improvement? Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what the exact stat was on my C1 putting, but I think I missed two or three C1 putts. Um, so, I mean, they're a tricky putts from the circle, but um, still could clean those up a little bit. Um, if I make those, then it's a couple more strokes added to it. Uh, so clean that up tomorrow, then you should be looking pretty good again. I would say so, a nine under a solid score. To quickly recap, Joel Freeman, Kyle Klein, and Robert Burridge are who we're going to see probably on the lead card with you. Uh, anything about that group stand out to you as an immediate reaction when I name those guys? Sounds pretty fun. I guess I'll remember my first lead card. So that's those guys. They're pretty cool. <laughs> they, like cer them. they certainly are. Robert Burridge yeah. said, you did, did you leave a, a favorite disc somewhere? Was there a, oh, a driver you left somewhere? Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite discs, actually. Uh, I left a glow force in the practice field, I think. Or on the course, I can't remember. But I show up to hole 15, ready to throw that disc, and I said, "Oh man, it's not in my bag." So I picked up a different disc, and um, it worked out. But <laughs> doesn't matter. Yeah. You just just point you uh, to the direction of the tee, and you'll pick up a birdie. That's Sullivan Tipton on your lead card for the second day at the USDGC. Best of luck to you. Sweet. Thank you guys. Well, Sullivan's going to have to battle some nerves tomorrow. Big stage for the young player from the Southeast. But I have no doubts that he has everything it takes to shoot what he did today over the next few rounds. His forehand is going to do phenomenally out here. Obviously, it worked out for Nate Sexton mm -hmm. pretty well in years past. With that said, we got to wrap up this lead card with Robert Burridge, who we've remembered from that classic battle with Simon Lazat mm -hmm. when he had his iconic season. Robert's had kind of an up-and-down season. He's had some moments of brilliance and really some moments where he struggled, but that's just kind of part of cutting your teeth out there on the road full-time. And uh, Robert put together a great day. And as you see right here, the ultimate skills were out on display. Huge straddle forehand. 
That's I'm a high-level shot right Huge there. Huge high-level shot, and that comes from playing for Magnum. Uh, ultimate franchise, you know, dynasty out at University of Michigan, and now he's transitioning here into the Disc Golf Pro Tour full-time and playing some solid golf today. Nate, nine under par, look at that front nine. What do you make of it? Well, I mean, talking about eight under through, make that nine under through 11, Brian. So I think he's looking back at this round going, what could have been? Mm -hmm. I mean, nine under through 11 is a historic stretch of golf right there. And 14 is going to be the only birdie that he cards to, to close this thing out. He did make some some solid saves late, but it's also going to be Robert's first time on a lead card at a major as well as Tipton. So I'm very interested to see, you know, how those nerves present. Like what what do we see from them different? Because sometimes you step up on the teapot hole one, it's your first time at the big show like that and you do something that you've never done before because the nerves start to yeah. control you well you get tight regardless of where you're sitting on this course and then mix that with being on the lead card for the very first time in a major championship it's a recipe for for a day that you have to just survive and hope to gain something from uh, i think robert having almost tasted victory mm -hmm. against simon lazat last year i think he's ready to cherish this moment and hopefully shoot another good round with that said, we did talk to Robert Burridge as well after a great uh, first round today. Let's take a listen. Joining us now is Robert Burridge, nine under to open your round here at the USDGC. In fact, nine under through the first 11. Talk to us about that start. That was, you know, I finally played it. I hadn't been doing that in practice, so I finally played it how I knew I could. I got a couple of good breaks. I got one on four. I got a good break. I got a little tree nick off of a shot that was maybe a couple inches off and then I got a good break on uh, 11 to kick me um, just left of the bush and inbounds and so I took advantage of that took a birdie and so I was happy with uh, being able to do that I proceeded to miss like a 15 footer on 12 for par but it happens and I always allow myself one little slip up like that around because I know I'm probably not gonna be perfect because so many people aren't that are better than me so I always allow myself one or two just mistakes take a bogey here take a bogey there keep playing my game plan and just let it go uh, it sounds like some really wise words of advice I like that when you talk about game plan on a course like today which seems very scorable very calm conditions what is the mentality in terms of either aggressive or picking your spots what's kind of, what is the game plan when you go into today so I find the game plan is generally to attack almost every hole. Like there's only a few holes that I don't attack, but whether it's windy, whether it's calm, I'm going to attack or not attack them anyway. So for me, those holes are three, which I somehow got a 35 foot look on today, which I wasn't really expecting, but three I don't attack, uh, six I actually lay up because Something about six, just, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Something about six, man. Um, hole 10, the eagle bull par four, I play it for birdie. I don't, I don't feel the need to get an eagle there if someone gets a stroke on me with an amazing shot, fair play. And then hole 12, I, I don't really feel the need to go for that one. And, you know, I messed it up a little bit taking a bogey, but stuff happens, and you go with it. So when it's all said and done, you have a nine under, that's one of the hottest scores of the day how content are you with that in terms mm -hmm. of what you think that'll do for your overall standing for the rest of the week? You know, essentially, do you like nine under for the rest of the week on any given round? I definitely do. Nine down on any day out here is fantastic. You know, nine, nine, I saw Joel shot 10 with his back nine, which was stupid. But, uh, I mean, nine down is a very solid score. I'm trying to get into each day with a clean mindset, though, and not compare rounds especially mid round because I know if I start saying oh I birdied this yesterday why can't I get it today or hey I was better off off the tee yesterday than I was today you know that kills a mindset because it starts bringing you down when you're not going to be at your best every day and so you have to learn when to attack when not to and how to just manage the shots and make every shot more consistent in the future. Well, everyone, that's Robert Burridge. He shoots nine under. He'd like to uh, hit reset, but still come back with a nine or better tomorrow. We wish you the best of luck. Nice round out there. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
I love listening to that interview, Brian. You can tell that he's been studying up on something. Maybe golf is not a game of perfect or, or some kind of Zen golf book yeah. because he's very calm and collected. And just, you know, the way he's uh, talking, looking back on his round, talking about his mistakes, his lucky breaks. And he, he seems ready for mm-hmm. to, to rise to this moment, his first league card appearance. And obviously he's just a, a, a great guy to watch play and you know everybody's rooting for someone that hasn't tasted victory yet so I'm excited for him and Tipton tomorrow. Well with that said Nate someone who got the first taste of something today uh, while not necessarily shooting a great first round was Cole Radolin who got to taste something special on hole number 17 today. Nate he steps up to the hole and chooses forehand a nice standstill shot this is just a career moment. I mean, oh. dunks it into the basket for ace. No chains, no Brian. No chains. First, there's so many layers to this, Nate. First off, you don't have to putt on hole number 17. Second off, you don't have to re-throw on hole number 17. If you can do that, it is the most satisfying feeling in disc golf to just bypass the hole entirely. Uh, great moment. Glad to see it. Hopefully, he can sharpen up a little bit and put together a good round tomorrow everybody's rooting for Culver Dolan Mm -hmm. obviously we've seen some great successes from him this year but lots of disc golf left we have three more rounds here at the United States Disc Golf Championship for Brian Earhart Nate Perkins we're going to be seeing you all week folks good night